all of the cock and all of the balls. All of it. <laughs> oh, hi, chat. Thanks for coming Surprise tonight. you here. Hello, Herg. Hello. Is this the cock penis underscore gaming channel? You bet you're in the right place. But we're not going to play any games on the channel tonight. What are we going to do instead, Fred Knudsen? Uh, we're going to be doing big, big gamer SCP, except not games, because we're going to be reading SCPs. Not, we're not going to be playing the games, reading the site. We don't play the games. The games play us. I don't, I don't play games, Mike. They're for nerds and birdlies. Can you guys hear the music that's happening in the background? It should be soft, but audible. More, Don't worry. I'm, I'm more asking the moderators. Don't worry, Mike. I'm stupid now. Wait, what? From from Deltarune. Remember Birdly? Oh, yeah. Don't yeah, yeah. worry. I'm stupid now. <laughs> I'm dumb now. <laughs> also, keep in mind that it's a quiet, soft piano piece. And some of the other songs will, will not be so quiet. Mm hmm. Ryan gave us permission to use the music for the streams. Ryan, thank you so much uh, for that, bub. How about me and Fred? Are we uh, adequately balanced with each other? I would hope so. People All right, are saying, so. yeah. All right. Um, I slightly increased the music. Uh, I hope that'll be... And again, keeping in mind, it's a soft piano piece. Uh, I see people subbing and resubbing, guys. Thank you uh, for the support. You guys are awesome. Uh, at the end of the stream, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna read out all the subs and thank everybody individually. I just don't like doing it when I have guests here because I don't want to um, interrupt them uh, when I see people subbing. But I will thank all of you individually later. Thank you. Uh, okay. Thank you. So. <laughs> we have another guest tonight. Some of you may know her, may may uh, may even love her. She's been a little bit busy tonight because things have been hectic over at the um, her job, her government job that she works. They got great dental, but she's got to put up with you know containment breaches. It's not it's not Oprah. It's Jay Chan. Everybody, <laughs> hi, hi, <laughs> a little bit of blood on my face, but hey, at least it's not come. <laughs> go, go, Kawaiikak! Jesus, I, you know, I know that you can do a cute nep nep voice. You choose not to. Uh, what? You, you think I? You think I could do that voice for more than like ten seconds at a time without destroying my throat? Okay, fair enough. Um, yeah, so let's... Uh, I want to say thank you to Tita for making the, the model with the hazmat suit. And for, um, you know, putting the, the blood spatters on there too. Uh, Jay Chen herself, ironically, is the SCP, so she needs to be contained. That's actually what the hazmat suit is for. It's not for her protection. It's for everybody else's protection. Um. And also, uh, some other, there's some other cool little, um, little goodies that, that, that go on here. Like, uh, where is that? The glass can be cracked. I'm going to leave the glass cracked. That's cool. That's a nice touch. That is um, very good. Uh, and also, uh, we have hand tracking, even though it's shit. Uh, it keeps <laughs> thinking that my left hand is my right hand, and then I try to... <laughs> it, it, it's it's total garbage and this thing will never this thing will never work properly no matter what the fuck i do but you know what it was expensive and annoying to get this thing set up to work so i'm gonna i'm gonna try to make it work stubbornly <laughs> uh, I, I like I, I like how you keep adding things on when the previous stuff isn't quite working yet nope it's like it's like you run america's infrastructure projects <laughs> Yeah, just keep slapping band-aids on it. 
Hey, what is this? Oh, it's not finished? Nah, let's just do another thing. Crumbling highway, thing. pour more asphalt on it. It's fine. I really want this to work. The, you know, oh, the, the ironic thing is, this is the best that I've got it to work. I, 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 sh I, shit, I shit you not. <laughs> I feel like it's fitting for this particular stream, though. It could be. But I sat here and I, tr I troubleshooted, tr troubleshot? For hours today, or, or just, you know, wor worked on this for hours. And ironically, this is the best that I could get it. Sometimes she thinks the right hand is the left hand. And so, I mean, sometimes it's working like Gabagool. Like I could get her to do Gabagool pretty good. Mm -hmm. But outside mm -hmm. of it's Gabagool, good. um. That's the important thing, right? That's the most important thing. As long as we got Gabagool, everything else will fall into place. Mm. Gabagool, hey! Hey, I'm walking it! No, Trump. I told you that I... Oh, I should have gotten my Spumoni out. Because I, I got a little tub of Spumoni. The past tense of troubleshoot, I'm being told, is trouble shat. Which I love. Uh, anyway, we got... It's not. SCPs. We do. Right. Right there. There they are. Right. Uh-oh, look like we have a containment breach. Oh, go, go. Oh, go, 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 Mrs. Robinson. Oh, no. <laughs> so what's the first SCP you, you want to look at, Fred? Fred has collected a smattering of his mm -hmm. fa his favorites, and they're creepy oh. and spooky and and um just in time for Halloween, right? Mm -hmm. like, uh, these are a lot of my um, old favorites, so that means that a lot of these are going to be series one. Um, and so for you, for all of you who are into like the new SCPs. Uh, I'm afraid that this is going to be more of a blast from the past, but I do have a lot of my favorites here. Although, uh, I do have one specifically for you to set the tone, I figure, to help you get in the mood specifically. Uh, this one is SCP-230, alternately known as the gayest man alive. Ah, <laughs> uh, Fred. Uh, is this going to make people angry, Fred? No. No? Okay. You sure, bud? It's not. It's not Don't gonna... worry. No. We're not going to see any sweaty frogs because of this? No. No. There are no... There... Sweat... This will be sweat frog free, except for ironic ones or ones that are made specifically just to make you sweat. All right. So it's called SCP-169, correct? 260. Uh, 230. Gosh darn it. Um... I... <laughs> are you sure it's Did not I... 169? Because that uh, would... You, you make... clicked the first one. That would that, make that sense. That was the first wouldn't, one. Wouldn't it... Um, I, I sent you another one. We just did that one to test. Oh. As you might recall. Uh, okay. Um, so 230. Yes. It's the okay. one beneath it that I sent you. All right. Let's um, zoom in a little bit here. All right. Uh, so you want to you wanna take it away? You want to read it? Well, oh, we'll, would you we'll... like me to read the first one? Uh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Feel, free, feel free to interrupt me at your leisure. All right. Let me start by interrupting you right now. All right, all right. Uh, Wisp has a really good question. Can you explain what the, the classes are in, in the, uh, the the object class? What's that mean? Sure. The best way that I can describe them is like this. Uh, so there are three main classes that you'll see most of the time. Uh, the first is safe, which means that it will not do anything unless you act upon it in somehow. You can pretty safely put it in a box, and as long as no one goes into the box, then it's okay. Okay. Um, they're inert, usually, otherwise. Uh, they can be safely contained. Euclid is something that very much doesn't want to be in the box and has to be actively contained somehow. Um, so it can be contained, but it but it needs active measures. I was gonna so ask him. Know. Yeah, I was gonna be like, Peter Griffin. Wah. And I was yeah. gonna. I was absolutely gonna gonna go there, but somebody in chat beat me to it. So that that's good. The beater class. Peter. So um, that's Euclid and safe. Right. So what's the uh, next one? Then Peter is. Um, what most of the very dangerous ones are. Those are the SCPs that cannot properly be contained. Um, then there are some other classes as well. Um, they're the most common class that you have other than safe Euclid and Keter is Thaumiel. 
So think of it like this. If safe can be contained in a box, then Thaumiel can be the box. Thaumiel are uh, Thaumiel class SCPs are SCPs that are used in the containment of other SCPs. Okay. And then there are a number of other classes, but they're usually highly specific. What's a Polian class? Because that's what a the that's uh, which one? Well, that's that's the Onesler, apparently. Apollyon is we're fucked. Although I did come across <laughs> one that was oh uh, what was it? It's yeah. Sometimes you'll see like spe more specific classes that are used in just a few. How many people here have no idea what the fuck the SCP Foundation is? Well, people are going to get to learn, won't they? Uh, well, it, it's it's like, did, didn't you do a video on, on this website once? I did. It was one of my first videos. It was my third one ever. And it's uh, a, all, all a, a documentary, obviously. Uh, Fred does the down. He's the down the rabbit hole uh, guy. In case you didn't you didn't realize, chat. He makes those cool documentaries, like the Final Fantasy House and the um, the one about the gaping butthole and all that. So that that's cool. Um, it's the me. I'm the guy. Uh, and, uh, also, and, it's not the gape. It's not the gaping butthole. It's the magical space pussy. <laughs> oh my bad. Uh, easy to confuse the two, right? Hmm. I, I know that you get the holes mixed up sometimes, Mike. This not website does. Th we we all can't be sigmas. Th this website is a, a community project <laughs> thing. Like anybody can go on here and and update like a little and put like a little basically kind of a. A sci-fi story, but written in a very specific format. Um, is that a good way to quite. explain it? it? it it's mo it's moderated pretty heavily, so um, you can't like not just anyone can submit these. Like there, there's a whole moderation process, and it's quite stringent. Oh, really? So if you were to write one of these, you have to do it under the guidelines that they provide to you, uh, and then you have to submit it for approval. Oh, okay. All right. So that that's that's the explanation for anybody who didn't know what the hell it was. There it is. It's got to um, be at least decent. Yeah. And if you want to know more, you, you could go check out uh, Frank's fucking video that he's got. Um, mm -hmm. If if any if a mod would be cool to enough to link it. Um, what does SCP stand for? It's just it's scup. Skip. It's scup? um. It stands for secure containment protocol, but it also stands for. Uh, the foundation's motto, which is secure, contain, protect. Which is a uh, coincidence, or probably is deliberate, actually, now that I think about it. But security containment protocol is the... So it's the security containment protocol it's secure foundation. Secure containment protocol. Secure Se containment protocol foundation. There yeah. you have it. Okay. And a, like the objects and... They, they call them anomalous objects. An anomalous object is defined as anything that defies the understanding that we have of the world that if if information were to leak about its existence would upset the balance of modern life or just like the way that we understand the world it would upend our like how we interact with the world so it's like a uh, almost like a government uh branch of the government or like a government so the, foundation or, or well the scp foundation is um independent it, of, of any government independent. It's, it's independent of any government but it does work very closely with the world's governments with many of the world's governments and it's about uh you know think like men in black or um you know that type of thing they so they find right. these anomalous objects and they contain them and they they uh keep the public from finding out about them and that's the whole idea and when you look at this website it's like their files of um containment like official right. documents is what you're reading uh from the right. actual people the, who, who do this it's kind of right these kind of cool. are write-ups about the about the anomalous objects that they contained and the term object is loose sometimes it can be a concept one of the ones that i have lined up for you tonight is a concept well sort of You'll see. I thought it was kind of the, sorry. There, there's some very clever writing in this. That's all I was going to say. I uh, I felt like it was important to maybe explain to people who who didn't know. Uh, it was probably not necessary. Apparently, according to that poll, ninety percent of people know what this is. But uh, let's show them why it's actually cool instead of just explaining why it's cool. You want to read this one? Go ahead. Yeah, sure. Hmm. 
SCP-230 Euclid class. Special containment procedures include SCP-230 is kept in a secure room in site redacted. The room must have a controlled ventilation system so that air exiting the room can be properly filtered before it re-enters the regular ventilation system of the complex. So this isn't the description of the thing itself. This is just how the, the methods that are methods that are used to contain it. And you could start trying to like figure out maybe what, what, what it is based on what you're reading here. Right? Mm -hmm. Which is uh, kind of one of the things interesting about it, you know? Yeah, it sort of builds the tension. Yeah, That's part yeah. of the strength of um, part of the strength of this method. Oh, Limes. Hello, Limes. Oh, Limes, thank you so much. Hope you're having a good you night. Came... Hey, you oh, came God. literally... Hi, Lime Boo. <laughs> Me, Jaden. <laughs> we have a little bit of SCP problem tonight. I'm going to take care of it, though. Don't worry, <laughs> don't, don't, don't worry about it, everybody. It's all under control. <laughs> Nothing weird going on here. <laughs> anyway. Mike just on Wednesday was like, hey, you want to do the SCP stream this Friday? While I was just watching his stream sitting in chat. Didn't even DM me. It was just like, hey, Fred, you want to do this? And then he he does this. Probably shouldn't. He whips out, he, he whips out the, the, the J-chan using protection. I probably should have, like... DM'd you about it instead of putting you on the spot in front of like hundreds of people, but no, it was good. I mean, I was, I it did not influence me saying yes or no. So I mean, it's it's not a big deal. I'm always going to tell you straight up how I feel or if I can do something. Yeah, I mean, he could have told me to eat a dick. I could. He probably I could have. he probably I, should I do have. that regularly. Yeah, I do he... that regularly in public. I I tell you to eat a dick on stream more often than I do in private. Eat the hole. Eat the hole. Just the hole. <laughs> yeah, just the hole. All right. Okay. So I'm sorry. So the air has to be, um, filtered. Mm. And air leaving this room needs to be filtered. Right. Okay. And this—that's one of the reasons that it's classified as Euclid. There is some sort of active containment that, if it fails, could create problems. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that's not true for safe SCPs, usually. Like, they'll just sit there if you don't do anything with them. SCP-230 is to be given anything he requests that does not violate standard procedures for SCP containment. The door is set to automatically lock every time it closes and can only be opened from outside the room. Personnel entering SCP-230's room must wear a full hazmat suit with its own oxygen supply. Hey, you've got what you need. Personnel exposed to the air in SCP-230's cell or who come in physical contact with 230 or any of 230's bodily fluids must be contained and held for observation for no less than one month. Personnel still exhibiting symptoms from 230 after one month are to be terminated. Wow. If personnel are cleared by on-site staff after a month, they are then to be transferred and forbidden contact with 230. Oh no. His yeah, bodily so clearly fluids. toxic in, in one way or the other. Yeah, he's... <laughs> All right. Due to recent events, subjects that have been exposed and cleared by staff are required to undergo regular psychological exams. If upon exam, the personnel exhibits any of the traits shown in document 230-4436B, the personnel is to be terminated. Note. Subject has made several attempts, escape attempts, utilizing personnel exposed to 230. This represents a low threat due to the fact that exposed personnel are usually impaired. However, personnel will become violent in order to stay in 230's presence. You know, I I wish you didn't tell me what the name of this SCP was because, like, you totally like colored everything. It, it's calm. You're thinking about calm, aren't yeah. you? Well, I'm thinking about a lot. I mean, I just just. <laughs> You could keep reading it. Go ahead. Is the, <laughs> the gayest man alive has got you feeling things and thinking things. You, you, you shouldn't have told have told me because like now I'm I'm like primed now. No, this was this was how I was going to get you into it. This is how I got you in the mood, if you will. Yeah, this is another one of those like Mike responds well to cock moments, right? Basically, is it mm -hmm. more or less yep. what you're going you're going for yeah. here? Yeah. yeah, pretty much. Cool. Great description. 
SCP-230 is a male Caucasian with a lean build and gaunt appearance. 230 is 100, 185 centimeters, 6 feet 1 inch tall, so giga chad. Well, 68.04 yeah. kilograms, 150 pounds, and appears to be in his early 30s. What is it? Well, uh, he, he, um... <laughs> He's like one of the traditional, like, it, this ties into the Tumblr sexy man thing. I think he might fit into the pale twink trope. Well, you said Giga Chad, but maybe. Yeah, you're right. I mean, he's he caul- definitely he's is. He's Caucasian and gaunt, so maybe he fits that pale twink. Remember that? Yep, 100, 150 pounds, so. Yeah. Like, he, quite, like, lean for his height. Yeah, pale twink. Definitely pale twink. Mm-hmm. Maybe got a little bit of Wunzler action going on. Nah, he's not a poly in class, so. <laughs> <laughs> He wears bright clothing and prefers the colors pink and yellow. 230 is a very cheerful individual who appears to be incapable of negative emotions. So the opposite of you. No. <laughs> I was going to say that, that sounds nice. I would like that. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was mean. Incapable of negative emotions. That wasn't even an insult. That that was just like, I don't even know what the fuck that was. That was just fuck. Like, ha ha, you're sad. Yeah, like what the <laughs> fuck? What, what even, what even is that? What? what? I, I don't know. Just I don't like you, know. you're, inca- you're incapable of happiness. <laughs> ha ha. Like, Which what is the clearly f- not the case because like I, I send you the gayest man alive and you're immediately giggling. Yeah, it doesn't you take much. <laughs> it's also, yeah, it's not true. Uh, all right, you want to, you want me to take over? Or you want to keep, keep oh, reading? I got this. Okay. SCP-230 secretes a chemical similar in composition to heroin from his pores. The chemical has been named compound redacted, compound meth. Once secreted from his pores, it evaporates immediately and contaminates the air around 230. The compound seems to be effective in as little as 30 parts per million in gaseous form. When inhaled, the compound causes extreme euphoria in subjects. Analysis on Class D personnel under the effects of 230 indicated they had dopamine levels greater than five times of what is expected during sexual climax. He sounds great. Yeah. Yeah. So I haven't heard the, expre- the bad part yet. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, something I should note is that Class D personnel are it's not always it's not clear where they're sourced from um some of them come from death row but they are expendables they're red like red shirts well red shirts aren't meant to be expendable it's more like um yeah they pluck them from prisons and stuff they're like you know it's 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 people who are like not going to be missed by society i guess right i imagine uh yeah i I imagine they like grab yeah or like yeah, they like, grab people off the street, or yeah, like that. De- it it at one point says yeah, death row inmates, right? At one point, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, they, it's bad. They certainly, they certainly need more than just what death row can provide. So it's bad, bad, um, bad juju, folks. You know. Well, yeah. Squ- so, Squid Game whoever. contestants. Somebody said. <laughs> I mean, they do say, hey, like, you complete your time as a D-class and you'll be let free. Oh, they and lied that to them. Is, oh, that, that is a complete fucking lie. No, they, they, <laughs> they, even if they survive whatever they're supposed to do, they're, they're killed. Well, they're paying their debt to society because this whole foundation is for the good of, uh, you know, civilization or, or whatever, right? So in a way, uh, um, mm. but definitely it's not ethical. But, um, oh, well, it's also not real. So anyway, uh, go ahead. Yep. The, the, the ethical implications of the Foundation are explored in a lot of stories and in SCPs themselves. Interesting. Yeah. Subjects express impairment similar to the effects of heroin. Subjects become willing to comply with any request 230 makes provided it does not involve leaving 230's presence. The compound is present in all of SCP-230's bodily fluids. Exposure is possible even by contact with SCP-230's skin. Exposure to the compound will result in immediate addiction. Withdrawal symptoms are extreme and have a 30% mortality rate. Symptoms include loss of appetite, tremors, panic, vomiting, diarrhea, irritability, dementia, insanity, 
blindness, and hemorrhaging. Ask so your doctor if varied. SCP-230 is right for you. This does sound like an advertisement, doesn't <laughs> it? Side effects may include sudden death, loss of finger and toenails. Like, just... Have you noticed that they used to be spoken very quickly, and now they've been forced to slow down? Yeah, they probably... Like that um... little loophole closed some time ago, I think. Because yeah. now... Because now you have, like, it used to be, like, side effects include, blah, 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 like, just unbelievably fast, like it's a boxing match call. Yeah, well, they're trying to, yeah, now, hide it. Yeah. Now, now you have a woman with a very pleasant voice telling you about how you're going to die from cardiac arrest. Hey, could be worse. And could then be being, Simpsons like, porn. Right? I'm trying to adjust yeah. the monitor. Don't, don't mind me, chat. Um... Like he's I know coming. this. Sorry, no, he's coming. He's coming for your titties. Run. I'm a coming. I am a coming. Uh, okay, I just wanted to send to her a little bit more. As I move around, like she moves, so it's kind of got to keep an eye on that. Okay. Also, she keeps like looking off to the to the side, and I don't know why. Oh well. <laughs> oh uh, well. <laughs> yeah. Oh well. Um. Whatever. Like, if I want her to look it straight ahead, I have to look to the left. That's where I'm at now. It Whatever, matter. it don't matter. None of this matters. <laughs> She's reading chat. Yeah. It's one of my. It's one of my favorites. It don't matter. I loved that that edit that you sent me. That where they edited Carl into the um the opening for Smash Ultimate, like the cutscene. Oh yeah, you like that <laughs> for Smash Ultimate. <laughs> don't matter. None of this matters. And he gets, like, Thanos snapped by, uh, I don't know, Master Hand or whatever the fuck it is. I, I don't know. I, I haven't played it. Right, because he, ref he refuses to because it's shit. <laughs> uh, let's, let's see. Do, do, do. Uh, yep, hemorrhaging. Those symptoms vary from subject to subject. Symptoms typically last for around two weeks before subsiding. The symptoms appear to be determined by how much of the compound the subject is exposed to. Subjects that ingest any of 230's bodily fluid, for example, saliva, blood, etc., have a mortality rate from withdrawal of 100%. That etc. doing a lot of work there, huh? It, it is. It's, yeah. it's carrying a lot of weight. It's a very heavy etc. SCP-230 was found in an apartment in Redacted, with 20 people acting as his servants. SCP-230 seemed to be actively attempting to limit the number of people he exposed. Several bodies of exposed persons were found on the premises. When, questions, when questioned about them, SCP-230 replied, Things were getting crowded, so I had to ask a few of them to stop breathing. Oh, he's, uh, murderous. Oh my god. SCP-230 appears to be under the effects of compound, uh, the compound, but doesn't seem to be impaired by it in any way. Attempts to alter SCP-230's mood have proven ineffective. Use of various drugs known to cause depression only resulted in SCP-230 producing more of the compound and thus were ineffective. Wow. That's SCP awesome. SCP-230, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> SCP-230 is a very... Um, that I, um, I was a while ago, I did a uh, tabletop campaign with my sister-in-law where I, uh, it was an X-Men campaign and my character had the ability to, um, through contact with other people, alter their hormone levels. The oh. idea being, um, like the, uh, like at least at the low level, eventually the idea was they could eventually uh, train up to do more supernatural things. But the idea being in, in combat, they could give someone a burst of adrenaline um, to up their up their combat potential or uh, or potentially cause extreme pain. There's uh, yeah, there's like an X Men like that, right? One of the X Men does has something going on like that. Uh, that Rogue Rogue has a similar sort of thing. Rogue can do that. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. I. I mean, I'd, I'd I'd simp for this guy. Absolutely, yeah, I'd be no, I'd the, be one of his simp's. No, the the idea is, um, you was discovered by the institute when um, some uh, like some people from his school were basically using him to get high, and one of them overdosed. <laughs> they were licking him like he's a fucking frog. <laughs> <laughs> 
kind of based. Poobah likes my fart containment union unit. It's a little stinky in here. <laughs> Stop. Uh oh. Stop. Uh -oh, that's someone's uh -oh, fetish. Stinky. <laughs> no, that's someone's fetish. Stop. Ooh, ooh, yucky. Ooh. Come Stop. on, J Chan. You can fucking do it, slut. Ooh, limes, stinky. limes, are you ooh. still here? Stinky. Limes, Ooh. can you stop? Oh, can you stop him? Can you stop him? Mike, this is too far even for you. No, it's not. Let's fuck. Who, who are we kidding here? Limes is gone. Of course she's gone. You just gonna fucking stay here for this? Oh no, St stinky, free you. Limes, he's out of control. I can't. I can't. Like, do you have? I'm DMing limes. No, limes. leave her alone. Limes. Leave her. Limes, oh, Mike please. is being weird. What do I Dude, do? Dude, I'm just having fun with the, the fucking technology here, man. Look, I got hands that can do things. Let me enjoy it. Help. I got... Yeah. I don't know why her fingers are like that. Like, I'm not holding those fingers out. Like, the thing just thinks I am. Oh, those are her thumbs. Yeah, her... Th like, I tried to do a thumbs up before, but look how droopy and flaccid her, th her thumb is. What's it doing? <laughs> Guys, I'm not doing that. The, the, thumbs, my, the thumbs aren't supposed to bend that way. What? It's long and droopy. And I don't know. Just I don't know case. why. <laughs> Sausage thumbs. I legitimately messaged Limes, by the way. Oh, well, I'm getting a response. Why? Why did you do that? It's okay. It's common for men your age. Erectile dysthumption. Thumption. Erectile dysthumption. Limes. All Limes sent me as a reply is the Limes dance emotes surrounding the words eat. <laughs> I've been abandoned. Yes. Oh, that's awesome. Did she really? Why would you abandon <laughs> me like this? <laughs> Jesus Christ. I chose this. I came here of my own volition. Sorry. You I'm sorry. Just be straight. I'm sorry. Chat. Uh, I just want her to look forward. Like I'm staring directly straight at the monitor and she's looking like off to the side. I don't know why. Really pisses me off. Limes just replied back to me. Gonna have a nice stream with Jabroni Mike and learn about SCPs. It'll be super educational. You fool. Reset position. Thanks, Limes. Uh, when I click reset position, nothing happens. So I'm gonna, I guess I'm gonna forget about it. Uh, Alright, you wanna keep reading this one? Yeah, we, we've got just a... A, a little bit more. Let's see. SCP-230 is a very friendly individual and will candidly engage in conversation with any personnel. SCP-230 is unaware of how or when he began secreting the compound. When questioned about his past, SCP-230 replied that he has been securing the, uh, secreting the compound as long as he can remember. Relatable. SCP-230 prefers to talk about things he considers good or gay. SCP-230 has some psychological attachment to the word gay. When asked to describe himself, SCP-230 used the word gay six times, gaiety four times, and the word gayest once, when SCP-230 referred to himself <laughs> as the gayest man alive. <laughs> no, gay, gay, homosexual, gay! Note by Dr. Redacted. 
SCP-230's <laughs> preoccupation with the word gay has nothing to do with sexual orientation. Oh! SCP-230 doesn't appear to have a sexual orientation due to a lack of interest in sex entirely. This Ace. makes sense, seeing as SCP-230 experiences the same amount of pleasure doing any given activity, making sex unnecessary. So he like he means gay literally, like like in well like Happy. not literally, yeah, yeah, but like I guess the the old school what what it meant, right? I guess right. still still means right happy, like he means right. he means gay ha happy gay, yeah. But um, this person who wrote this knew exactly what the fuck they you know they were doing. Obviously they did. Oh yeah, yeah. Maybe, Addendum two thirty, huh? Maybe he's like, maybe he's ancient. And like he doesn't know that like the meaning of that word has kind of has kind of morphed. Right. He says that he has been secreting this compound as long as he can remember, but we're not sure we're not sure how old he is. Uh, that's cool. I got some of his uh, bodily fluids on my um, on my helmet right right here. Slorp. Right. Right here. Are you done reading it? You want to keep? No, th there's a little more. There's an addendum. Addendum 230-1. Class 2 personnel researcher <laughs> was accidentally exposed to the compound during research. He was detained and sent to treatment for the duration of withdrawal symptoms. After one month, <laughs> was released <laughs> after being cleared by medical staff. Two months later, <laughs> was found trying to break <laughs> into SCP... <laughs> was found <laughs> trying to break into SCP-230's containment area, <laughs> reacted violently, <laughs> and injured several personnel before she was detained. <laughs> was terminated <laughs> after examination... <laughs> was terminated after examination, and precautions have been made to prevent further occurrence. See document 230-4436B. Document 230-4436B. Data expunged. Oh, so that's it? It's over? Yep. It's been expunged. Expunged. That's unfortunate. I wanted to know more. Okay. So... Oh, if you would like to know more, um, there actually is one that had information that was redacted and uh was later released would you like to take a look um yeah that's so that's the next one you wanted that's to look the at next one yeah it it seems correct okay let's take a look there you go scp835 alcrat says it's over it's time for an hour-long intermission with something totally unrelated you want to do that it's yeah. We're pretty focused right now, actually. All right, we won't do that. I'm sorry. Apologies to the people who were looking forward to the hour-long tangent that has well, nothing to do hear, with why we're here. You don't want to hear me. You want to hear me spend two hours talking about ponchos again? Okay, this says adult content, buddy. Yeah. Is that gonna be? A... It's okay, right? It'll be fine. Sweat. It's fucking a pretty, it's a pretty... frog. A pretty brutal one, but all right, there's gonna be sweaty frogs, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay, come Would monster, you like to read this one. Hold on, I want to well, fix this we'll bitch. See. This bitch is fucking uh, she, I don't care, she's gonna be looking off to the side. Then, I guess it's it's still like annoying me, it, and it wasn't happening earlier today. I don't, I don't, it was it was fine. I don't know what changed. I'm so pissed. Apparently it's the cell phone, but I can't change anything about the the, the the cell phone is just flat in front in front of me, so I can't like I don't know what the fuck to do different with the phone is, is what I'm saying. Alt left click to rotate her. Yeah, but then her body is gonna be weird. Then her yeah, like you see her now her body is weird. Fuck it. You want me to read this thing? Just T-pose the whole time. I can do that. Dude, if I do this, she looks like even more to the to the right. 
<laughs> she just keeps like correcting her head position to, to fucking account for however I, I swivel her. <laughs> because she wants to be looking to the right, like no matter what I do. That's fucking wild. Okay. Adult mm. content. Uh oh. Things are gonna get sticky. Splort. <laughs> I don't. I don't actually understand. Come. Like this. This one is pretty brutal. Yeah. But I don't understand why it has a warning on it. Like it. In there are others that are worse. I don't know if they it's, added. So as it's gory. Warning. You. You'll see. You'll you'll see. Okay. I'll I'll link the extra bits to you that that are at the bottom. Okay. Uh all right, so there's a picture of like meat. You want me to read it? Yep, this one's all you. Okay, so it's a beater. Beater class. My beater. And uh it it's got a, a picture. It's kind of grody looking, huh? Um so here are the, the containment. Oh, it says still image from recording 81. Uh, SCP-835 is to be monitored and checked daily for new growth. <laughs> uh, in the event SCP-835 becomes hostile, suppression tactic A A6 is to be immediately implemented until aggressive action ceases. Containment area must be maintained in open ocean. Due to the highly aggressive response of the SCP to confinement for any length of time. It must be free and cringe. Waste issued by SCP-835 must be immediately collected and contained. Feeding it is to take place twice daily to consist data expunged. SCP-835 may be moved to a new location twice yearly. Twice. Twice. You, you did it. God damn, you did twice it. Twice yearly. Twice. Twice yearly. No. Twice. You had it. You had it, and then you decided it, it wasn't enough. No, it wasn't good enough. Um, twice yearly, provided that the current location is no longer capable of supporting the SCP, and the move has been approved by site command. So this thing poops, huh? We got a pooper! Uh, yes. Staff are to remain at least five meters away from the SCP. Anyone working near it must have safety lines attached to recall winches and implementation of suppression tactic AA6. Um, should contact result in full capture of a staff member. SCP S A. Uh, Three five is to be monitored constantly until the release of the subject. SCP-835 appears to be a large mass of coral-like polyps weighing <laughs> tons. The individual polyps are larger than any known coral species. Well, it's my place completely growing to more than one meter in diameter in some cases that's this big it's this this big <laughs> jesus christ man i want to use it i want to use my shit i uh i gotta make I, this bigger at too some blind. point, you start yeah. becoming like a radio shock jock where you just want to press all of the buttons on the board yeah, that's all of the sound effects. That's what's happening, yeah. That's that's what this is, yeah. And this yeah, starts to become... like You're like that, except you have a soundboard consisting of 50 different kinds of farts. I actually don't have any fart sound effects, believe it or not. That's actually Bruh. amazing. Yeah, you, you Damn, don't need boy, them because you... you can make them yourself. Yeah, I prefer to just make the fart sounds... You have demonstrated your ability to do so um, already. It's, it, I mean, it's easy enough. I mean, I, I, 
I mean, some people are, are they're they're fans of like the farts with reverb. I think a good fart doesn't need reverb. You know, uh, that's it can what stand I. On its own. Th yeah, a good fart should be able to stand on its own. That's always been my philosophy, right? Always. Um. So anyway, the central mass is roughly oval shaped, with a very large three meter diameter polyp at each end. SCP-835 is incapable of locomotion and appears to anchor itself with the large tentacles projected from the polyps. These are also used in feeding and are coated with a sticky adhesive substance. The tentacles are also quite strong and have been shown to be capable of damaging plate steel. The coral of SCP-835 is extremely hard, requiring high-powered diamond drills to collect even small samples. It also grows at a very accelerated rate, capable of adding 22.68 kilograms of mass every day. It is susceptible to many chemicals, which cause it to seal up and halt all growth for 24 hours, prompting the development and use of suppression tactic A86. Testing has shown... Adax punched! The SCP emits a large mass of semi-liquid material. Oh my, oh my Several... god, you have dorselessness. That's actually what it's called. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what Tita named it in the, in the file. Uh, I'm hoping we could get like some of the other ones, like Nage and all that, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, SCP emits a large oh. mass of semi-liquid material several times a day from the large polyps on each end. Same. This appears to be made of semi-digested solids, fecal material, and semen. This mass this was also made for you. This mass he was made for you. He picked. He knows how to pick them, boys. This mass also has several forms of virus, bacteria, and parasites, many of which have been found only within uh, SCP-835. The bacterium uh, 835I5 forms the major concern for containment due to <laughs> this, coupled with ex the extremely hard shell of the SCP, form a major obstacle to neutralization. Any force capable of cracking open the SCP would also cause the slurry inside to spread and cause additional infection from 835I5. Okay, so it's kind of a giant uh, coral creature that, um, mm -hmm. I don't know, regularly blasts out a slurry of cum and poop? Mm-hmm. Pretty cool. Pretty rad. Uh, there's an addendum here. A addendum 835-01, uh, first draft of after-action report by Mobile Task Force Zeta Niner, Circumstances of Retrieval. On at hours, Mobile T Ask Force. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, why didn't you read it as Mobile T Ask? Uh, oh, as mobile I Task mean, Force. Mean, like <clears throat> mobile Task Force Zeta Niner. Mole rats. They probably look like this. So, fun fact that. Uh... Fun fact, the mole rats are going to make another appearance tonight with one of my favorite SCPs. I'm, I'm glad you're having a good time. Rat girl. I'm Tito, rat? Tito, oh, why? I'm rat. Tita, that was a choice that you made. I'm rat? Uh, the mole rats conducted an investigation of SCP-835. At this time, the SCP had a mass of only four tons and only one large polyp at the north end of the structure. Designated polyp alpha. Real alpha polyp, right? Polyp bravo not yet being in existence. As per standard procedure, four team members were chosen for the initial investigation. 
standard isolation suits, underwater variant, were worn by all four team members. Lieutenant <laughs> took point as team leader, while sergeants <laughs> and <laughs> served as support. Corporal <laughs> A rookie team member accompanied the team as an observer. A standard underwater remote vehicle, or URV, was used for initial investigation. The SCP did not, at first, act in a hostile manner towards the team, allowing team members to approach and make contact without incident. URV-01 was sent to investigate the exterior of the object, while team members C, L, and M proceeded towards what they believed to be the entrance of the site. Corporal H was ordered to remain outside and to monitor URV-1 in order to ensure that the device's tether did not become tangled on the exterior protrusions. Can you guys hear the music? Because it's, it, it's like so perfect for this. Good. Just make it oh, sure. Oh, you're using the Battle of May Island music, yeah. Yeah, it works out really nicely, it, yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's, you know, it's, it's an amphibious fucking mission or whatever. Um, aquatic mission. The first sign of trouble occurred when Corporal H, while attempting to clear a jam in the URV-1 sampling claw, reported in with the words, Oh God, help me, help me. He then reported that some horrible tentacle thing had wrapped around his arm and was dragging him in towards a fucking mouth and vocalized several distress calls. Jesus Christ, I can't do this fucking... God damn it, he was just a kid! It was his first fucking mission! I should have kept my eye on him! My men! It's Chris Redfield. Oh, that was the author of the... Of the... Uh, oh, okay. Oops. Alright, so this was uh, the author, not the person being described. The person who wrote the... Um, the addendum, right? Is inserting that into there. Christ, alright, here goes. Guess I'll just let Sarge edit this for me. Again. Spoilers, Sarge didn't edit it. So the thing grabbed the kid. It had me fooled to rights. The entrance wasn't an entrance, it was just some cave. The real entrance was the big polyp thing on the north end. It grabbed the kid and started dragging him towards the mouth. Top side started to drag him up, but all they got was a snapped cable. And the kid? He got pulled inside and eaten. Data expunged. I got the carabiner on. Carabiner. I don't know what that is. Um, it's, it's, you know the climbers? Like, you, you might use some smaller ones that aren't quite weight rated, but they're clips. The metal clips. Oh, like, you stick onto a backpack? Okay, I know what they That's are now. Carabiner. Okay, all right. So he got the carabiner, beaner, on. We're hooked together, and topside starts winching us up, and we're not getting anywhere. I'm grabbing on. I'm telling him I'm not gonna let go, and then the winch starts to seize up, and I feel this jerk. on the tether and it goes slack. And then we're both sliding into that damn thing. Uh, people are sweat frogging because um, the word be that word that I said apparently is uh, derogatory. Is that is that what is that what's happening? It, it, it is. It, it, it's it's a I, I was actually surprised you said it. I, I figured you didn't know what it means. Yeah, it, it's a derogatory term for a Mexican person. Right. Very derogatory. So of, of course it is. Right. I just it's thought very, that... No, I just, I, it's okay. I, I do that kind of thing all the time. I really just I'm honestly like, thought it was... Like, if, you can't say that. I'm like, what? why? I and really... That, that, there are so many terms that you'll just... Ha I, I get it. I really just thought that that was like a funny sounding word and like it was just it was fun to pronounce it like that. I didn't even that didn't realize that that was what, what I I didn't know. I'm sorry. No, th this happens every year or two to me where I learn a a new word because I I'm told like I say it and they're like, "Fred, you can't say that." I'm like, "What?" They're like, "Oh yeah, that's a slur." It's like, "How many do you need?" There's so many. There's so many. Um, 
yeah it's, i feel it, this it, it, uh, yeah it's a slur to hispanics so yeah i feel this jerk on the tether and it goes slack and then we're both sliding into that damn thing it was like jesus i need another drink fuck it was like the only way I can think of it was like, you know, that thing that doctors do when they stick a tube up someone's ass and look at the inside of their intestines. I saw that on TV once. It was like that, except I was going down the throat of some horrible underwater hell monster, not up some poor bastard's rear. There were these muscular contractions, I guess. And they were slowly sliding us down the length of the tube. If we weren't wearing the hard suits, we'd have been crushed. But as it was, we were held so tight we could barely move. Even with power assist, I managed to get my head up enough to see the kid's face. His face place was face plate was covered in vomit. Poor bastard had puked in his suit. I started yelling for him trying to get him to say something. He managed to tell me he was all right. He was sobbing like a baby. I started doing some calculations. Based on my dead reckoning tracker and initial sonar scans, we were moving about a meter every minute. That meant 72 hours until we came out the other side, assuming we did. They're going to come out the other side going... Durr, durr, durr. This, yeah. th this esophagus was made for me. Oh no, now we're getting to vor territory. God, we, okay, we have two fetishes already. I mean, I think we were in vor territory the second somebody got eaten. And uh, yeah, I mean like... The colonoscopy cam? That's somebody's... Somebody's into that, right? Gotta be. I, I remember there was an SMBC comic that was like this, where uh, someone was getting a colonoscopy, and they say, okay, looks like there is a metallic ring in here, and Dave, no. And then the caption of the comic was, it was the most, like, it was the most clever marriage proposal that I'd ever, <laughs> that anyone had ever seen. Oh. Uh, um. Can you propose with Bowser Amiibos? Yes. All right. Uh, where were we? Uh, okay, so they're, they've got to go uh, 72 hours to go through this thing's like entire digestive system. They're in there, and, and, it's, and it's gross, and the kid's puking all over himself and all that, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, we had the air. Our rebreathers could keep going for days. What we didn't have was the power to keep the suits warm for that long. If the heat went out, hypothermia would kill us. I don't know. Look it up. In any case, we'd be dead. We needed to conserve power. I told the kid to turn off his helmet lights, lock his joints, and turn down his heater to minimal. He started crying. He didn't want to do it. I didn't blame him, but I told him we had no choice. We finally agreed to shut down everything but our internal helmet lights, at least. It seemed to calm him down, and honestly, that extra 0.1% power wouldn't make a difference. I think that was the worst part. We spent at least a day like that, locked in our suits. Couldn't move our arms and legs. No sound, but the things gurgling, and your own breathing, and the sound of your rebreather. The puke on the kid's faceplate started to dry up and flake off about an hour or so in, so I could see his face. He looked tired and scared. I think... Check the logs, Sarge. I think it was about 13 hours in when the kids started talking again. The kids started babbling. Anyway, after that, he calmed down a lot. I told him to take a nap. He slept a bit, thank God. About 24 hours in, we reached... I guess they're calling it the stomach now. First warning sign was a gurgling kind of noise. Louder, with a crunching noise over it. I told the kid to bring his suit up to full power and get ready. A little while after, we fell out into this big chamber. Big as in big enough for the two of us to fit in it comfortably, which was huge compared to the tight squeeze of the tube. The 
kid's suit started hissing and the outer shell started to turn all pitted and stuff. And I noticed my gloves were starting to degrade too. So I yelled at him to move and we started heading towards this sphincter, I guess. I remember. God, why can I remember this? The insides of the stomach were lined with... Well, somehow... The song with the vocals got into the playlist, which... Um, oh, whoops. I don't want right now, okay. Good song, but... Great song, but not right now. Um, I'm reading this SCP, and I, it just sounds like Sonic Dreams Collection. Like, this was the exact experience of playing Sonic Dreams Collection. I'm glad that I could bring these memories back to you. Have you ever played that game? Yes. You liked it? Yeah, it was it was an emotional gaming experience. Remember when you have to feed Sonic until he, you know, explodes and all that? Yeah. It's good times, right? Yeah. It's three fetishes now. Vor, farts, and feeding. I guess. I remember God. Why can why can I remember this? The insides of the stomach were lined with <coughs> I almost lost it there. <coughs> I'd stayed, but my suit would have melted and I'd be dead, but the kid grabbed me and shoved me headfirst through the sphincter, and we fell into the other place. So what um What do you think this, the, the insides of the stomach were lined with? Oh, don't worry. They, but keep going. Like, why would they expunge that? You'll see. It was even worse than the stomach. <laughs> this place was, well, you know, you know what it was full of. I'm not squeamish, Bill. You can't be if you're a mole rat. But this place squicked? Squicked me out so bad I almost passed out. The kid helped me back up to my feet. Though, told me we were almost out. Come on, Lieutenant. We're almost out of here. Let's go. He said. We moved over to the other sphincter. But the thing was... Well, it was puckered up tighter than my drill sergeant's asshole back in basic. <laughs> Some nice flavor. Asshole flavor. Eat ass! No, we're not going to do that again. <laughs> uh, so no way we were getting out of there. We decided to wait for a bit until the thing shot its load, so to speak. <laughs> anyway, that's when things started to go bad. <laughs> they weren't bad before this, though? I managed to wrestle the thing... <laughs> Threw the sphincter into the stomach. Its tentacles writhed at me as it started to melt. <laughs> then, 835 blew its load. And I flew out its ass into the ocean. <laughs> you know the rest of the story, Bill. <laughs> Fill out the rest of the reports and the logs for me, will you? Oh, and be sure to edit it so the motherfuckers in command don't yell at me for being unprofessional in my AARs again. I'm going to finish off my drink and take a couple of Valium and go to bed. <laughs> Thanks. Wouldn't that kill you? Like Valium and, and booze? Like it's like a, like a benzoate and alcohol like would, would kill you, wouldn't it? Maybe that's the point. By special order of... 0511. All expunged data files pertaining to this report are hereby released for general viewing. Here you go. Please I've got see it for you. revised file here. There, I just linked. Uh, I just linked you. Oh, the unredacted um, version of this SCP. Uh oh. Oh gosh. And then there also is the unredacted version of the incident report. Or, well, the addendum. 
Okay, so. So this so the this blue, the blue parts are the unredacted. Thank parts. you, thank you. All right. Yes. Feeding of the SCP is to take place twice daily, to consist of any form of local aquatic species. Feeding should be supervised at all times, and no unscheduled feedings of the SCP are to take place for any reason. Should the SCP enter a rage state, higher level mammals may be issued as a food supply, up to and including. Homo sapiens. The SCP has shown high levels of docility when digesting higher level mammalian life. And recommendation for the issuing of this form of food has been approved for use during testing phases. Huh, that's weird. Why do you think that is? Alright, testing has shown that the SCP appears to be made from basic human biological components with the shell being formed from super dense calcium, the caps that cover the polyps coated with tooth enamel, and the tentacles appearing to be formed from mutated tongue cells. Most human biological systems are present. However, many neurological, lymphatic, and circulatory, etc., show extreme mutation and atrophy. The digestive and reproductive systems appear both highly developed and linked, with both feces and semen being collected and ejected from the same chamber. Hot. Stop. This thing is basically just Mike Wad. <laughs> Um, this is like, it's similar to that, uh, what was that, that website about the national park that was made out of like meat? Do you remember what that was called? Uh, mystery flesh pit national park. Yeah. The mystery flesh pit, but it's like, I don't know. This thing is great. It, it's like coral, but it's human coral basically. And now mm -hmm. I, I believe there were penises inside. That's that was what was lining the walls of the intestines. Penises. It was penises, wasn't it? Is it penises? Penises. Chad, it's definitely penises. All right. Uh, the bacterium forms the major concern for containment due to its role in the reproductive cycle of the SCP. Vertebrate animals infected with the uh, bacteria will undergo the following symptoms. Increased weight gain, constant hunger, urge to consume normally unpleasant uh, or unpalatable items such as raw meat, organs, grass, or, or wood. Um, hardening calcification of the skin, formation of polyps on the skin, rapid reduction in intelligence and mobility, increased aggression, urge to enter seawater, and atrophy of many major biological systems. You know what this means? That the bacteria is trying to... It, it's trying to add more humans to its mess. That's what the bacteria is for, right? It wants yeah. to make more of itself by, like, spreading it to humans. Mm -hmm. this, yep. this, this one's fucking... This one's great. I, I thought you would appreciate this one. This is one of my favorites. This one's great. I, I actually... Yeah. I used this one in my tabletop campaign. Yeah? Yeah. The Mike Wad virus. <laughs> Mike Wadification. Oh, wow. Yeah. End stage infection appears to convert the subject into an additional instance of the SCP. Attempts to determine what, if any, intelligence remains have been inconclusive. However, the SCP appears to have a limited amount of awareness. It also has shown a very high infectivity rate with 68% of all infected subjects progressing to end stage. There is no form of treatment or antibiotic that has been shown to halt or reverse the effects of the bacteria. This, coupled with the extremely hard shell of the SCP, form a major obstacle to neutralization. Right, okay. Mm -hmm. Wow. All right, so... Now... Uh, are you ready? Are you ready for 
the unredacted incident report. Uh, yes, I am. Please. This is where it really gets fucked. Just letting you know. All right. Uh, there's a notice from the Foundation Records. The document requires level four clearance and authorization for need to know under code Triton Victor Blue. If you do not possess the necessary security clearances, please close this document immediately and report the security breach to the Records and Information Security Administration. Uh-oh, I don't know if I have the clearance, everybody. Oh, let me see. Hold on. Uh, hmm. Well, here's my documents. I can't... can't really tell... Uh... Mr. Knudsen, sir, can you tell me if I have the credentials to keep reading? No, we gotta we gotta click out now. I don't know. These look right. <laughs> I think I got them. Okay. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I got them. I'm gonna read it. Tita, I can't believe you actually did that. I, I got blame the, you for this. The queer, the queer wins. <laughs> I have the queer wins level five. Everybody, tee hee. You've been waiting for just the right moment for that, haven't you? Uh, well, I, yeah, yeah, yes. Okay, uh, addendum. First draft of after action report by Mobile Task Force Zeta Niner Circumstances of Retrieval. Okay, we've seen all this. Here's the redacted part, right? God, I still remember him screaming. He was screaming at us. He was crying. Oh, God, Lieutenant, it's eating me. Oh, God, I don't want to die. They're eating my mom, and now they're going to eat me. I'm shouting at him to calm down. We're going to get him out of there. And then Topside tells us to abort. And they start the winches. I'm screaming at them to wait. I had his hand. I had him. Oh, so somebody goofed. That's why that got expunged, because it made somebody else look incompetent, right? Mm-hmm. Is that basically what that was? Yeah, like, they, they, they start pulling them up before she can get to him. Oh, yeah, that's fucked. Um, okay, hold on. Uh, I think, check the logs, Sarge. It was about 13 hours in when the kid uh, started talking again. The kid started babbling, apologized for stealing my underwear. He pulled a... Uh, oh. Oh, dude, your character is Mayor Lewis from Stardew Valley. <laughs> he said you guys made him sneak into my quarters and take it from me as a dare. Why the hell did you make him do that? I mean, I don't mind if you haze the new guys, Bill, but that shit gets old. It was hard enough trying to get them to listen to me as it was. Anyway, Bill, it's all there in the log. You know what I told him? I promised. All lies, of course, jokes. He laughed too, joked back. I hope he was joking. I don't know what I would have done if we'd survived maybe i would have gone ahead and did it i don't know it's all fucked up we're all fucked up what that's like supposed to be really confusing right no like she said like hey you know we'll, we'll get out of this we'll fuck it'll all be good that's what she was saying what That that's the that that's the implication. Just trying to keep his spirits up. That that's my interpretation. Okay, well Oh, um in any case, I've never been more disappointed of this this um this mole rat team. <laughs> I have never been more disappointed in this mole rat team. Uh all right. Uh, they 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 do some pretty fucked up things. Um, there's another one where they do some pretty fucked up things. We're moving towards the sphincter, and I, I remember God. Why can I remember this? The insides of the stomach were lined with teeth and faces, human faces, and they were all wailing at us and screaming. They were begging us to kill them. I 
almost lost it there. I started opening up with my gun, started shooting them in the heads. And if I'd stayed, my suit would have melted and I'd be dead. But the kid grabbed me and shoved me head first through the sphincter and we fell into the other place. Um, so these are all people who have been absorbed by this thing? Who knows? I well, mean, I think that's the implication. Weren't they like... All right, whatever. Um, it was even worse than the stomach. That one was lined with faces and filled with acid, but this place was, well, you know what it was full of. No, I don't. The, the, the shit and gum. Remember? All right, we decided he, to wait smelling. for a bit until the thing shot its load. If it made shit and cum, it would have to spit it out eventually, right? Anyway, that's when things started to go bad. The kids started complaining about this awful smell. <laughs> that, that really has all the energy of, and things, then things kicked into high gear. Two brothers in a van. In t t tomatoes. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then here come the killer grandmas. And then things got kicked into 11th gear. It's like, so I'm, I'm, I'm flying, I'm being ejected miles above the ocean in a, in, a, in a fucking geyser of feces and semen. And it's like, oh, you're probably wondering how I got here. Uh, I had to look for the record scratch, All right? The kids started complaining about this awful smell. I tried to stay calm. I told him it was probably his suit's waste recyclers. Told him to let me take a look at it. Yeah, there was a hole in the back of his leg, probably from the acid. I put a patch on it and told him not to worry about it. And that's when I noticed that there were these red things growing all over his face. He started screaming when the first of them burst and splattered all over the inside of his, his faceplate. He begged me to kill him. I put my gun up to his faceplate and pulled the trigger. Click. Hold on a second. Fuck. Man, was that even audible? Nage. I didn't, I didn't hear anything. All right. Um, all right. So I put my gun to his face, pulled the trigger. Click. I burned all my ammo trying to shoot those damn faces. Mike, he was out of bullets. Oh, I should have read the next sentence. <laughs> the tentacle burst out of its face a moment later. It grabbed me, and it started licking me. Oh. It started licking me, Bill. The thing was running its tongues all over my face and body. Over the suit. It grabbed me and pushed me down and tried to hump my suit like a dog, but it couldn't get through. I managed to wrestle the thing that had once been the kid back through the sphincter into the stomach. Its tentacles writhed at me as it started to melt. He smiled and told me he loved me before he died. I screamed. Then 835 blew its load and I flew out its ass into the ocean. You know the rest of the story, Bill, except one thing. One, one, one thing, Bill. There's one, there's one thing that you don't know, Bill. One, one thing. Just one f fucking thing, Bill. One fucking thing, Bill. Just one, one fucking thing, Bill. One, one thing. You're trying so hard. One, one thing, so one hard. thing, Bill. There's just one thing you don't know, Bill. <laughs> one thing you don't know. No, one. 
My suit didn't make it intact. I was breached. No one else noticed. I didn't even notice until I was in my room and changing clothes and saw the red blotches all over my skin. So yeah, I guess I'm fucked. I've got the room on lockdown right now, but you have to get everyone else out before I go terminal. So yeah, fill out the rest of the reports. I'm going to finish off my drink and take a couple of Valium and go to bed. Don't bother trying to decontaminate the vessel. Just abandon the entire ship and scuttle it on top of the original site. I think the kid would like it that way. Now we can be together. Just like he always wanted. Thanks. Yay! <laughs> yeah, it's a particularly brutal one. It's all uphill from here. That's really upsetting, man. Yeah, I thought I thought you'd appreciate it. It's it's got it's got shit, it's got cum, it's got meat. It hit all the marks for me. Mm-hmm. Yep. What if being like part of that thing really like isn't so bad? Like how bad could it really fucking be, haha? <laughs> you think you think they're having a decent time in there? Maybe they're having a great time. Because guess what? They don't have to like work jobs anymore. They don't have to worry about like I don't know, dental insurance or whatever. Like, you don't have to worry about Yeah, like, one of the faces is screaming, at least I don't have to pay for, like, what? Ta like, tax programs? Fucking yeah, yeah, I don't, you don't, you don't have to, you don't have to pay taxes anymore if you get absorbed into this thing. At yeah. least I don't have to pay turbo tax. You, you get to live in there, like, rent-free. Literally. <laughs> no more student loans. Uh... Okay, so that one was delightful. It was very spooky. And mm -hmm. I think that the, the music we're hearing right now is from like uh, the, the Temple OS video, I think. Like the, mm -hmm. the really like creepy like dissociation music like at the end of the video. Yeah. Where it's like, fuck. So like, that was perfect. Oh my God. Fun time cannot hear the music. There's music question mark. It's the shepherd tone in the background. Yep, there's been music this whole time. Right? I mean, I heard it when I unmuted stream. I hear it. We've been trying to reach you about the quietness of the music for a while now. I haven't seen it. Maybe that's just me. <sighs> now, Mike. Yeah, bub. We have a couple of options for the next SCP. We have... Ooh. Mm, I'm, I'm curating this because that, that was a brutal one to start with. Uh, it, it's kind of it's kind of like you know how Black Mirror started with the pig fucking. That, that's kind of how we did this dream. We went from um, the gayest man alive uh, to that. And now... Why don't... Why don't we do a classic? What One that isn't quite so um, meaty. Something that is a little more straightforward. SCP-169. You want a booger, Fred? Hey, Fred, you want a booger? I got a booger! I'm okay. I'm okay. Here you go, Fred. <laughs> I'm... I'm all right. Lick it. I'm really all right. No, eat it. I'm, I'm really all right. Eat the booger. I'm okay. Eat this booger, no, I'm, motherfucker. I'm no. It's good. I'm, I'm not doing that. It's delicious. I'm not doing that. All right. Uh, so, yeah, you you uh, you take the next one, bud. All right. All right. Sure. 
Um. Hmm. You know what? If I'm going to take the next one, I think I actually want to do my own meat one. Uh, this is one of my favorites. So actually, let, let's not do that one. Uh, okay. We'll do that one in a minute. We are going to do my pers like one of my personal favorites, we're gonna SCP-763. We're going to keep the meat theme going? Uh, yes, and we'll move away from the meat for a minute. And then like after we have done some non-meat ones, we'll go hard into the meat again. <laughs> See, me and Fred both have like a really, um, a really strong love for like, I don't know, like body horror, like like meat, like like not not as, like I guess it's body horror, but like specifically, meat, yeah, specifically m meat things, like when things are made out of meat, like, like um, like meat landscapes or like meat um creatures and stuff like that like that that kind of stuff we we, we like we like yeah. that stuff like i'm yeah. gr i'm grossed out by it like it really oh, it's horrific it no, really like, genuinely I, I up, it, 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 yeah. it messes with me in a serious way it really genuinely fucks with me it, it really does um but uh, i think that maybe that's why i'm i'm drawn to it right that's part of the appeal right um i think yeah I think that it's it's a way to engage with it that is safe in the sense that you know it it's not real like there there are horrific things that happen with the body and this is a way to sort of engage with it in a way that is fictitious interesting interesting oh hover idea. squid um fun fact like so, hover squid is actually asking me about fleshscape uh, funny thing that I am planning a Fleshscape one shot with Mike Revan Limes. We have a Discord group set up. Fred's mm -hmm. going to be the DM. He's arranging it. Yep. Uh, the the name of the Discord group, guys, is Flesh Friends. Yeah, I I got to name it. <laughs> I don't know when we're we're gonna do it. I don't think we're in like any particular rush to do it. But um, no, I, I'm waiting on the thing that I've been vaguely alluding to. Uh, he's um, but he, once that's ready, yeah, he's he's doing something. Uh, got, yeah, Mike knows the thing. Um, but once that's once that's ready, uh, flesh should escape. be able to do it. It's like yes. a uh, th think like D and D, right? Like it's a tabletop thing. But the set mm -hmm. the setting is a yeah. um. F flesh realm yeah it's all uh, it's very it's very straightforward and uh, like the rules are six pages long it's me it's very all the way down mm-hmm yeah mm. yeah i'm i'm very much looking forward to doing that though yeah song of saya moment exactly except everything is actually flesh hmm Okay. Oops, all meat. Now, SCP-763 is one of my favorites, if not my favorite, and it's not terribly long. Ah. SCP-763, object class safe. SCP-763 is contained in sub-basement G of the now-defunct Redacted Veal Production Facility on the outskirts of Redacted, Illinois. After the discovery of 763, the Foundation acquired the facility, which was secured and designated Biological Site Protector. The facility is still supplied with the liquid feed solution previously used to nourish veal calves, though only enough to maintain SCP-763's growth. The feeding system established by the facility's previous owner, Klaus, has been documented and should be maintained unless a more efficient feeding method is devised. If any components are added to 763, the dosage of nutrient solution must be scaled up accordingly. Consult document SCP-763 redacted for the volume and release time of solution to be provided per component. Because of 763's ability to absorb human organic matter into itself, it is vitally important that no personnel touch 763 with bare skin. <laughs> Yeah, here we go, baby. Let me take a sippy. Mm. This is not the giant boob one. This is worse. 
SCP-763 is a mass of human organic tissue occupying approximately 300 square meters of space with an estimated mass of over 4,000 kilograms. It is mostly in an irregular configuration of tissue with the exception of SCP-763-A. Much of the mass of 763 is muscular tissue with an abundance of blood vessels. This muscle tissue is highly atrophied and non-modal, though despite lack of use, there is a great amount of blood flow at all times. Most of the structure is relatively thin at around 10 centimeters thick, allowing the blood flow to diffuse the high heat generated by the central mass, which is a large lump approximately 2 meters high. Somebody this in, in chat said... Wait, hold on, I gotta find this. Sure. They made my mom into an SCP. <laughs> what the fuck? I mean, what else got would be able to create me? What, be, what else would be able to create my quad? You got, you got her. Hold on, uh, I want to move J Chan. Like, to, I want to move her. Hold on a fuck minute. Hold on. I'm I, sorry about that joke in the beginning, by the way. It's like which you're one? the opposite of the gayest man alive. That's okay. I, don't know I said what I was going for there. That's like, okay. I, I, I don't I, even know. That's okay. I said a slur, so it's fine. fine. <laughs> that's not a competition. <laughs> it's a comp. It's a competition. Yeah. It's a, yeah. yeah. Don't worry about it. Oh dear. Ah, uh, let's see. Most accidentally, like, but and, you know. Yeah. yeah, it's it's fine. Allowing the blood flow to diffuse the high heat generated by the central mass, which is a large lump approximately two meters high. This blood flow is provided by a large central collection of hearts and a number of other hearts arrayed throughout 763's structure. All the organs of the human body are present in 763, located in a, located in a relatively even distribution throughout the system. The fuck? The the lungs are fed by a number of mouth-like round holes in 763's skin. The feeding tubes pass directly into 763 as though the flesh grew around them as its mass expanded. Researchers believe that the blood vessels and organs are essentially a support system for what has been designated the cluster. The cluster is an interconnected network of 37 human brains of varying sizes, connected by chains of cells resembling neurons. This array is enclosed by a multi-layered arrangement of bone growths. The bones most closely resemble ribs, though they exhibit offshoots that allow them to interlace with into a tighter structure. Initial analysis revealed a far higher than normal amount of neurotransmitter activity. Over time, the individual brains each enter a resting state with neural activity consistent with REM sleep in time periods consistent with the polyphasic sleep pattern. This resting state lasts approximately 45 minutes. At any given time, there are five brains in this resting state, while the remaining 32 brains are in the active state. A collection of bone and nerve fibers resembling a spinal column approximately 3 meters in length extends from the cluster to join with the spinal column of SCP-763-A. SCP-763-A appears to be the body of the facility's former owner, Klaus. The body is only partially absorbed into the rest of 763, retaining all its presumably original organs and general shape and structure. To date, it has shown no signs of movement or further absorption. It should be noted that other absorbed subjects have been completely integrated into 763 within three months. When 763 was discovered, 763A was in a seated position in which it remains. There was a table in front of 763A with a sheaf of papers on them, completely decayed from the warm, damp conditions of subbasement G. 763A's hand held a pencil, a pencil, apparently poised to write. Any previous writing has been lost with the degradation of the paper. 763A's facial expression is one of intense concentration, or perhaps pain, with features contorted and eyes closed. Unlike the rest of the muscular tissue in 763, 763A is not atrophied, despite having exhibited no movement to date. Researchers assume that 763A remains unabsorbed to function as an interface with the rest of 763. 
To date, no stimulus has provoked a response from 763A other than autonomic reflexes and immune system response. Okay, can, can we do like a recap of what the fuck this thing is real quick? Like a uh, just... So basically, notes, this, this is a thing that covers 300 square meters and essentially the all of the spread out meat is there to support this cluster of 37 brains in a like that is two meters high um and encased in a weird rib cage the now these 37 brains are all linked together mm -hmm. and some of them like will sleep while the others stay awake okay and where does klaus come into this klaus is the former owner of the facility he is kind of attached to it but hasn't been absorbed into it completely so he hasn't been absorbed completely yeah he hasn't been absorbed at all he's just attached right so he he's like an interface for the brains is what it's saying mm -hmm. he it, it's somebody in exactly. chat called it a meat a meat computer and so this SCP is called the um, the Human Beowulf comp, uh, Cluster. A uh, for those who don't know, a Beowulf cluster is when you take a bunch of computers and hook them together in order to create essentially a like more powerful processor. They share um, processing power. Why is it called a Beowulf cluster? I don't know. Okay, so um. Where are the dicks on this uh, this bad boy? I mean, they're on Klaus. All right, so, so there's there's the one on Klaus. All right, let's see what we're working with here. <laughs> Where are the dicks <laughs> on this bad boy? <laughs> uh, I think the other SCP spoiled me a little bit, you know. Um, no, I I get it. I I I, I I'm afraid that I blew my load a little bit early here yeah you did it was uh it was a big shot guys don't worry there'll be some good ones eh eh yeah yeah <laughs> um so <laughs> we don't need mike <laughs> thank you tater mike you Wait, gotta I, be I missed it. fucking my ass Unbelievable! Oh <laughs> Hold on a minute, c c cocksucker! I've got a phone call! You've gotta Easy. be kidding me! You are fucking my ass! Cocksucker, it's for you! Um, so... Jesus Christ. Thank you, Tito. So thank you, Tito. Tito, this is uh, next level. Yeah, what it's great. in the world? That's yeah, really good stuff, Tito. Fuck, thank you so much. Um... <laughs> Now's your chance. Um, fucking, I forgot what I was going to ask you. So why is it in, in a veal facility? Like, what's that about? So so uh, this is in a basement. Uh, so you know what veal is, right? Baby cows. It's, no, it's, uh, is it cows or lamb? I thought it was lamb. It's not lambs, dude. It's cow. Okay. It's baby, so, yeah, like baby, baby cow. cows. Yeah, and, you're right. Um, calves. Meat of calves. You're right. You know, they, uh, it's pretty, uh, upsetting cause they like, um, you know, they're babies and they're like, uh, I don't know. They grow them in little boxes. So the muscles stay tender and they don't develop or whatever the fuck. So it's a cruel, it's considered to be a cruel and, and inhumane process. Do you think that the fact that this for some reason is taking place in a veal facility is connected to that? Um, the idea is that they're like the, these veal calves are being fed like nutrients and then this thing is being fed by the same like is being fed oh, by the same so nutrients. In, in, in other like, words it's just efficient this was a convenient place for this thing to set up shop right well we don't know how it ended up there if it was made purposefully um there is maybe the, like it's not clear the 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 facility encouraged the development of this thing or made this it made, you know made it like easy for this thing to exist there you know, mm -hmm. maybe it's, it's like well, it's like a chicken or egg situation. You know, it's the chicken. Right. We're we're just not sure. There's no indication. But yes, that's that's the idea. The so chicken this thing, or so the, it, it's basically the, the egg. It's Which, it's a it's a mass of flesh. Like the 
The thing itself could be considered to be the two meter tower of brains encased in a rib cage. Yeah. Um, and then outside of that, it flattens out into a bunch of organs, a human, and this is all human. So like human organs, um, and the, the large amount of heat that is created from this central cluster of brains is diffused throughout the surface area of the rest of the cluster that is much thinner. It's real it spreads out over 300 square meters. It's real sexy stuff, right? Yeah. Uh, okay. Sap sapiosexuals all popping boners in chat. The fuck does that mean? It means people who are attracted to intelligence. Oh, because the brains. Yeah, right. Oh, yeah, you were asking where the phallus was on this thing. It's it's the two meter tall, like, stack of brains. That has brains in it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, all right. You want to keep reading <laughs> it? <laughs> so, Joko says, man, they would hate me. <laughs> Why would they hate okay. him? That I, I know this is a fetish, like, head fucking is a thing. Don't ask how I know. What 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 do you, what do you mean head fucking? Like like you you put the dick in the ear. So Fred, how do you know this? I said don't ask. Fred, how do you know this? Fred, how do you know this? I've spent too much time around furries. Oh, yeah. You spend too much time around them. You start to learn things. Like that's something that uh, they're into is head 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 fucking. Isn't it's isn't ears isn't ear sex a Family Guy joke, Fred? It. I thought it was a South Park joke. No, it's Family it Guy family joke because I, I I specifically remember Lois going, "Oh my God, Peter, they're doing it in the ear." Like I specifically okay. remember that in Lois Griffin's voice, yeah. Okay. You know, you know what it actually was? It was, it was like, honestly, it was uh, a parody of like soaking, essentially, where like kids oh, try okay. to try to, <laughs> where kids try to find ways like around, like to have sex without having sex. Right. It was essentially like ear soaking, you know. Right. I. I lost my shit when I learned about that. Like I had, I had never heard of this until you started talking about it. And then you like someone it? jumping on the bed next to them. <laughs> That's uh jump, jump soak. What was that called? Chat? There was a funny word for that too. What was that called? Um, I'm sure chat has us covered jump hump. Jump pumping. Thank you. Yeah. Jump pumping. Hump jumping, jump bump, a dump, a dumping. Uh, all right. You want to read this while the music is creepy? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Since its discovery by the Foundation, 763 has incorporated biological material from seven humans, two security personnel, one medical technician, three Class D personnel, and Dr. Redacted. Dr. Dorselessness. <laughs> Dr. Dorselessness. Direct skin, skin contact with 763 causes tiny barbs to hook into the skin and administer a paralytic neurotoxin. As soon as the subject is paralyzed, digestive acids are secreted and begin to dissolve the skin where contact was initiated. Once this is done, the skin will begin to heal at an accelerated rate, with the subject's skin now bonding with 763. <sighs> This process of dissolving and rehealing is repeated over and over with the subject becoming progressively more integrated into 763. I hate after this. A, after us, I knew you would. After a subject is mostly absorbed, their organs begin to migrate to different areas, taking their place throughout the network as needed. In some cases, organs that are seemingly not needed are digested and used for additional nutrition. Most subjects have been fully absorbed within two months. Dr. Dorselessness's organs did not stop their movement until more than three months had passed. Researchers believe that this longer time was due to the inner cage around the cluster moving to accommodate the addition of Dr. Dorselessness's brain. <laughs> 
To date, this is the only time at which a brain has been added with all others digested. <laughs> they were too dumb! They were too imagine, dumb. <laughs> imagine, imagine if you're like, I'm going to join SCP-763, and then it just uh, absorbs your brain. Uh, right? The most extreme rejection. <laughs> Well, I would totally get absorbed. Well, my brain would get absorbed so fast. Oh my god! Because <laughs> it's like it's it's like the other brains are choosing whether or not to let you like join their little fucking council. You know, right? I'd like to imagine like you're the you you start sort of visualizing it where you have all thirty seven brains sitting in front of you and you're just like in a wooden chair in front of them in like a black oblivion and one of them has a stack of papers and goes, okay, let's just see here. Uh, oh, tweet count, 300,000. Mm, it's a little, no, it's no, a little that's, much. Uh, it's a little excessive, don't you think? Uh, flips, flips it. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, you watched, you watched Dr. Jordan Peterson. Okay, thumbs up. There. You know, I <laughs> fuck. I was, I was, I was you waiting for you. Make a Jordan Peterson joke. I was waiting for you to say. <laughs> Oh, you watch Jabroni Mike streams? <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. Ah, I see that you watch the... F I... I, I... <laughs> Uh-oh, we got another containment breach. Looks like it's fucking Joe Rogan. Uh-oh. Fucking cider. Can we get some cider to learn back into containment, please? Fucking cider. Fucking cider. Uh, we're gonna need some horse paste to lure him back in. Uh oh! oh He's trying to smoke two CE again. What the fuck? Um, were we? Were we? Uh, I, uh, right. So it, it it figures out whether or not it wants you to join, um, the council or whatever. But do you think like the brains that are in there like want to be in there? That's the question, right? Like, maybe they want to be in there, you know? Like, maybe... Do you... I... I'm, I'm sorry, I'm still imagining, like, the, them being in front of the council. They're like, oh, Jordan Peterson, a man of culture, I see. And he's like, right? Speedrunning is just the new sexual or whatever the fuck. Ah, uh, yes, a fellow... A fellow P Peterson Sonian. Petersonian. Petersonian. Okay, so, uh, we're at Addenda, right? I, can't, I I feel like I have to memorize that at some point. They some absorb point. Dr. Peterson uh, saying, Teach yes, us so. how to live! Please, Dr. Peterson, teach us how, please! <laughs> teach us how to live. Uh, Addenda, <laughs> Incident Report 763-1A. While securing the premises, security personnel J and M failed to check in for their scheduled updates. Uh -oh. A second team was deployed and discovered J and M unresponsive and in the preliminary stages of absorption. <laughs> Attempts to extricate personnel from 763 resulted in the deaths of both staff members as well as a medical technician who made direct skin contact during surgery. Incident Report 763-12G After noticing irregularities in the radio updates coming from the biological site, a security team was dispatched to investigate. Armed Response Team Omicron 3 discovered all site personnel poisoned with the exception of the head researcher, Dr. Dorselessness, who was found mostly incorporated into 763. Apparently, he had made a large incision in SCP-763 and folded himself inside. <laughs> motherfucker wanted in there so bad. He just wanted to be warm. He wanted a in. note was found. And I Dr. thought they Dorsal's smelled bad on the outside. Yeah, he did one of those. Sorry. <laughs> a note was found near Dr. Dorselessness's discarded clothing. The note is reproduced below. I have to know. Six months, and not a single inkling of what's going on in there. I don't give redacted, in a redacted, about organ function and immunodeficiency. I need to know what they're... what it's thinking. I need to know. I will know. 
Despite initial desire to terminate the biological components of Dr. Dorselessness for his betrayal, Armed Response Team Omicron 3 was instructed to desist after replacement <laughs> research personnel discovered that Dr. Dorselessness's brain was being incorporated into the cluster. The additional research data gained by observing this process was deemed more important than revenge. Why Addendum revenge? Why are they phrasing it that way? It's a little weird. That is one bit that's, that's a little bit weird. The first series definitely has some of these moments where it's like, eh, it's, they're still finding their footing. Like it was betrayal? What's that? That vocabulary is strange, right? Well, he betrayed the foundation, but it is definitely odd. Well, he did it for science. I don't think he betrayed them at all. I mean, he, he sacrificed himself for, uh, no, for, for knowledge. No this, was, no, this was definitely a selfish decision. He wanted I, to know what it was thinking. Yeah, okay. Uh, I guess he found and, out. And look, I know that a lot of people are like, no, the later series are worse. No, they're not. They're like a lot of the new ones are great, and a lot of the old ones have some weird shit in it. And a lot of the like, let's be honest, the one that we read before this one, yeah, it's like the, it was good, but it definitely had the air of like someone fresh out of high school that had written a fair bit of fan fiction and was kind of mm -hmm. working their way out of it. Solid writing just needed, you know, someone else to come in and maybe give it another look. So you think these got better over time? You think as, as time went on, uh, they got better at writing them and they got better at choosing which ones were going to be allowed? Maybe. Right. I and like the and nowadays the review process is notoriously stringent. Someone in chat pointed um, out that this doctor uh, poisoned the entire facility. Yes. Uh, he poisoned the entire facility and then folded himself into 763. He, he did that in order to be able to because they wouldn't have let him do this if he didn't kill all of them. Mm -hmm. I guess is what is the point. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> PG Froggy based, to be honest. <laughs> what if he like got merged in there and all they were thinking about was was like ear fucking or something? Like what, what if what if it was like nothing? You know, what if it was bullshit? They were just in there thinking about like I don't know, um, something stupid. Tita says they were thinking about them. What if, yeah, what if? What if they were just thinking about them beans in there? Then what? Busy making beans. They became part of Twitch chat. Yeah, this thing is basically you guys, so-called free thinkers. Nah, you're just SCP-763 uh, is all you are. Oh yeah, it's flesh time. Ding, ding, ding. Busy making Hey Fred, are you okay, buddy? No. Or did I'm you get not. absorbed into the into the meat the meat ribs? I, could you imagine being this doctor, folding yourself into the like killing everyone on the site so you can get in there and figure out what it's thinking about, and all they're thinking is beans, and he's like, I murdered people for this. For this, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> To become part of the Bean Collective. My boyfriend says he likes your Am Among Us costume. <laughs> okay, you got another SCP you want to look yes, at? Yes, well, we, we have a little more addendum. Uh, oh, Addendum 763-13L. Okay. Request by researchers that 763-A be provided with replacement writing materials in the event that it should attempt to write is currently pending. Yeah, because that would be like the way it would communicate with, with, with someone? With like, right. With, like the like, outside, with, with those outside of it? Right, exactly. Shit. I'm surprised that it didn't in this story. That would have made it um, a little more interesting, now. Mm-hmm. Now, Mike... Yep, we have a couple of options. Okay. Actually. Uh You know he what? He became part of the mean bean machine coconut pizza. We we've had a lot of flesh horror. We've got we've got a lot of meat. We had a okay. lot of meat. All right. But 
now we're going to move away from the meat. Vegetables? And into the mind. The mind meat. The yes. mind is still meat, Brain though. meats. Right? Yeah, fuckable meat, as we have discussed. SCP-055, object class, butter. Special containment procedures. The object is kept within a 5x5 five by, five by 2.5 meters square room constructed of... You see, my, my hand did not move just now. Constructed of cement, 50 centimeters thick, with a Faraday cage surrounding the cement walls. Access is via a heavy containment door measuring 2 by 2.5 meters, constructed on bearings to ensure door closes and locks automatically unless held open deliberately. Security guards are not to be posted outside the SCP's room. It is further advised that all personnel maintaining or studying other SCP objects in the vicinity try to maintain a distance of at least 50 meters from the geometric center of the room, so long as this is reasonably practical. I will say, I will hype this one up. This one is like, this is not an obscure one. Like, this is a very popular one, and everyone sucks its dick, and really? it deserves it. This is a really, really good one. Okay. And in fact, I, I would go as far as to say that this SCP is so beloved that it came to define a huge portion of the SCP Foundation writing. Really? Like, th this was, this is perhaps one of the most influential SCPs. Like, everyone jokes about the the Invincible Lizard, and I think that people actually moved away from it, but this is such a, a classic and universally loved SCP that it came to influence everything about the Foundation. Suck its dick a little bit more, Fred. No, you'll understand. Keep reading. All right, SCP-055. Oh, uh, bef before you continue, we got retweeted by the official SCP Foundation Twitter account. Thanks, Wow, guys. cool. Oh, my Thanks, God. Man. Thanks if you're if you're hearing this. Thank you. Uh, that's cool as hell. All right. Um, the, wow. the person who runs that account was on my stream the other day. Oh. Um, they came in. Yeah, we actually read... So it's it's a particular person who runs that account. Oh, and you... They, um, we read, they wrote, they've written SCPs, and uh, we read it on stream, and it was very good. Oh, that's cool. So, very, very short, very sweet, very poignant. And they're well. like the president of the SCP Foundation? They're, they're, they're like <laughs> they at least the director? The so, the, they at least manage the social media. They manage the social media. Okay, okay. Yeah. Wow, that's cool. You know, that kind of makes me feel like, you know, well, I don't think I got to say it. Do I? No. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, SCP-055 is a self-keeping secret or anti-meme. Now, we could do with some of those around here. Information about SCP-055's physical appearance, as well as its nature, behavior, and origins, is self-classifying. To clarify, how Site-19 originally acquired the SCP is unknown. When it was obtained and by whom is unknown. Its physical appearance is unknown. It is not, dis it is not indescribable or invisible. Individuals are perfectly capable of entering the container and observing it, taking mental or written notes, making sketches, taking photographs, and even making audio and video recordings. An extensive log of such observations is on file. However, information about its physical appearance leaks out of a human mind soon after such an observation. This is me when I watch any Netflix show. <laughs> like I just... do, you, do you think that has more to say about you or the show? Eh, a little bit of column shows. A, a little bit of column B. A little bit of both. I mean, like, yeah, I watched Squid Game, but, I mean, do it. Nah, it's, it's, Squid Game was fine. Uh, but, but really, the majority of shit that I've seen on Netflix, I have no fucking me memory of. I don't have memory of it the day after I fucking watched it. Mm. Uh, all right. But probably says more about me, but whatever. Uh... So it leaks out of the human mind after an observation. 
individuals tasked with describing the SCP afterwards find their minds wandering and lose interest in the task. Individuals tasked with sketching a copy of a photograph of it are unable to remember what the photograph looks like as a researcher is overseeing these tests. Security personnel who have observed it via closed-circuit television cameras emerge after a full shift exhausted and effectively amnesiac about the events of the previous hours. Who authorized the construction of its containment room, why it was constructed in this way, or what the purpose of the described procedures may be, are all unknown. Does this SCP... Are there going to be pictures later down the page? No. Okay. Because I, I, I feel like I, I have maybe seen this one before or, or heard of of this one before, but I have not read this. Okay. I mean, you wouldn't remember if you had seen it. <laughs> 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 I'm funny. Original jokes. <laughs> okay. Despite the container being easily accessible, all personnel at Site-19 claim no knowledge of the SCP's existence when challenged. Then how does this fucking thing I'm reading even exist? Keep reading it. Yeah. All of these facts are periodically rediscovered, usually by chance readers of this file. Okay. Causing a great deal of alarm. This state of concern lasts minutes at most before the matter is simply forgotten about. A great deal of scientific data has been recorded from SCP-055, but cannot be studied. At least one attempt has been made to destroy it, or possibly move it from containment at Site-19 to another site, meeting failure for reasons unknown. It may present a major physical threat and indeed may have killed many hundreds of personnel, and we would not know it. Certainly it presents a gigantic mimetic-slash-mental threat, hence it's better classification document 55 1 an analysis of scp 055 the author puts forward the hypothesis that scp 055 was never formally acquired by and is in fact an autonomous or remotely controlled agent inserted at site 19 by an unidentified third party for one or all of the following purposes to silently observe or interfere with activities at Site-19. To silently observe or interfere with activities at other SCP locations. To silently observe or interfere with activities of humanity worldwide. To silently observe or interfere with other SCP objects. To silently observe or interfere with... <coughs> no action to counter any of these potential threats is suggested. Or indeed, theoretically possible. So it's an I imposter really, I, chat? I, I really love that admission that there basically is nothing that they can do. Like, there, <laughs> yes, there's just... something particularly almost relieving but chilling about it. Yeah. Like, we can't even suggest something because it, we literally cannot do anything about it. That's good stuff. Uh, addendum A. Hey, if this thing really is an anti-meme... Why doesn't the fact that it's an anti-meme get wiped? We must be wrong about that somehow. Wait a minute. What if we were to keep notes about what it isn't? Would we remember those? Bartholomew Hughes, NSA. Document 55-2, report of Dr. John Marichek. Survey team 190055, uh, 127BXE, was successfully able to enter uh, the SCP's container and ascertain the appearance and, to some degree, the nature of the object. Uh, notes were taken accordingly uh, to the project methodology, see, <coughs> after which the container was sealed again. Excerpt from a transcript of personnel debriefing follows. Transcript. Do you want to be Dr. Hughes? Yeah, sure. Okay. I'm going, to need, I'm going to need to ask you some questions about number 55 now. And I'll be... Uh, yes. Number what? SCP Object 55. The object you just examined. 
no, no, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't think we have a 55. Okay, then. I'd like you to tell me what you've been doing for the past two hours. What? I, uh, I don't know. Okay, then. Do you remember that we all agreed that it wasn't spherical? Uh, that one wasn't it. All right. The other isn't round at all. The object 55 isn't round. So you remember now? Well, no, I mean, I don't know what it is, but I know there is one. There is something you can't remember. That it's not a sphere. Shake. I'm going to need you to tell me where you put meat wad. <laughs> Can you do that for me? Meat wad's right here. <laughs> it's like a J Chan Mike wad. I, I, that's what you were doing, going for, Tita. It's, like a Mi it's Mike, Mike wad. wad. It's like Mike okay. wad, but but like J wad. Yeah, J J, J, J wad. wad. Like, okay, remember when I said that occasionally, like, I, I will say a thing, and then someone will be like, that's a slur. And it's like, what 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 do you mean it's a slur? Yeah. J-Wad yeah. sounds like it could be one of those things. Yeah. Yeah. And one day it will it will be. It will be a slur. One day it will be. Yeah. Uh, For the meat people. It's literally Mike Wad's face transplanted onto her. Okay, that's amazing. Yeah, that's actually like the Mike Wad like AI image that Tita just like stretched over the the J Chan model. That's incredible. <laughs> okay, wait a minute. Uh, wait a minute. What's not a sphere? Object fifty five. Object what? The uh, doc, do you remember agreeing that uh, something wasn't shaped like a sphere? Oh, right. It appears to be possible to remember what SCP-055 is not, negations of fact, and to repeatedly deduce its existence from these memories. Personnel involved in Survey 19 blah 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 reported moderate levels of disorientation and psychological trauma associated with cycles of repeated memory and forgetfulness of SCP-055. However, no long-term behavioral or health problems were observed, and psych assessments of survey personnel showed consistent reports of this distress fading over time. Recommendations it may be worthwhile to post at least one staff member capable of remembering the existence of O55 to each critical site. Next. We need to talk about 55. I, Thanks, Twitter. I don't Twitter. know what this is. I think this is... <laughs> this is a tweet okay, about SCP-055. So there, there are stories. Um, Nobody can remember SCP-055, and here's why that's a good thing. <laughs> What are millennials missing out on by not being able to remember SCP-55? Do we want to look at... We, do we, we need to talk about 55? No, nah, let's not worry about it. All um, right. I, I just wanted to show you that this is a very, very... Um, it's a classic. Foundational. It's a foundational SCP. <laughs> a classic. Uh, tales are non-canon anyway. What are t uh, so they're like stories set in the universe that are not like in this format, basically. Right, exactly. Um, there are a lot of really cool tales yep. based around uh, groups of interest, um, such as Doctor Wondertainment, uh, Sarcasm, which we will be looking at tonight. Um, now, there's there, there's some cool stuff. Now, there are a number of knowledge-based SCPs, and I think that SCP-2521 might objectively be the best one, and I think you'll see why. Knowledge-based, he said. Knowledge-based. Yes. Okay. I just I just sent it to you. Uh, it is so. Uh, good. I've seen I've I've seen this before. Oh, you've seen this one. Okay. Yeah, I've I've definitely seen this before. Okay, so 
do you want to like quote unquote read it? Yeah, sure. Why don't you take us through? Um. So you'll notice that at the top of the page, it, it, it's like a series of dots. Okay. Um. So like, d d does this translate to something? Directly? No. But the dots? Yeah. No. It's just SCP-2521. Just read. Dot, dot, line. Dot, 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 line, dot, dot, line, dot. Okay. So here is a photograph, right, of a fucking Muppet made out of pubic hair. And he's standing in a uh, a bunch of snow, right? All right, okay. This is two five two one. That's okay. I understand. I understand. It's coming for him now, everyone. Uh, and it's um looking fucking horrifying, actually. And it's like a snow cryptid, like it's up in like the Alps or something, like fucking great all right so it's got okay two is solid it says scp is that's so that's the symbol for the foundation number pound sign all right it's got two dots five dots grayed out and then two dots and then one dot grayed out mike stop <laughs> Bye, Mike. Okay. So now, this K must stand for Keter. A uh, Keter! It, it cannot be contained. It is not possible to contain this thing. Okay. So it says there's a lock, a padlock so, over it. Okay. So this is symbolic of the special containment procedures. All right, special containment procedures. All right. Okay. All right. Hold on. So this, yes, I have seen this before. So this is the critter. Okay. Chad is sweat frogging, and they're like, "Mike, you're my favorite streamer. Don't do this. Mike is dead. <laughs> he's gonna, he's gonna die." Okay, because it says, "Look." It said, I stands for information. So information about the creature can be, it, it, it can be, I don't know how to fuck, I don't even know how to explain this. You can use symbols. It, it can be pictorially pi described. Pi that's a, thank you, Fred. It can be pictorially described. Pictorially, it could be represented with pictures and symbols. Okay, which is which is exactly what we're looking at. You can't write a, you can't write about it. Okay, you can't save uh, any of the information digitally. So you can't you can't have it digitally. You can't have it traditionally with pen and paper. You can't have writing about it. You can't have writing about it. You can't have files about it. And you can't talk about it. You can't talk about it. Dead streamer. All right, stream is mine now. Now I don't see any indication of you dying if 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 you know you try to do this. It's the pee pee poo poo men. Don't think it. Don't say it. <laughs> uh, so let's take a look at this. So symbols about. All right. So th this this file basically at four dead people no or, so or, um it's who is allowed to view the file oh like, it's security, security clearances oh, okay sorry it's security clearances all right so one to, to three zero to three cannot four and five may may yeah. read it so oh like so there are only 13 people on the o5 council who uh basically control the foundation okay and there are five levels beneath them zero one two three and four so only level four and uh clearance and up are allowed to look at this 
Okay, let me make sure I can read it then. Here we go. Oh, this is cute. So someone in chat is saying a uh, fun fact about this SCP. It was written as part of a contest for the theme was shorter SCPs where bonus points were given to entries under a certain word limit. The idea behind this one is that it had a total word count of zero. It's pretty clever. That is very It also clever. created probably one of the best SCPs. Oh, this is one of the best. Like, yeah, it's all you. you yeah, the, the first series is not necessarily the best. Some of the best SCPs come from later series. Okay, can I check my security clearance now? I was doing the. I was regurgitating the bit from earlier. You may. Okay, time to check my security clearance. Oh, I don't know. What do you think, guys? Can I. Fuck. Can I read it or not? What do you think? Can I read it? Fuck. Can I fucking read it or what? Can I read it? Okay. Um. So here's information. Now, it's okay. So I've. It 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 doesn't say. That that you can't talk about it. It does. It doesn't say that it, it'll it'll kill you if you talk about it. It 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 says that um you will be unable to talk about it, right? Uh, well, it explains it. Okay, so there's a a sticky tendril with some cum on it. And there's, uh, I don't know, twist, twisty spaghetti, spaghetti fingers, right? So it's got twisty spaghetti fingers that are sticky, sticky spaghetti, okay? Five fetishes. Sticky spaghetti. And uh, if you try to lock it up in a, in, a, in, a, in a containment, it'll just walk straight through the fucking wall. It doesn't give a single shit, all right? Just like phases straight straight through it like it's, you know... Like some kind of fucking Bethesda game or some shit, right? Um, now, down here, you could see the critter. And he's thinking about people talking about him. And it's like giving him anxiety or something. Okay, so he's, th he's thinking about... Okay, he can think about people talking about him and he can think about information about him existing but he cannot he is incapable of obeying traffic laws <laughs> help me sorry officer i didn't understand i couldn't read the sign that said that this was a uh, a, tr a school speed limit zone so, um, it's not my fault that I ran over all those kids, <laughs> then backed over them, Get a load of and this. then ran over them again. Oops. He can't understand signage and symbols. He can't understand symbols, but he can understand human speech and, he, and, 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 and language and writing. Yes. Nailed it. Okay. All right, so here's, um, I don't know, checklists of information. Uh, all right. Okay, so these are test subjects. Subject A is a D-class personnel. All right, let's kind of like zoom in here. I, I can't make this any bigger, can I? No. I want, I just want to, I, I want to look at, all right, so, fuck. He's in the room, and uh, there's a speaker in there, and it says they're telling, they're instructing him to write. He picks up a pencil and he writes. Pencil. And, and then this thing comes up behind him, and uh, uh, I don't know, hugs him tenderly and like gives him a kiss. It says love. There's a heart on his face. 
Okay, it, it picked up the writing and it fucking hugged it. And then it yeah, vanished and now the guy is crying under a table. Oh, this thing yeah, is a fucking narcissist. Is, no, this thing is a late stage commentary YouTuber. I can't, what does that mean? Don't worry about it. It's attracted to writing of itself. He doesn't want to be perceived. All right, I get that. Bubba Fair says, you'll be there in three years. Don't worry about that. Guys, what the fuck? No, what the fuck is he talking about? What, I want, what, do you, what, what, what is it, Fred? What, what is it? Oh, just commentary YouTubers have a strong tendency to just get in slap fights and look for anyone talking about them. Uh, I guess you could also say this is Derek Smart. I don't know who that is. Actually, that, that works even better. This is like Derek Smart in his final form. So I don't understand. That means Bubba Fair called me like a petty bitch, I think, is what is what just happened. That's nice, dude. Thank you. Um, if, I, if I say his name one more time, he'll appear. So we can't keep talking about him. <laughs> I, I should really tell you about Derek Smart sometime. What a story he is. I, yeah, I've never heard of him, but but let's uh let, let let's finish up this particular SCP because it's, yeah, yeah. it's it's pretty exciting. Um, so the B subject B was uh, he was asked to describe. Oh, <laughs> right, yeah. So he was asked to uh, describe the 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 creature, and it fucking slurped him into the into the spaghetti. Mm -hmm. It was like, fuck yeah, you're talking about me? That's awesome. And it likes it. With me. it it's, it's not like, it's a narcissist. It's like an insane narcissist. It just, everything, it, it wants everything about it, right? Wants it to itself. Yeah, it wants everything about itself all to itself. Oh man, he fucking got slurped. Look at that. Man, am I right? <laughs> Fully spaghettified and loving it. Oh my god. <laughs> and now he's just fucking gone. And that's what chat is afraid is gonna happen to me because I talked about it. Oh, that's the whole thing, huh? That's it? That's it, yep. Uh, why did I feel like there was a little enjoy... bit more to it than that? It's but not I... a cognito hazard, but you can't talk about it. A cognito hazard being something that is dangerous if you think about it. I mean, like... All right, so like th theoretically, according to this thing that we just looked at, I should be getting absorbed by this thing right now, right? Mm hmm Yeah. And that'd be pretty fun. Are you even okay? I'm going to go use the restroom and I'll be right back.
I'm fine. I just all I don't right. I don't know how to fix all this. Like, I don't know how to fix any of this though. Has... <laughs> Holy... Just work your way backwards. Yeah, we're good. It's okay. I gave them a spooky little sp Halloween spook spooky time. Oh good. Oh good. Spooky time moment. But I actually um I got a P too. Can you like um I don't know. Uh, do something yeah, can, like like talk to them about something while I piss. And, and listen, do not let main dog come under any Understood. circumstances, okay? Understood. Because that would be a real containment breach, let me tell you. More like a containment preach. Brother, you don't you don't want preach. that you don't want that come to get loose. Trust me. Uh, I can't Dollars like filled with bacteria that are gonna turn people into main dog. <laughs> I was trying to like that whole time, Chad. I was trying to get Jake Chan to like glitch out to like make her head turn upside down, but she never did it. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna play an advertisement too. I'll, I'll be right back. Uh, All right, but they will still hear you talking, you know. Uh, so just uh, keep them busy, right? Give them um, I don't know, tell tell them about your balls, okay? I, um, well, I mean, given the amount that you talk about them, I feel like that's unnecessary, but, um, I'll, I'll figure something out. I've got, well, I'll, I'll just, I'll talk a little bit about some of the stuff that I've got coming up. I, I have, um, some more meat, of course. Um, and for those, for those who know, um, I definitely want to take him through the flesh that hates I feel like that's just a really solid meat tastic one. It's a very, it's a long one. Uh, we're going to. I, I think I want to close on that one because it really feels like an epic arc. Uh, yeah, six ten, for those who don't know. But there also is a lesser known one of which I am rather fond. That is, um, I discovered Sar the Sarkit cults a little bit early so there were like three scps that were associated with sarcasm when i first discover it discovered it now there are dozens but there were like three when i first started looking into it and uh, this was one of the early sarkic um sarkic articles can i show mike oh lou yes um i'll i'll show him he hasn't seen it yet I will show him. Apologies. I haven't gotten back to you about that. When am I going to do a vid with Brian from RCR? I don't know. Sometime. <laughs> the trick is, right, I'm if I'm going to be in one of his videos, I got to fly to him or he's got to fly to me. Uh, but I have so many Sarkic SCPs to read now. Um, I really haven't been reading the SCP Foundation for a while. Um, Mishmallow redeemed might cause you a bad word. I, I hope that I will be a suitable replacement. Um, but I will say that you are a flavorless bitch. Hopefully that will do. Oh, come on. Everyone's freaking out in chat. It's not like I called them British. What'd you say? What'd you what? do? Why is it? What, what's wrong? What'd you do? I no came goal. back and saw the chat in fucking chaos. What did you do? <laughs> <laughs> You've got two bikes and a bad word. Oh, a, oh, here come the bikes. Oh, oh, there's too many of them. Bike, 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 bike. Uh, everybody is a cocksucker. You're all, you're all cocksuckers. All right, I saw at least one bad word redeem. W were you redeeming bad word? I'm scrolling up and finding. I'm playing detective now. Uh, one person did, and um, I called them a flavorless bitch. Oh, that's awesome. That's ah, that's a really good one, man. <laughs> 
I nice. feel. You know how I feel. I feel how you like. Feel? I feel like I have the ability to come up with really biting insults, but I have no place to functionally use them. Because I don't traditionally spend time with people that I would use set insults against, except you maybe. Yeah, I noticed that. Yeah, that that that's why that's why you are the repository for so many of them. Um uh, you can use them here, man. Uh, if anybody wants to redeem a bad word, do it now. Uh, uh, Fred was it? It's like someone else. Someone else redeemed it. Here, I, I got one. I, I just call them a cocksucker one. every time because I'm not creative oh, okay. like that, you know. Right, well, no, I, I've got right. you. I, I guess like it's a bad word specifically. Oh, there how you many go. Bad words. Oh, no, I, I, I don't, I don't have the creative energy for this. Um, let me see. Me see neither. Titanium, you're a uh, Mike stream watcher. Jerk off. Oh, that's nice. Oh, Mike, Mike stream watcher. Uh, Hokosha, you're the kind of person who um, watches videos ragging on DSP, but doesn't have the balls to tell people that they watch them. Uh, let's see. That's, meh, not that insulting. Em em emulated me. Um, let's see, you use emulators, uh, but you you feel like you have to come up with excuses to use them. Oh, um, because... Uh, let's see. <laughs> em because it's illegal and, and immoral? I, they, they, they have to come up with excuses, and really they just want to play games. All right. The kind of person that feels like they need to justify even the little things that they do. Uh, let me see. Uh, <laughs> Jurg, you are a stinky bum burglar. And Jurg, uh, can you hit me up on Discord? I wanted to talk to you about something, bud. Nothing serious. Um, if you have my Discord info, hit me up. Uh, do you want to look at another SCP? Before I forget about that. Yeah. Uh, God, there's so many redeems now. Jesus Christ. Icy's paper is a pooper. Icy's pooper. Peter Pooper. Are the, I, I'll, I'll take three more. How about that? G give me three more. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, oh, give, give me a name so I can give it to them specifically. Oh, well, who's redeeming it? Uh, adoptive I mean, parents. Have a log? Your Adop new adoptive parents redeemed... And okay. Um, your new adoptive parents. Uh, you're the kind of person who keeps company that you don't want around, and you passive passive aggressively tell them so by not responding to them on Discord. Leaves them on red. Yeah. Terrible friend. Overlord Kresnik. You got uh, needs an insult too. Uh, Overlord. Press, Nick. You are actually a good writer, but you don't have the guts to tell people because all of your experience is in fan fiction. And while the fan fiction itself is nothing to be ashamed of, your shame is something to be ashamed of. <laughs> That's amazing. That's a really good one. I like that one a lot. Uh, Crossbone94 <laughs> needs one. Crossbone 94. <laughs> it's really good. You're the kind of person who read a couple of short stories in college and decided that your opinions were important enough to tell everyone on Twitter. <laughs> They're not. Spoilers. Uh, <laughs> we need one for Duxu and Twink Furry. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Hmm. I'm. I'm actually. I, I'm. I'm trying to. I'm trying to make these good. Yeah. Don't be afraid to use. Duxu, Duxu, you're the kind of person who tells people that you hike, as one of the interesting things about you in your Tinder profile. Ooh, that's fucking savage. Holy shit. That's and a really ooh. 
Twink furry. Uh, I got Twink? this one. This one's easy. You're right, a furry. Right. There we go. Uh, well, we <laughs> that's <laughs> yeah. enough. Give me another. Who enjoys another. ear I think sex? I, got, I, think uh, I, I think I got another. Jabroni Mike official, who by the way is not uh, not affiliated <laughs> with me whatsoever, for the record. Oh, uh, let's. See. <laughs> I'm sorry. Is this too much? Am I like feeling kind of bad right now? They want it. They asked for it. Are you kidding me? They redeemed it. I know. Um. Well, the best part of it, like you're saying this nope. shit, but you don't know who the, you don't know these people at all. Like they're not personalized insults at all. They're just yeah, creative let, let's ones. See, let's, yeah, here, g give me another. Give me another. Uh yeah, Jabroni Mike official. Uh, Jabroni Mike official. You're the kind of person who subscribes to a Twitch channel and exclusively uses the emotes on that channel, not because you think they're useful, but because you want to fawn over them and be noticed. Ooh, brutal. Brutal. Notice me, senpai. Uh, I feel like if they didn't want to be noticed, they wouldn't have made their Twitch name Jabroni Mike Official, so it's probably like you're onto something with that. Yeah, yeah. They want attention. They <laughs> crave attention. Yep. Uh, Brobold yeah. needs one. Brobold? Brobold? You're the kind of person who makes a kobold OC and thinks that they finally found a personality that fits them. <laughs> what? So sad. A kobold OC. You know, so... <laughs> Fred, Fred just like shat on everybody who has a kobold OC. OC, rip Zito. <laughs> uh, all right. So, so now, it, people are redeeming these left and right. If we don't like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> if we don't start ignoring them, then we're never gonna. We're not gonna read any more of these SCPs. Sorry, maybe, guys. Maybe, maybe we just gotta break out the cocksuckers. Nice Smith is a cocksucker. Uh, who else? Schmedley uh, is a cocksucker. Uh, I think we're just we're gonna go back to reading, guys. Uh, and also, yeah, for the people subbing and resubbing, we are going to. I, I'm gonna thank everybody at the end of the at the end of the stream, uh, individually. So, oh, Nice Smith redeemed. Why'd you redeem four insults in a row, Myth? Tavrix is asking me if I'd like to write an SCP. I've thought about it. I mean, it, it's something I ought to do, right? But I also feel like it, it, it is a bit of a community, right? Like, the, to be even considered, you kind of need to um, be involved in the community a bit more. I think you're plenty involved in the community. Look at what we're doing right now. I mean, sure, to, to an extent, but not um, not really in a personal way. I'm, like, not on their forums or anything like that. Uh, nice, Smith. You, uh, I don't know, you, 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 you lick public toilets. Oh, someone said I haven't insulted anyone's tea knowledge yet. Mike, give me a, give me a name. A uh, Nice, Smith, because yeah. they just uh, redeemed four in a row, apparently. Uh, all right, uh, Nice, Smith. You're the kind of person who buys stash tea and likes to think a little bit higher of themselves. <laughs> Got him! Because I know what that means. Stash being a very generic brand of tea bags. Uh, Peachy Froggy is a doo-doo mongler. They mong mongle, mongle doo-doo. I don't know what that means. Okay, um... You want to hit me with another one of these, these dank SCPs, Fred? Mm-hmm. Now, if you wouldn't mind, I would... Um, this is a long-ish one. This is a okay. medium-sized one. Uh, this is SCP-184. All right. You want me to read it? Uh, I, I could read... You took the last one, but if you want this one, you go ahead. Well, the last one was pictures, so... Yeah, that's fair. Oh, that looks like one of the, like, lazy uh, Pokemon designs right there. <laughs> it kind of does. There's another really good insult. That's like uh, cry, cry. Uh, this is what I just call the person a lazy Pokemon design. No, say that they're the person who designs all of those laziest Pokemon designs. 
So that thing, it looks like like it's like uh, one of the um, like steel type Pokemon, but it also it looks like the, 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 the one that's a snowflake. It's a uh, right, Cry, 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 Crygon or something. Crygon? Yeah, Crygon. It's like Crygon. Cryogonal. All right, whatever. I was close enough. Okay. Yeah, congratulations. You went to college. SCP-184. Object class Euclid. Uh, SCP-184 is not to be contained in any structure. It is to be attached to a high-power electromagnet at all times. Should the electromagnet fail, agents are to report to the SCP's containment area and prevent access to all unauthorized personnel until the electromagnet is restored to power. The area for it is currently configured to resemble a park with SCP-184 and its containment magnet disguised as statuary. Any and all visitors are to be monitored. Any structures affected by the SCP are to be demolished after review by a... Uh, final story, don't worry about it. Final demolition approval or inclusion into SCP will also be determined by this body. Uh, it's yeah, SCP-184 is a magnet. Fucking magnets. How do they work? How do they work? What even are they? No investigation is to be done into affected structures without approval and a rescue team on standby. Mike, give me another name. You got another uh, insult? Yeah, I've got another insult. Did we owe anybody an insult, chap? Oh, yeah. We owe, we owe a lot of people insults. Who was supposed to get insulted? Anybody? Uh, Bob Affair. Boom. Uh, Bob, all right, we're we're going to definitely have to work our way through uh, the others that we didn't redeem. Bob Affair, you're the kind of person who likes to think about the world as mystical and think that you're intelligent for accepting the complexity of the universe while not actually engaging with it. Right, in the he, same, like, you, you don't understand how magnets work, and it's enough for you to just say, oh, magnets sure are mysterious and odd without thinking about them any further. He believes in, in, in like, you know, magnet healing and shit, right? Like, he'll put, like, yeah. a ma he'll put, like, a magnet over, like, his fucking foreskin and, like, hope that it grows it back. <laughs> Right, like it's like How some magnet goop. has it again. It's like some goop shit. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, there's so many people. Rouge 105 uh, needs an insult. Harrisbo needs an insult. Oh my god, there there are so many. Yeah, I'm not insulting. I skipped it directly to hurting. <laughs> yeah, you fucked up with this, man. Yeah, and I I think I might have. Uh, SCP-184 is a small, mm, smooth, metallic object, 10 centimeters uh, tall and 10 centimeters wide. So it's like, a, it's a little, it's a little, little fella, right? Um, in the shape of a dodecahedron, each face of the figure has a circular hole in the center and a small sphere is attached to each vertex. It's made of a... An unknown but highly magnetic alloy, about as hard as brass. When inside an enclosed structure, uh, SCP-184 expands the structure's inner dimensions without altering its outer dimensions. Oh, it's bigger on the inside. SCP-184 will increase the inner dimensions of any enclosed structure by several hundred meters each day beginning one hour after entry into the structure. Oh, Rev's here. Hey, Rev. Oh, hey, bud. Hope you're having a good night, How man. How you doing? Uh, I'm showing Mike some of my favorite SCPs. Um, where was I? Fuck. Uh, did How, he... Uh, uh, no, go ahead. Did he read Ikea yet? Is that... Oh, like, just... The Ikea itself is an SCP? It kind of oh, is, um, Fred. There... Uh, He's right. There, there is there is an endless IKEA. That's fucking. That's so fucking like dead on. That that one just that works so well, right? Yeah, we uh, we haven't done IKEA. Um, I did show him fifty 
excuse me, 55, the anti-meme. That's the big classic one that I've showed him so far. Mike, have you explained um, the Fuddruckers SCP to Fred? No, we... Uh, not yet. Basically, remember that map that we looked at that had all the fake states? Yes. We created, like, an entire lore for one of the states. It's, uh, it's amazing. You, you, you would love it, actually. But, all right, let me... No, no, we're gonna, we're gonna yeah, keep, that, we're gonna keep reading this. Knows. I'm not gonna explain it to him now. Rev understands, or doesn't understand, as the case may be. Um... Okay, so this thing makes any, any enclosure you put it into bigger on the inside. Uh, initially, uh, SCP-184 only extends the walls out, causing rooms to become much larger without adjusting the height of the room. This expansion continues until the original dim dimensions of the room have been tripled. Where's my music? Video paused. Okay. Continue watching. Y yes, please. Uh, at this point, SCP-184 starts creating wholly new rooms. Uh, it's apparently able to copy items from inside the structure, creating furnished rooms consistent with the rest of the structure. After a period of time, however, the expansion process appears to break down. For example, items will be made from inappropriate materials, glass books, a wooden microwave. That No, see, that's just Outer Wilds core at that <laughs> it point. It is! <laughs> uh, rooms will be oddly shaped. That that fucking spaceship gives me so much anxiety. Uh, right. Rooms. I love it though. Oh, it's, it, so, it's cute. Uh, it's it, so it, it, whimsical. It's really no, cute. No, this, no, we're not. We're not going to turn this into an outer wilds dick sucking. It's stream. it's we're gonna... too late. No. Too uh, late. Yeah. Rooms will be oddly shaped. Doors will open into blank walls, and hallways will be tiny or twist back around in long mazes. The new inside structures continue to be more and more odd, while the outside remains unchanged. This SCP is a great way to like just increase the square footage of your house, like really oh, easily. Like to that, like people, somebody like abused it. Hold on here. Uh, this well, it, it, in a way that is absolutely fascinating. Like I love this SCP not just because of what it is, mm -hmm. but because of how it was used. Sounds you'll cool. see. This I, behavior I this uh, is most dramatically illustrated in homes. However, it has been observed in other instances, including a cardboard box. The changes do not go away with the removal of SCP-184, but no additional structures are created. This thing gave birth to the back rooms, right? The back uh, rooms? Fred don't know about the back rooms. Uh, it's like a, it's kind of a creepypasta thing. Mm. Uh, it's like an in, in, infinite, like, um, I don't know, basement, basically. Uh, it's creepy. I don't think I need to stress the fact that this thing can never be allowed into Site-19. We may need to look into different containment at some point. But for the time being, we will keep it in the open. Immovable and hidden. Uh, okay, Addendum 2, Locations of Interest. Oh, hold on. Mike, give me another person to insult. Give me uh, two more. Give me two more. Well, they have to redeem it, Fred. Well, I I know, but don't you have a log of the people who have redeemed it? Not handy. Uh, eh. No, I mean, I would have to, like... Here we go. We got Ash. Um, oh, Ash and Bun Time. Um, let's see. Ash, uh, you don't know what the back rooms are. <laughs> and uh, Bun Time... You stream as though people want to watch you. Do you know <laughs> that that do you know that Buntime actually does stream, or did you just like craft that out of nowhere? That, that wasn't specifically for Buntime. That was supposed to be a self own. But then I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> Buntime actually does stream if you didn't know, so you actually really just like crushed her fucking like dreams and heart. Yeah, you just fucked her up like real bad. <laughs> it was it was supposed to be a self own, and then it just very much wasn't. He he doesn't doesn't he didn't even know that she did that, so that's okay. Really, you should have saved that one for me, dude. <laughs> um, I mean, like I was specifically was going to say like you, like you may do one thing, like you do one thing, people like it, and you assume that people will enjoy you doing something else. That, like was... That, 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 that was that 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 was the original way I was gonna go for it, but I did know that Bun Time streams. I was like, wait a minute. 
That was I have a, an opportunity here. That was a mic insult. Um, <laughs> uh, okay, so it's currently hypothesized that 184 or an anomaly with a similar effect may be responsible for the creation of locations of interest, such as Backdoor Soho and Chugak U Cellar. Now, I kind of want to click on these now. Um, uh, Chugoku. Um, it's Japanese, I think. Uh, investigation into SCP-184 as a potential origin for these spaces is ongoing. Uh, I mean, you could just kind of assume what type of environments they are, right, based on the context. Addendum mm -hmm. uh, 38RB. Notes on recovery. Uh, SCP-184 was recovered in the Kowloon Walled City uh, in June of... Uh, Reports of the city's bizarre and explosive growth uh, attracted operatives who soon learned of SCP-184. Do you know what Kowloon Walled City is? I've never heard of it. Or was. Th that, is, that needs some huge context. Kowloon Walled City was a... It, it was the area... You know what? I'm just going to show you images. Okay. It has a very interesting history, but basically it's an area that didn't have Chinese jurisdiction for a very long time. But it wasn't really governed by the, I forget which Western country owned it, but it basically was ungoverned. And so, like, you can see it. That That's an aerial view. If you want to share that on stream. This is, this is a, a real thing? It's, okay, it's British. Yeah, they, they just did not, it was. It got torn down a while ago. Uh, I think over a little over a decade ago. Okay, so let me let me let me let me try to understand this. Let me. I'm just gonna ask you. That is a city. That I'm sorry. It had walls around it. Uh, it's not. It's not actually walled. Um, it, it's a part of its history. Um, it's called Kowloon Mold City because it was a Chinese military fort. Right, and then it became an enclave after the new territories released to the United Kingdom or the United Kingdom by China in 1898. Um, okay, that's fucking insane, it, dude. That, that... So the it had used to have the highest population density in the world by far. Right. Um. Why? Why does this exist? Why does I don't understand why this exists? Well, think about it. It's effectively a completely ungoverned area. So people would build it out. It was like a little a little country. Like it was like a little. It's it, it was technically. Um, here we go. In January 1987, the Hong Kong government announced it was a uh, Hong Kong. Yeah, British Hong Kong. Uh, the Hong Kong government announced plans to demolish the walled city. It's uh, gone? After an arduous eviction, eviction process and the transfer of de jure sovereignty, so legal sovereignty of the enclave from China to Britain, demolition began in March 1993 and was completed in April 1994. Okay, so... So basically, um, it was controlled by Britain, but wasn't really governed at all by it. China a long time ago had given control over it, but right. it, it essentially was ungoverned. And so it, it was a completely lawless place, effectively. Then why the fuck did all these people want to live in there? It was like, that was the appeal low of rent. it for all these people? Low rent. Low rent. Low, low or <laughs> low no rent. rent. It's, it's a cheap place. It was a cheap place to live. And for some people, like, it was, they effectively could do anything they wanted. Yeah, no laws, no taxes. No rent or low rent. That it, but because it was completely lawless, it stank. It was loud. It was it was packed. Very it, very stifling. It's fucking. Place to live. It's fucking crazy. But I just, it, I, I've never seen anything like it before. Like, cause it's so. Like it has no sprawl. Like it's so confined in, into a small space. Right. Like it's just right because it's just this little area. That, that is so is, strange. That is ungoverned. That's so uh, that's so fucking weird, man. I I never heard of this before. 
for a I few never heard decades, of this place. Yeah, That's for crazy. a few decades, it was uh, controlled by the triads, uh, which is the oh, Chinese. Oh, yeah, right, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's. There are photographs you can find of the interior, and you know what? Let me find some of them. The for you. buildings are it all is... interconnected at multiple levels. There's streets. They are. Yeah, they, they're, they're streets, yeah. right? Like, yeah. I, I just uh, linked it to you. That's what one of the alleyways at the bottom of Kowloon Walled City looks like. Like this is outdoors. Is, is this is this like the daytime? Outdoors. It's outdoors. Um, it's completely dark at the bottom because it's completely built up and then like people <laughs> were saying in nuts. chat some of the buildings have <laughs> causeways and walkways built um, across one another there was no city planning right people right right obviously the yeah, they wanted. I mean, this looks like the the fucking like one of those like asteroid cities on the expanse here here's here's another pretty good image low resolution but a it's good okay. image nonetheless um, so the and of course yeah people would just kind of throw trash and it wouldn't get collected so i think that the the implication of this scp is that it had something to do with the existence of the city well, it was used in Kowloon Walled City. What it's saying is that, well, you know what? I'll let you keep reading now that we have a, an idea of what Kow... Now that you have an idea of what Kowloon Walled City is. I know what the fuck is. it is. Yeah, I'd never heard of it. Yeah. Uh, reports of the city's bizarre and explosive growth attracted operatives who soon learned of the SCP held in the possession of... <gasps> after several police crackdowns, Mobile Task Force Zeta-9 was dispatched and recovered the SCP with minimal losses. The final effect of exposure to SCP-184 on both the city and inhabitants may never fully be understood due to the reckless actions of local law enforcement who destroyed several affected sections of the city before operatives could, ev could take action to prevent it. Uh, interviews with residents yielded minimal information, with the communal wall of silence being the major response. A few documents indicated that the SCP could be brought into a home and allowed to affect the dwelling for 50 pounds sterling per half hour. These documents were unconfirmed by residents. That's amazing. Somebody was renting it out. The triads. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, additional documentation. Uh, oh, this that's it. is... How would you feel if I read this part? I, I Sure. I'm going to click this, okay? Yeah, go ahead. All right. For the personal log of Gordon Richards. Yeah, someone saying this sounds exactly like something that would happen in Kowloon Bald City. You're completely correct. Uh, let me get my tea ready. I'm going to just brew a little cup of tea. Sippy, sippy. S sippies. Sippies. It's so also bun time. Odd. I hope you didn't take me seriously. <laughs> Uh, bun time hates you now. Ah, uh, that's fine. Hi, uh, uh, signs. She'll just, I'll I'll throw her hatred in the pile. Uh, someone in chat said I watched. I just watched a ten minute ad on your YouTube channel. How much did I give you? I don't. I don't know how that works. Probably like a fraction of a cent. But thank you for that fraction of a cent. Appreciate mm -hmm. it. If you really want to get to the screen, uh, to the stream uh, sub or bits, it's gonna be the best way. Uh, yeah, that's true. Um, mm -hmm. uh, watching an ad yeah. is still quite little in, in large quantities. It it makes a big difference, but I mean, just subbing is gonna be the like, best thing you can do. you know. We're talking to to, to yeah to actually make like significant uh, profit on. On YouTube, you need um, yeah, you need you need uh, an insane amount of views. Yeah, um, it's like I, yeah, it's, yeah it, it took a long time to get to the point where I could do it full time. I'll put it that way. And hmm. uh, there's also a Patreon that I do with no like um, significant rewards to speak of, but plenty of people seem to like it anyway. Mm -hmm. Patreon, I would say, is the better route to go over Twitch subs, actually. Uh, if you really want to support the uh, to, uh p patreon actually takes a um 
a smaller percentage of the the profit. Mm -hmm. um, much smaller, yeah. Much smaller than Twitch does. Um, yeah. All right, shall we? Yes, please. Personal log of Gordon Richards, member of Modal Team Zeta Nine, Zeta Nine, the Mole Rats. Remember, they were the. This was the team that we read in um, the the flesh uh, polyp, I believe. Zeta Nine. Or mm. the mole, the mole rats. No. Mm. Date, June third. Dispatch to the Kowloon Walled City to recover an object and document anything affected by it. I have never seen such a horrible place. The filth is everywhere, whole walls and even structures made of garbage. If you crack your suit for even a second, you get flooded by the smell of smoke, cooking, sweat, machine oil, and excrement. Henry fell into a pit used as a sewer on the ground level after breaking through a trash walkway. <laughs> he was fine, the suit was just filthy, but he threw up and had to be removed. Not sure if he's gonna work out. Everyone here avoids us like the plague or darts out to throw trash or insults. They are a tribe, and a territorial one at that. The sheer crush of humanity is intimidating, and I'm glad I have the suit between me and them. The object is supposed to be somewhere in the core of this mass, but getting there is going to be tricky. And let's get one thing straight, like, Gordon Richards is an asshole. Right? Okay. Like, Somebody in chat said that the the most interesting part about this SCP is its link to one of the SCP-001 proposals. Oh, so, I, I forgot that it was linked there. Um, <clears throat> okay. I don't know what that means, but maybe you know what that means. Uh, I'm not sure. June 4th. Local law enforcement led by agents did a bunch of raids last night. Cleared people out of some of the areas we need to go in, but there are so many people here it's hard to notice any difference. Yesterday's recon helped uncover a couple homes affected by this thing. They didn't look like much, the same squalid homes as everyone else, but they're too big inside. It's an odd feeling, standing with your hand on the wall and knowing that by all rights you should be six feet outside the structure in mid-air. Henry is better today, but seems really jumpy. Lev took him aside and talked to him last night, and I hope it's helped. I'm getting worried about him. Caught him muttering to himself over the radio today. Told him to knock it off, but didn't report it. Maybe I should have. I'm thinking, I think I'm going to ask for him to be put on a different unit after this. Deep recon this evening. We're splitting up to try and hunt down where they are storing this thing. Lev and I pulled the short stick and have to hike it around the sewer system. Honestly, it can't be any worse than topside. At least I won't have to see keep seeing the blank, empty faces of these people. June 6th. Henry is dead. Oops. We didn't get back until early this morning. We've been off the radio for several hours because of all the interference. Seems areas affected by this thing screw with radio waves pretty bad. The sewer was a nightmare, but no sign of alteration by the item. When we came back up, Paul gave me the news. Henry and Paul were exploring near the center of the city when they got attacked. A mob of people swarmed them and dragged Henry off. Paul was hurt and his suit was badly damaged, and he had to leave for medical attention. Henry was screaming over the radio for a while, and then it cut off. Paul and a couple other mole rats charged in with some agents to recover Henry, but after a few minutes, Henry came back on the radio. His receiver was broken, but he could still broadcast. One of the agents was recording, and he played it back to Lev and I to see if any of it made sense to us. He, it didn't. He was rambling and sounded like he was hurt. He kept talking about the endless heart of the city, the hell of glass, just crazy stuff. Paul and the rescue team kept trying to find him, but suddenly his radio cut out again. Henry came tearing down one of those tiny halls, helmet off and screaming like a madman. He ran right by Paul and smashed an agent into a wall on his way by. He slammed into a dead end and just exploded through it, right out of the building. He fell six stories onto some metal junk. It took an hour to get his body untangled. We're done screwing around here. Agent Parks, Lev, and me are rounding up what amounts to the city elders, and we're getting to the damn bottom of this. June 7th. Rip to a real one. 
Sleep, sleep well, Henry. In mangled in metal. June seventh. Interrogation went well. Agent Parks asked the questions. We provided what he called negative consequences. Can't there? Negative consequences for non-cooperation. The first guy, some triad punk, didn't want to talk. Two broken legs later, and he was a lot more open. Said the thing was called the Builder, and nobody knew what it, when it first came to the city. He never had anything to do with it, just helped stand guard outside rooms where it was working. He said that was all he knew, and that we had to talk to one of the elders, long when, if we wanted it. He apologized for Henry's death, said it was just the way of things. I broke his jaw in three places. Long when maybe. Bam! The Why are yeah. they like? Why are they like brutalizing civilians? What is this? They're out. Well, I mean, it's triad. I don't know if that counts as civilian. I guess not. But like, what? Do they, it... they they have the SCP has the authority like to like detain and torture people. Oh, completely. They no, do. The SCP Foundation okay. has broad permissions from many governments. Okay. All right. Well, that's fucked. Long Wen may be the oldest looking man I've ever seen, and with a will like iron. He just took everything we dished out and didn't say a word. Park said that the next stop was his wife and grandkids, and that got him talking. Told wow, us it was they're fucking the brutal. Oh my like god. I, like I said, Gordon Richards is not a good man. These they're brutal. Fuck, I didn't know they were like this. Holy shit. Yeah, the SCP Foundation is a little brutal. A lot brutal. A lot of, <laughs> a lot of. <laughs> wow, that's fucking dumb. They mm -hmm. do everything to keep the peps secret unknown. <laughs> what are the ingredients? What are the forty-nine ingredients? What are they? Told us it was kept in one of the oldest parts of the city, some old temple. It had grown and made wonderful things, but only the worthy could look upon it and not be overwhelmed by it. He said Henry was shown the wonders in the hopes that he would be able to convince us to not take the Builder, but that he was not worthy and was broken. We made him show us where they keep it. Long Wen said it wouldn't do any good, that it was buried too deep. They moved it deep inside when they first caught wind of the agents. He said we'd never get it back. We're doing deep work tomorrow, and we're not coming out without it. June 10th. Been out for a while. This place is amazing. At first, it was just a temple that was too big inside, neat, but nothing new. Then we went in deeper. Whole rooms, altars, everything recreated and rearranged by this thing. It's like someone built 12 whole temples inside this one tiny structure. Agent Park set up a recall point in the main hall with some other agents to make sure nobody sneaks up on us. We suited up and went to work. It started getting odd after hour six. Lots of hallways, not as many rooms. Then, 83 rooms all connected by those sliding doors, each with a tiny Buddha in the center of the floor and nothing else. Lev grabbed a few for samples. We knew things were getting odd when we came to a perfect reproduction of the first altar room, but appearing to be made of one solid mass of wood. It's like somebody was making, like, um, like a fucking video game map, and they were just copy-pasting assets. Mm -hmm. You know, like, somebody yeah. was... Like, it's a copy-paste yeah, job. So I gotta be careful that Yandere dub doesn't get here. Oh, no. Well, it's, is that, that's how he makes maps? No, it's just this is going to be his next attempt. Or uh, yeah, there this this thing, this thing is just asset flipping buildings. Clone yeah, tool on the rooms. Yeah, he's <laughs> using the clone. Or it's like um, it's like taking a JPEG, um, and then take like putting it in a program and then exporting it again and again and again, and each time it gets a little bit more. Do I look like I know what JPEG is? Just infinite crust. Yeah. Add crust. Thing was beautiful and totally seamless, and not a single tool mark on anything. Paul found some documents and we scanned them back to Parks. He said they were about the object, 
Apparently, they're calling it SCP-184 now. Park said it talk. Park said it talks about how they moved 184 deeper each time it made a new area. They thought it was some gift from God or something. Use it to expand rooms if people would donate to the temple, or at least to the gangs that controlled it at the time. So I've never been. So hmm? they they found documents in the uh, in the temple that were about the thing itself. Uh, yes, I believe so. Or well, I think that the temple was just a temple to Buddha, but then they put the SCP inside of it. All right. So somebody wrote up a. a a whole dossier about this thing and left it in there or i mean it, this is something that the locals wrote that they found mm. no the scp doesn't name itself oh. I, it, it, this was written a little bit confusingly which is why i'm asking him to clarify it really no like so the, the basically you put the thing in a room and then it it, it makes the room bigger and then at, once that room hits a certain point it starts making more rooms that yeah. you can get yeah okay we're, we're, we're specifically so starts... talking about the documents that they found that got scanned back to parks right so no, he was. Um, he just mentioned that like they're calling it 184 now. Um, Park said it talks. Uh, yeah, the uh, the documents. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Th this is about um, right now. We, they found documents about it, and um, he's talking about what was in the documents. Okay. Uh, Park said it talks. So the documents talk about how they moved 184 deeper each time it made a new area. They thought it was some gift from God or something. Used it to expand rooms if people would donate to the temple, or at least to the gangs that controlled it at the time. Yeah, the documents don't call it 184, but that they've named it at this point. I've never been in a place like this. It's getting harder to maneuver. The halls are starting to get strange. They go up at funny angles, and the last few rooms have been tiny. By Lev's count, we should be 20 feet above the roof of this whole city by now. June 12th? I'm getting sick of this place. Came to a branch yesterday, had to split the team. I drew the up hallway and set out. Not sure how long I've been climbing. The halls aren't regular anymore. They wave in and out like a frozen earthquake. Everything seems to be made of stone here. Managed to squeeze into a side room to catch my breath. Once I looked around, I saw everything was made of jade. It was all colored right and had the right texture, but it was jade. Bed, chairs, table, books, everything. I sat on the bed for two hours and didn't think. I got up and smashed the jade lamp that was probably worth more than my life, and left. I'm not feeling well. I feel really disconnected here, like an astronaut or something. It's not like other areas I've been in. Never felt so alone. I'm fine, I know that. It's Henry dying, the whole rotten city outside, and me being alone and able to think too much. Rats are tested for men uh, rats, right? So mole rats. Rats are tested for mental st uh, stability, and I passed with flying colors. It's just my nerves. I'm sitting on a chair made of thousands of tiny dragon statues, riding on a table made of super dense paper, and I am fine. <laughs> June. I've been out too long. Food low, water low. Not out yet, but getting there hearing things. Keep thinking I hear voices. Been climbing for days. Saw a light today. At the end of a side hall. Bright yellow light. I climbed into the hall and ran. Smashed through the door and it was a room. Millions of candles. All lit but just another room. Pulled off my helmet. Smashed the candles with it. Broke my lenses. Neck seal. Radio. Didn't care. Sat and cried for hours. Dropped a pick down the shaft today. Never heard it hit bottom. Almost jumped to go get it, but stopped. Got to find this thing. Going to smash it to bits. Stomp it. Crush it. Itchy. June. Tasty. 
June. Food out. Soup can't make any more water. Saw a hall with 10,000 doors. Ran down it. Smashed a bunch, then kept climbing. Lost my boots. Floor looked like carpet. Made of super sharp stone. Cut suit to ribbons. Feet too. Not the feet! The feet. Yeah, you. when you raided me the other day, did you tell everybody to come in here and say, Hey, feet! Yes. Yeah, they did. Was yeah, they really did. Good. Yeah, it's a good job. Yeah, I'm proud of them. Blood all over the shaft. Hope it appreciates it. Oh. To crush this thing. Feel it shatter in my hand. Hate this place. Keep hearing Henry. Keep telling him he's dead. Won't listen. Date. Top of shaft. Hall to forever. Lights everywhere. Going to kill the heart. Date. Unknown. Hell is heaven. Heaven is hell. Life is wonderful. Notes. Gordon Richards went missing during the recovery of 184, presumed KIA. 184 recovered by Team Zeta-9. Journal recovered in rubble left from destruction of 184 affected temple. Someone in chat says this reads a lot like Annihilation. Yeah, it does. Okay. And and clap. Fuck! <laughs> Come on. It starts reading yeah. with both hands as one hand. That's what it is. It's shit. It's fucking shit, Fred. Yay! Yay! I did it. I'm doing it. Look. Yes. Yes. Oh my god. Ah, uh, point was, uh, that was a great SCP, and you read it so well. Oh, thank you. Now I have to I'm mostly, I'm, I'm mostly a narration boy. I'm gonna I, give- I accept that, but... Mm. Thank you. I'm gonna give myself a round of applause for giving myself a round of applause. Hold on. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, fuck it! Fuck it. You wanna read another one? Yeah, you ready for another? Yeah, I loved that one, man. I, I thought, like, I picked these out partially because I like them, but also because I thought you would appreciate them. This place is really, uh, I don't know, it's really cool. I, I, I loved finding out about the walled city of Kowloon. It was really interesting stuff. And, yeah, it's um, fascinating. Yeah, I think the implication is, like, that that, that city is, like, the thematically uh, related to this object. Right. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, it sounds yes. cool. I uh, I would love to have one of these things. Um. Yeah. Great. <laughs> yeah. No. I was. I mean, dude. You know. It's, I like space. I like having a lot of space. You know. Yeah, if you especially read the, when it's fucked up, the uh, SCP 001 version because it expands on this a bit. Uh, I'm gonna leave that up to Fred. Um. I haven't. I haven't read that, so I can't uh, vouch for it. Yeah, he's not vouching. Um, okay. Uh, did you have another one um, that you wanted you wanted to look at tonight? Oh, of course. I've got like we've got plenty. I'll put it this way. Um, if if we don't end the stream with the flesh that hates, then we've got sarcasm. Sarcasm, Fred. Sarcasm. Um, I know it also sounds like it could be a slur, but it's not. Dorselessness. Someone in chat bit. said that this SCP was used to make the Blue Lick Roadhouse. It was, yes. It, it did feel like that sometimes, didn't it? 
Right, like this person was in that temple for days and it took him until he was out of food and water to crack. We were in there for like six hours. I was broken by hour two. He wanted to die, right? He like you go watch that video and like click like just just click to like five hours in and listen to the to like the sound of his voice like he was just done he was he had been done for hours by that point like he was he, I... you could hear him dissociating and like breaking down mentally completely it... unironically I was dissociating so early on in that and it's like. That is exact. Like you look at this guy and his description of what it was like, you know, his slow descent into madness, and it is pretty much precisely what me and Fred went through that day when we looked at we looked at that that house. Uh, we're talking about Blue Lick Road for the people who I guess are um, I don't know, only intermittently paying attention because uh, um, I don't know. I mean, Zoomers just don't have attention spans, right? These days. Obviously. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, But Twitch is also a Zoomer thing, too. It is. Yeah. And those streams go on forever. I mean, look how long we've been going on. We're three and a half hours in. We're we're only like halfway through. I feel like we just started this stream. Right? Um, I, I okay. Think we, I, I think we should do this again before Halloween happens. Oh, be yeah? Fun. You want to um, yeah. do it again? Yeah, it might uh, be fun. Could be cool to. I, I know I'm at least going to do it on my own, on my own stream. Okay. Um, I would love to use this rig again. I feel like Tita worked really hard on it, and uh, it'd be cool to. Right. You know, I just would hate to just only use it once. You know, like that's kind of kind of lame. Um. Let me read right. one of the. Let me read one. Yeah. Um. There. Let's see. Would you like one that isn't fleshy? And one that is maybe... Like, I, I I chose some heavy ones. This one is heavy, but not in the way that we have been reading so far. Does is that make sense? As heavy as your nuts? Sure. No. It's, it's not... Nothing is quite there. Uh, you know what? Yeah, let's do it. This is one of my favorites. This is called SCP-1230, alternately known as A Hero is Born. Uh, uh, you don't know how hard this is, guys, to do. A Hero is Born. Yes. This is a very good one. Okay, hold on. Is another classic? I don't know if this is a classic one, um, but I know a lot of people really like this one. All right. So we got a image of a little... Uh, is it a, a death note? A book. A book. SCP-1230. It's your, it's your grandma's death note. Uh, object class safe. Uh, all right. So this is funny because we got a whole couple of sentences here and there. A line through everything? Uh, SCP-1230 is to be kept in a secure storage locker at Site-12. Access requires minimum clearance 2, with authorization and supervision by Clearance 3 research and security staff, respectively. Supervising personnel are not to view the SCP's contents. Personnel accessing SCP-1230 are required to submit written accounts of dreams experienced within 48 hours of access. See Addendum 1230A. Now, all of that's been crossed out. Mm hmm So now there are new special containment procedures. SCP-1230 has been relocated to a secure storage locker behind the desk of Site-12's main library. But the fucking SCP Foundation doesn't have, like, keyboards with back spaces on them? I think they, they keep it there for records. Uh, okay, that's... Fine, but yeah, but half their records are just like big chunky black lines where you can't fucking read the thing anyway, so whatever. Uh, SCP-1230 has been relocated to a secure storage locker behind the desk of Site-12's main library. Access is available to clearance to personnel deemed to be in... I didn't do that! <laughs> 
I didn't move. My, my arms are completely stationary. What is know, this Mike, thing? Mike, you know what that means, right? What? It means that there's something behind you reaching over. <laughs> the it's the the sp the spaghetti monster, the sticky spaghetti spaghetti fella. Mm -hmm. He's here for you. The sticky spaghetti. I love, by the way, that just that fucking first image in in that in that file. It's good, right? Like whatever that whatever artist made that that creature. That's fuck. I love that fucking thing. Oh yeah, it, it's fantastic. Um, lobe. Access is available to clearance to personnel deemed to be in satisfactory psychological condition by site psychiatric staff. Personnel accessing SCP-1230 must submit written accounts of their dreams within 48 hours of access and submit it submit to follow-up psychological examination. So not really like that different, huh? Hmm. Oh, it's it's yeah, it's pretty simple. Uh, it's not too different from what's been crossed out. Right. Not too different, but you'll understand the nuance of it soon. Um, SCP-1230 is an unlabeled green hardcover book with no apparent exceptional qualities. Well, that's not nice. That's the next time and somebody... That's the, the S that's the end of the SCP. Thanks, everyone. Like the, the, the next time... I like, I like a book. The next time somebody redeems an insult, tell them that they're an unlabeled green hardcover book with no apparent exceptional qualities, okay? G give me give me another person to insult. Uh, when SCP-1230 is opened, it displays the phrase, A hero is born. On the first page viewed, while all other pages will be blank. Resetting once the book is closed. It has no obvious effects at first, but upon falling asleep, the reader will dream of a fantasy world where they are the protagonist of a troubled land. Dreamers are completely aware and all senses work just as well as when awake. Results vary depending on the imagination of the reader and are mostly attuned to fantasies of adventure that the reader would enjoy. In the mind of the reader, these dreams have been documented to last anywhere from 45 seconds to 200 years. But in reality, the reader will usually never be asleep longer than they would normally. It's an isekai book. Upon awakening, yeah. the reader is able to remember every aspect of their dream in detail. In SCP-1230 induced dreams, there is always a character called the bookkeeper appearing as a bearded man in a green cloak who claims to be the personification of, of SCP-1230 himself. SCP-1231, the guy, has been re reported to be very amicable and helpful towards stream uh, dreamers. It has stated that it enjoys creating these fantasy scapes and always tries to shape them in such a way that the dreamer garners the most entertainment out of it. He's a fucking D&D-like GM. Yeah! He's a GM. That's literally what it is, isn't it? Yeah. It has expressed sorrow when the dream comes to an end and asks the dreamer to please visit again soon. All right, somebody in chat said, Mike, you gay. And it's like the third time I saw somebody in chat say that to me tonight. What, what What's going on? Mike isn't just gay. He's the gayest man alive. You know what? That means that I perspire endorphins basically i make people feel good i also kill people it. though so you know there's mike that. mike you truly are the person that makes people feel better about themselves at parties and not in like a negative way yeah you do it with heroin <laughs> you never meant it as an insult you were just insinuating that i'm a heroin dealer Exactly. No, I'm I'm insinuating that you secrete aerosolized heroin from your pores. You're the type of person who makes people feel better about themselves at parties by making them incredibly high off their yeah. asses. <laughs> in a small bookstore located in... <laughs> the shopkeeper had no recollection of owning the unlabeled book, but attempted to sell a story to local newspapers about a magical dream book. What? The Foundation was able to dispel the story as a hoax and the SCP was confiscated. 
He had no memory of owning the book, but attempted to... S oh. Wait, what? Wait, hold, hold on. He So he... He fucking didn't have memory of, 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 of owning it or I can you explain this? Does this make sense to you? Like it basically it appeared in his bookstore and he's like, guys, there's there's a magical dream book. Like I have a magical dream book. Like he he just doesn't know how he got it. He doesn't have a recollection of owning it, but he he, he didn't, oh, like he doesn't remember buying it. Like what? Well, what they should have said is he he had no recollection of buying it. Okay. They should have said of acquiring. Yeah. Uh, experiment twelve thirty oh one, Doctor <laughs> Frank. In an, Frank. In an attempt to test its effective range, opened SCP twelve thirty and boarded a flight to his tom hometown of, <laughs> where he spent the night at a hotel. Upon his return, Doctor. <laughs> reported that SCP-1231 appeared in his dreams and explained that once you read a hero is born, the dream is immediately implanted in your subconscious, after which SCP-1231 is able to manipulate it remotely. Dr. F <laughs> expressed his appreciation for SCP-1231's cooperation. It's kind of a cool, uh, it's a cool one. Like you'd want, you'd want to run into this one out there, right? Right, Th this sounds like a 90s movie. Oh, uh, yeah, it does. <laughs> um, can you like... that you had on VHS when you were little. Uh, okay. A camera was set up above SCP-1230, and using a mechanical arm... <laughs> Mike, are you trying to use that? <laughs> I'm just, I'm just having, I'm just having fun. I'm sorry. No, I, I know, I know, and it's valid. It's so natural, Herrick says. Yeah, it looks so, so real. I, I like. I feel like you've managed to avoid the uncanny valley by not even entering it in the first place. <laughs> we don't even fucking pretend to be uncanny out here. <laughs> Yeah, it's got like Jumanji vibes or like um, even like never ending story, right? Mm -hmm. um, a camera was set up above the book using a mechanical arm. The book was opened. All pages were revealed to be blank. It seems the SCP is only effective when opened by beings that are able to have dreams. Uh, the guy, uh, he explained to a subsequent dreamer that it is actually only able to affect beings with an imagination and that most creatures such as animals would not be affected all right so uh it's who who doesn't have an imagination um, uh, animals like i probably like i wouldn't be able to have dreams if i opened this book you yeah you <laughs> Jesus Christ, Mike. Mike, only I'm allowed to denigrate you. This is a yeah, this is a way to insult something here. JK Rowling can't use <laughs> can't use the book. Yeah, I was looking I was looking for something like that. I will never um, get over the fact that book four was massive because JK Rowling had to fill in so many plot holes. Like, you know You read these books? Only the first couple. I kind of lost interest. Um but they like that that is what i heard anyway i'm sure someone in chat will either um aggressively rebuke me or confirm what i'm saying is real but it's kind of like you know oh there's an example that i can think i you know what come back to me later I mean, but it's could... like they they had to spend so much time like fixing things you could just kind of like insert anybody you don't like in in like for for x x wouldn't be able to use the book right mm. uh all right so here's another experiment one d class uh was instructed to open the book and 
after much reassurance that his experiences would only be dreams. These guys are so like battered by this shit. Like, like they're just <laughs> uh, ordered to immediately uh, uh, find a way to kill himself in the dream. The subject was asleep for merely 45 seconds before he awoke with a start in a nervous sweat. He reported being at the summit of a volcano called the Ashen Spire in a quest for Caladius, the Blessed Blade. When asked how the subject knew the names, he stated, It's like I knew them all along. He apparently leapt into the volcano and felt an intense heat before awakening. D-Class requested permission to give it another go. Request was denied. Oh. Uh, sad. He didn't really get a... He didn't really get a fair shake. Um, experiment 123004. One D-Class was instructed to open the book and attempt to non-fatally injure himself in his dream. After six hours, the D-Class awoke and reported that he was able to feel a numbed sort of pain where it was never so intense as to be unbearable. He also reported meeting an elderly cloaked man who asked him why he was harming himself but thanked him for not immediately killing himself like that other rude fellow. So the thing is like pissed <laughs> it's like pissed off that people aren't like participating and it's it's fucking yeah, like the, the dude's like here, I'm I'm here to give you an epic awesome dream and the dude just fucking threw himself in a volcano. Into a volcano. That, was, that was kinda douchey. Also, people are saying, oh, he wanted to kill himself. It's like, no, I think he just wanted the chance to have an actual cool dream. Yeah, because, dude, his life is being an SCP test subject. Um, right, he's like, okay, well, I did it, but it, it's clear that, like, I could have had a really cool dream if I didn't immediately kill myself. Could I give it another go? They're like, no. This is like if you spent oh. hours upon hours coming up with an awesome D&D &D campaign and then, like, your fucking, your, your, your party just immediately chucked themselves into a volcano. Mike, is that like, a statement of intention? You, you come up with like an awesome story and you're really excited about it. And the guy's like, I'm going to step in front of a truck. No, I don't want you to do that. Da, da, I'm going to do it anyway. Yeah, but all the cool stuff is over here, not not under that truck. Don't care. Step in front of the truck. Mike. Foreshadowing? <laughs> it's a foreshadowing. Yeah, it, it's, it is. You're just, look, you're just a boring old man, Henderson. <laughs> Is there gonna be wee lads, little little like meaty wee lads in uh yeah. in, in fleshscape? We 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 men. Might, there might be. We lads. Fucking Henderson. Uh, <laughs> uh experiment twelve thirty oh five. Professor <laughs> filed a request for access to the SCP and was quickly permitted, given his level four clearance. Staff members recalled that Professor Brrrr was almost visibly shaking with excitement. And some reported that Professor Brrrr was an avid fan of tabletop and role-playing games. Ah, so a fucking geek! Surveillance shows that Professor Brrrr opened the book, read the phrase, and sat down beside the desk and promptly fell asleep. Staff members were alarmed when Professor Brrrr did not awake for... Uh, after 15 hours and alerted security, the on-site medical staff were able to confirm that Professor <laughs> was still alive and in good health. After approximately 24 hours since falling asleep, Professor <laughs> began to move, reported to have slowly raised his head and looked around the room, appearing deeply confused. Security entered the room to ensure he was all right, to which he replied, where am I? He was sent to medical where staff explained where and who he was. Several minutes later, Professor Brrrr appeared to have regained his memory and excused himself to the restroom. Uh, so I guess like, yeah, he probably would have like shit himself and, and, and all that during that time. He had to go change, change his like, you know, his tabletop diapers. When 15 minutes passed and Professor Brrrr had not exited, a nurse entered to find he had hanged himself with his belt. A scribbled message on the wall revealed his last words. I can't go back to this. Dr. Frrrr went to ask SCP-1231 what had happened, but upon opening SCP-1230, 
All of its pages were soaking wet with the same message on every page. I'm so sorry. I never intended for this to happen. I just wanted to make people happy. Repeat it over and over. That's As me whenever I stream. Uh-huh. Uh, are you like uh, self-deprecating here? Is that what that yeah. is? For once, I like all all of the ire I throw at you is just ire that I'm redirecting from myself to you. <laughs> I'm sure your 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 streams are lovely. In fact, I know they're lovely because I've been to them and they're they're so they're so lovely. Oh my! Um, that's why you guys should follow Fred. It's a good time. Uh. Right. I wanted to make people happy. Repeat it over and over. SCP-1230 remained in this state for weeks. For three weeks. And its desk had to be wiped dry bi-weekly. In an attempt to communicate, Dr. <gasps> placed the sticky note inside SCP-1230 with the statement, I'd like to talk to you, if that's all right. The next morning, Dr. <laughs> filed a report about a dream he had concerning SCP-1231. The book was crying. Right. Uh, report 1230-14. Shortly after the report was filed, surveillance showed Dr. <laughs> slipping another small paper into SCP-1230. Uh, Oh, oh um, I think there's, I found there's, there's it. There's a report. There's a report you is need to it, click on to open. Is it this? What? Yeah, he just like scribbled a picture of dick butt and like put it inside the book. <laughs> there, and there's like, there's a report that you need to click on to open. It, it's not a link. It just um, it's I HTML. understand. Yeah, yeah. Upon falling asleep last night, I dreamt I was in a dark void. There was a street lamp, and underneath it was SCP-1231 sitting in a puddle. His cloak was visibly soaked and he was sobbing profusely. I remember our conversation. Uh, do you want to be the bookkeeper? Sure. Okay. Bookkeeper, is that you? My God, man, where are we? I couldn't think of anything to make for a landscape. Bookkeeper, what happened that day? Why did Professor <laughs> kill himself? We have to know your side of the story. He had such an active imagination. I was able to create a vast and beautiful universe for him. It was obvious that he had wanted a life like that for so long. He conquered foul beasts and rescued princesses. He built kingdoms and even raised a family. But he never wanted to leave. He delved so far into his fantasy world that I soon realized he preferred his dream over the real world. I reminded him that this was all merely an illusion, but he wouldn't listen to me. He stated that if he was ever forced to leave, he would immediately end his life. I tried to keep him happy for as long as I could. Bookkeeper, how long was the dream from his point of view? 200 years, Doctor. I did my best, but I could only hold on to him for 200 years. As sweet as dreams may be, eventually, we all have to wake up. I awoke almost immediately after. I can't believe he spent 200 years in his dream. I'm astounded by his foolishness, but it's such a shame to have lost a brilliant mind to his own delusions. Kind of too sad. I needed to. It was too sad. Shortly after the report was filed, surveillance showed Dr. <laughs> Whoop. Whoop. Um, Dr. <laughs> slipping another small paper into SCP-1230. A few days later. Oh, there was, this was dick butt. A few days later, SCP-1230 began showing its usual... A hero is born greeting once again. When asked what the note said, 
Doctor <laughs> declined to give detailed comment, simply stating that he just gave it some friendly advice. I want to know how... Um. Oh, you know what? I'm fucking dumb. Never mind. Don't listen to me. <laughs> I answered my own questions. Don't worry about it. Bike. Addendum 1230A. During initial testing... Um, SCP-1231 asked the dreaming personnel if it could be relocated to an area with many books, preferably fiction, so that it could think of even better ways to construct its fantasy scapes. After numerous experiments were performed to ensure that SCP-1230 posed no threat, the request was accepted, and it was relocated to Site-12's library. Yeah. And that's why it was crossed out in the... Mm-hmm. This was excellent. I loved this one. This yeah. was incredible. It was sad, but it was fucking... This was just awesome. This was really... This This one, I feel like, really shows you what, you know, the SCP thing is, is all about. Like, it shows you what's what's possible, you know? Yeah. This is... And this is kind of what I wanted to showcase with my SCP selections tonight, is what is possible with the format. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's a fantastic format. It is, yeah. This this one was was great. Like it had, you know, uh, roller coaster of emotions. I want to know if I can have. Um, well, well, canonically, we know that uh, the bookkeeper can set it up so like you you can fuck. So like, could you <laughs> oh could you just make it like? Could it? Could you just have like two hundred years of just fucking if you wanted? Because it, it said, like, he had a family and all that. So, like, that means that he fucked in the dream? Do you think that this old man can give you a penis that is immune to the chafing that would result from 200 years of continuous fucking? I do. And I also think he could make it, like, a, a much bigger dick. No, no one has that power, Mike. Yeah, he could give me a big, a big, big, a, a big penis. And, um, you could just have, yeah... A, a fuck fantasy. He could do that. He and he seems like you can negotiate with him too. Like he's he's open to it. So I, you could you you could like you know talk him into making a fuck fantasy. I don't like the idea of trying to talk this kind old man into letting you fuck. Two hundred years of soaking. Someone said. All right. So I'll just <laughs> yeah. I'll just I'll just soak for two hundred years. Zito, what's up, dude? Uh, doing good, man. Um, yeah, I, I I loved this one. Wow, uh, it was really cool. No, yeah, I, just... I thought that you would like it. I really I really tried to pick ones that you would enjoy, and I'm I'm glad that you enjoy them as much as I do. I feel like we have very similar tastes in a lot of ways. We do with some things, yeah. I, I, SCP ruined. <laughs> Mike ruined it. <laughs> he ruined it. Um. And I mean, there are a lot of good ones, and there have been a few. After that one, how about a doofy one? Yeah, I would love a doofy one. How sure. about a doofy one? This is a good doofy one. And there, I saw a couple of requests for this one, too. So we'll take a quick sidetrack. It's short. Uh, this is SCP-426, and I will let you just discover what it is right away. You want me um, to read it, or do you want to read it? I would like you to read it. SCP-426. Uh, Euclid class. Special containment procedures. I am to be sealed in a chamber with no windows through which I may be viewed. The door to my chamber must have a label completely unrelated to my designation or identity. In order to prevent unintended spread of my primary effect, only level three and above personnel are to know of my presence and particularly of my properties. Assigned personnel are to be rotated out on a monthly basis to prevent contamination by my secondary effect. Psychiatric evaluation is mandatory at the end of the month. If personnel are deemed unaffected, they may be reassigned to me no less than four months after their last rotation with me. Any affected personnel are to be given a class C amnestic and transferred to a different site. This is literally... Literally me. Literally me. An amnestic is just something that causes amnesia. Amnesia. And, uh, higher classes provide um, 
greater amounts of memory destruction. Hello! I am SCP-426. I must be introduced this way in order to prevent ambiguity. Getting a lot of mileage out of that hand track. I'm going to give it a voice. Hello, I am SCP-426. I must be introduced this way in order to prevent ambiguity. I am an ordinary toaster. Unable to toast bread when supplied with electricity. I'm sorry, I am able to toast bread when supplied with electricity. However, when any human being mentions me, they inadvertently refer to me in the first person. Despite all attempts, there is yet to be a way to speak or write about me in the third person. So it's actually not, it wouldn't be the, I understand, okay. Yeah, it's the the little the brave little toaster, man. That movie. Yeah, I'm the brave little toaster. Do Do you know how hard that movie made me cry when I was a kid? Oh man, I I remember the scrapyard I, I, particularly messing with me. I cried so fucking hard. Um, why is everybody saying Leno toaster? Omega Leno, what? What? I don't know what's going on with this. J Leno, S C P Leno. Little... How is it Leno? Oh, because the voice that this is not what Jay Leno sounds like, guys. You... Vinny's Jay Leno voice. Oh, he oh, he he's doing a shitty Jay. Le oh, it's like shitty Bender. Oh, it's like shit. Okay, I understand. It's like shitty Bender. Okay. Okay, we're like two or three memes deep here. Yeah, That's I don't, I don't, I don't want to be like. We need to come back up. Vinny's impression of Conan O'Brien's impression of of J of Jay Lan. I okay. Uh, despite all attempts, there is yet to be a way to speak or write about me in the third person. Yeah, we're in memeception. When in my continuous presence for over two months. Individuals begin to identify themselves as a toaster. Unless forcibly restrained, these people will ultimately harm themselves in their attempts to emulate my standard functions. So they're like shoving bread into their ass. Why do you immediately? I Oh, yeah, I guess you have the slot. Where yeah. else am I putting the bread if I'm a toaster? Your mouth? Of course. Uh, maybe. What the? Maybe. No, 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 no. Because your ass crack is the thing on your body that's closest to the 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 hole in the toaster. So that's where you would insert the toast, and you would just let it sit there for a while, and then when it got warmed up enough, you would go ding, and the toast would pop up out of your ass crack. Right. Right. You got you got to pop your ass. It would go in order to make it pop ding, out. and the toast would pop right out of your ass crack. Right. Alert to Everybody pop your pussy like this. <laughs> Check it out. I made some toast. Someone in the chat said toast soaking. <laughs> Stop. Um, I was discovered in the home of the mm. uh, family. After the gruesome deaths of three of its members, I had been given to the younger Mr. and Mrs. Uh, as a wedding gift. No card or any other identifying markings had been found on my box. Approximately two months after the family received me, fire crews were dispatched to the home due to an electrical fire. The younger Mrs. <coughs> died from the electrical discharge that she had caused when attempting to devour an electric socket. <laughs> the other two victims had died shortly before the fire occurred. The elder, Mrs. Oh. had gorged herself with nearly 10 kilograms of bread before her stomach burst, and she died of internal bleeding. The mouth, I told you. The mouth. She didn't, no, she didn't shove it in, in between her legs. She didn't shove it up her ass. She ate it, Mike. She ate it. Okay. Let me ask you a question, though. Like, you're a toaster, okay? Just pretend you're a toaster first. Pretend you're her. Okay. You, 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 dangerous, you obviously, but I will do so for he, your here, sake. Here, <laughs> here's how toasters work. You put the bread 
into the toaster. Right. It toasts the bread and then it ejects it. Toasted. Okay? Right. So if you were gonna be like, I'm a toaster. Alright, toasters toasters don't like, you know, consume bread and then you never see it again. Well maybe she no. was planning on regurgitating it. Well she should have. Why didn't she? I yeah. yeah, you put it inside you, it gets toasted, and then you eject it. You don't you don't just fucking consume it, you know? Mike, if you don't keep reading, I'm gonna eject you. They're bad at being toasters. Yeah, they're, they're, they obviously were having trouble. Imagine, tr like, you imagine trying to be a toaster without being a toaster. This is a very... Like, this it's, is like, a, mm. it's like Data trying to be human. Right, right. I can't be a toaster because I'm, to I'm not a toaster. Right, exactly. This is that in reverse. Data's trying really hard to be human and always stumbles a little bit. Um, in Data's case, sometimes he just commits some sort of social faux pas. In this case, people eat so much bread that their insides burst. It's the same thing. Uh, hi, C806. You don't shove 10 kilograms of bread into the toaster. Yeah, that's not like you wouldn't. Oh, fuck you. Fuck you. You don't, maybe. Like you wouldn't. That's not how you would even use a, a, a toaster, right? No, that's like, coward I... talk. Fuck you. I put at least six kilograms of to of, of bread into my toaster on the daily. Fred's got I like mean, an industrial sized toaster. It's like how a do you city think, block. Like, how do you think the Franz kids made their way to college? Franz, Fred? The, the bread makers, it's a bread manufacturer. I know Wonder Bread and I know Bimbo. I don't know Franz. F R A N Z. Franz, the never mind. Um, the younger Mrs. <laughs> died of severe blood loss after attempting <laughs> with me. He <laughs> said sex. So she was like, I'm a toaster now. I have to mate with this other toaster in order to make baby toasters. Oh my god, they're no, they they were trying to make to make bagel toasters. Like little ones. Why did he fuck the toast? <laughs> what was he trying to achieve? <laughs> he wanted a toasty dick. I feel like this is this Mister, is Mister, I miss yeah, I misread it. What what happens this is a dip missile when you tell like you know when someone says, ah, oh, go go pound sand or something. There's like, ah, go fuck a toaster. Go kick rocks. I hate that one for some reason. I don't know, it pisses me off. Yeah, go fuck a toaster. I like it. Submissive and breadable, somebody said. <laughs> uh, uh, fuck it. Good enough. Fuck it. Just have just have this instead. Da 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 da. I present to you the comment of the night. <laughs> Here it is. It's yours, Lady Lucifer ninety nine. You did it, now go live in shame. Because in I, the end, you still lose. I appreciate that you didn't even bother to finish cutting out the background. Yeah, you like that? Yeah, that was a yeah. good, that's a good touch. Comment of the night. And the song is terrible and doesn't rhyme and is dog shit. Mm-hmm. Um, what, like, remember yeah. when we when we read that poem and you're like, no, but it doesn't rhyme. I hated that poem. Fuck that <laughs> poem. Yeah, the Wednesday Adams poem. Fuck that. <laughs> um. Anyway, I'm a toaster. Stop all the toasting. No, I'm not, a not the Wednesday Adam. The, the the one about the person who's like whose wife died, and he discovered the hair in the bottom of uh her pot. Oh yeah, that one sucked yeah. too. That one sucked because it didn't rhyme. It was dog shit because it didn't rhyme. Poems is supposed to rhyme. Uh, all right, so the sole survivor was the elder Mister, <laughs> who was suffering from severe malnutrition. He stated that he had inserted some bread a week prior, and was still waiting for the toast to pop out. At least this one makes way more sense than the other lady. Right. Right. 
I was confiscated by the Foundation after police noted my unusual properties. A Class C amnestic was administered to the affected officers. Experiment Log 426-1 uh, uh, The D personnel was asked to describe what he believed was contained in my chamber. He was not informed about my identity or properties. Uh, uh, he stated... And probably some huge monster hold up in there. That's what you guys have all over the place, right? D-426 remained oblivious to his use of the first-person pronoun. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So did I, apparently. <laughs> Experiment log 4262. Uh, D-426... Oh, they're really putting him through it. Was placed in my chamber and given regular meals through a dispenser. No communication with him was permitted. Multiple cameras were situated in the chamber, positioned so that I was outside of their field of vision, but allowing constant observation of D-426. We remained sealed until my secondary effect manifested in the subject. I was bolted to the floor so that I could not be moved into a camera's view. After 45 days of isolation, D-426 wrapped his arm around me and began conversing with me, Stating that we were brothers. He never deviated from using the first person plural when speaking with me. Subject was terminated one hour after this event. It is theorized that the isolation accelerated the progression of my secondary effect. Experiment log 426-3. Uh, oh. Hold on. These are different guys? These are different people, yeah. Like each, oh. this, so one, um, oh. I, yeah, I misunderstood. These are D class. These are D class that are being used. Okay. Yeah. It's just 426 is the toaster. And then, um, I under, I understand now. Okay. Uh, here's the third experiment. A screw was removed from me and shown to D26-3, who was asked to describe it. He was not informed about my identity or properties. He referred to it as my screw, consistent with experiment 426-1. Uh, the subject was oblivious of his use of the first person in his description. This suggests that even if I were destroyed, my effects would still be inherent in my remains. So the implication here being, if you were to grind this thing up and then release it, over like a an area a populated area or even an unpopulated area uh humanity would just end because everybody would believe they were a toaster mm -hmm. or i mean like yeah he, he didn't he didn't say like i'm a screw he said that's my screw so he you know he's gonna start believing that he's a toaster soon right right all right so here's experiment number four uh, he was placed in isolation in a cell adjacent to my chamber oh, to be observed. Jo Hold on. Jo Joko says, Fred, you Fred would be a great villain. And Joko, you would be a fantastic lackey. Continue, Mike. Um, you're, Fred's evil? Oh, yeah, Durf. Right, I forgot about Durf. You're Durf. Yeah, my evil plan right now is to grind down everyone's self-esteem. It's working really well. <laughs> um, all right. D4 uh, was placed in isolation in a cell adjacent to my chamber to be observed until my secondary effect manifests. No effects appeared. Uh, he was exterminated 90 days after the start of the experiment. Thank God there's some limits to my effects. A lot of us were really starting to get worried about me. Doctor... <laughs> my arm is not doing that. Um... Hold on. Hmm. Uh, am I, I feel like I'm missing something here because I'm stupid. Yes. Yeah. He just, he just says yes. What? I'm saying yes. Continue. No effects appeared. 
and the subject was terminated 90 days after the start of the experiment. Hmm? Um, placed in isolation in a cell adjacent to my chamber. So he can't... He, the, the toaster can't affect you through a wall. Right. You have to be observed. Like, or, like, you have to observe... God... Yeah, you, you have to observe it. Mm -hmm. What about... All right, here's a plan. You be a toaster, and I'll be bread. Are you saying you want to be bread? You're looking pretty submissive and breadable. Ah. Uh... Ah. Uh... Garbage. Okay, um... You got another one for us? I oh, like that one. I, I really, really enjoy that one. And then, oh, that's a classic. I'm pretty sure I'd I seen that one before, or somebody told me about it before. There is um, a whole corner of the website. Um, Based and bread-pilled. Here's a really short one, uh, because there are lots of little corners to uh, the SCP canon, and one of them Metroid is... Metroid Bread. Samus, you are now bread. Uh, what's going on? What? There's a corner... Uh, there is, there's a corner of the SCP canon known as Dr. Wondertainment. <laughs> what? Dr. Wondertainment actually was a part of the campaign I put together. They... Who's Dr. Wondertainment? It's, it's, to it's dangerous toys that just appear in stores sometimes. This is one of them that kind of is a little squickier. SCP-1097. All right, so we saw that word used in one of the SCPs before, and now you're using it again, and I've never heard the word before in my life. What the fuck is it? What? This squi squ squicky. Like, what? Oh, just um, something that makes you cringe because it's disgusting. Oh, it's like one of my streams. Yeah. Cool. All right. You've got All right I think we got enough cringe going on here tonight. Probably more than enough. Mm-hmm. This is a very short one. This is called Dr. Wondertainment's Bubble Bath Bonbons. Okay, you want to read it? Yeah, sure. SCP-1079, Class Safe, Special Containment Procedures. All instances of SCP-1079 are currently stored within Containment Locker 1079 at Site-19. Furthermore, watch list databases are to be updated with SCP-1079's information in order to intercept any new shipments which may appear in the future. So this is like Dr. Wondertainment occasionally ships out these like toys or odd things, odds and ends um, to stores. Oh, he, he's fun. he's like he's like a scumbag. Not really. It's no? just these are weird and not safe toys. But he makes them. This guy makes them. Yeah. Um, in the tabletop camp, in the tabletop campaign I ran, uh, Doctor Wondertainment was a reality bender, which is its own thing in the SCP canon. But yeah, that was the idea. A reality vendor. Reality bender. bender. Someone who can change reality based on their whims or beliefs. Is that and... what he does though? Like he, so he he makes no products idea. and he ships them to stores. Nobody's quite certain. Uh, there is a story, but each story is its own canon. But um, Dr. Wondertainment is kind of a reality bender who just wants to bring whimsy to the world. He, he's like a fucking like fucked up Willy Wonka. He's like oh, the, S the SCP version of Willy Wonka. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay, I, I like him. Um, I like that, uh, that concept. That's great. Well, I, now, Something I'm kind of proud of is... Uh, well, there there's a little bit to it uh well, well i can't i can't remember what was mine and what was canon anyway we'll just read this scp um before you do i had wanted to ask you about uh one of the scps that i had read at one point which had a similar okay so it wasn't a toy it was pregnancy tests and these weird like weird brand like random brand pregnancy tests kept appearing in stores like around around the country or whatever and what would happen was like if you took if you used it 
you 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 became pregnant, whether or not you actually like were pregnant. Mpreg? I don't think it. I don't. I don't remember it having mpreg in it. I remember it was like women were using it, and it was like it was oh it was always positive, and then they were having babies, and then like they did a test where like you know the woman was a virgin or whatever, and, or, or you know I hadn't had they, 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 like like was not pregnant, and then and then gave her the pre the pregnancy test like she peed on it, and then it was like you have a baby now now you're pregnant after you took the test. It's Jesus, Jesus too, holy boogaloo. But like, was is that? Could that have been wondertainment? Could have been behind that? I don't remember what number it was or anything. I don't know. I I don't think that it was wondertainment. That doesn't sound wondertainment. Because what I would do occasionally, and I still do this, is I just come to this website and click random. That is the best way to interface with the SCP yeah. website, and then you just fall down a hole. Yeah, exactly. Sometimes, sometimes there's like a whole bit to it. Or check out groups of interest too. There's some really cool groups of interest like um, Marshall, Carter, and Dark. That's really interesting. Basically, they're they're SCP vendors. They sell to the highest bidder. That's see that that's fucking great. There's a lot of lore there. That's that's, see, oh, that's there's a so, lot of so lore. much like world building there. That's awesome. There also is another competing organization to the SCP Foundation called the Global Occult Coalition, or the GOC. Uh, and that which, exists in the canon of, of the SCP? In the canon, it does? yeah. Okay. Uh, it shows up in some of the SCPs. And, and they, like, they, want to harness it for, the, the, for like, world domination or some shit? Uh, they, they work alongside the SCP Foundation a lot. The SCP Foundation is... Um, often they don't want to destroy... They want to contain more. Yeah. Um, they're much more interested in containment. Uh, the GOC is just looking at keeping the peace, and so their 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 MO is a little bit different. Uh, so they'll they'll some sometimes the Foundation and the GOC work together. Sometimes they're at odds. Uh, but then there's the Chaos Insurgency, which are a group of former SCP researchers and MTFs. Uh, their their goal is to destroy SCPs. And actually, there's a really good SCP that is linked to the Global Occult Coalition that I think you'd appreciate. That sort of shows why the SCP Foundation doesn't just destroy everything the moment that they find it. Okay. Uh, there's a lot of stuff. Yeah. Uh, Chad is, like, begging you to show me this and that and this and that, but guys... Oh, yeah, no, we're not going to do all... Don't, no, we're not going to do all of it. There's so um, many, you know... No, sorry guys. We we we're very limited. I, I appreciate that you have SCPs that you like, and that's a good thing. But mm, I like the idea of um, we're limited. You know, like I don't know, basically terrorists who deal in SCPs and like getting their hands on them and using them for, you know, selfish or nefar nefarious purposes, right? Um, it's not super clear why the Chaos Insurgency is collecting them and using them because they use them, uh, but they're pretty much dedicated to the destruction of the foundation that much is clear and they often will try to like let scps loose <laughs> it, it they almost seem like a doomsday cult that's fun I, that's that's awesome i like that all right i'm gonna read this or yes. you're, you're gonna read this yeah i'll, I'll read it okay SCP-1079 is the designation given to a number of sweets, brightly labeled Dr. Wondertainment's Bubble Bath Bonbons. Currently, the Foundation has redacted crates of SCP-1079 in containment, originally containing 64 packets each. The label on each packet provides the name of the product and two warnings. Flush. Not suitable for <laughs> children. Flush. Not suitable for children. Under is that why years. you picked this one? No, but oh, I get it. You know what I'm... All right. Yes. You heard me talking about that, right? Oh, no, I don't think so. I mean, you've talked about Lush before, but, like, you want to eat all of the bath bombs. Yes! Right? Why do yeah. they make it delicious? All their fucking... Pro all their soaps and everything are fucking delicious, dude. Why so are they making delicious soap? Why do they... They're trying to kill people. Dude, fucking Dr. Uh, Wondertainment is behind the entire fucking, like, Lush franchise. Like, he owns the fucking company. It's him. Is that how... Well, he... Uh, or she, <laughs> he owns it. I don't know. 
Uh, currently, right, the foundation has redacted crates of SCP-1079 in containment, originally containing 64 packets each. The label on each packet provides the name of the product and two warnings. Not suitable for children under three years, and only one sweet is to be taken per sitting. In addition, it lists negative percent daily values on several nutrients, <laughs> vitamins, and minerals, none of which are present in SCP-1079. So, like, in other words, if you take it, you lose, like, a thousand vitamin C? You'll see why. Uh, okay, okay. He Human subjects report tingling sensations immediately after the consumption of SCP-1079. 10 to 15 seconds later, the subject's own blood is secreted as pink <laughs> bubblegum scented foam from the subject's pores on their abdomen, arms, and back. The total volume of blood secreted oh. in this way is typically from 30 to 50 milliliters and does not pose an immediate health risk. I love this. What does it taste like, though? The volume of bloods, I know, I don't know. Like, is it worth the, it? I don't know. Is it worth Maybe, it? Me. The volume of blood secreted increases exponentially as more pieces are consumed. <sighs> Bubbles form in the subject's blood as a consequence of the SCP's intended function, causing the subject's blood to boil. Death by exsanguination occurs in 95% of subjects who have consumed four or more candies in one sitting. Ah, he, to be fair, you got warned. Yeah. That, that's that is a running theme in Doctor Wondertainment's fun little things. Like they'll kill um, you, if, but if he you tells you, them, yeah. If if you use them in the intended way, they're perfectly fine. <laughs> as soon as you start to deviate even slightly, bad things start to happen. I love although, him. Oh, this is although, great. Although uh, there are some things that Doctor Wondertainment has that has created that are just objectively horrific. Uh, <laughs> specifically, the Little Misters series. Okay. Makes me think, like, the Little Misters series is so fucked up compared to the other things that Dr. Wondertainment has done that it feels like a completely different person. Like it's out of character. Yes, the almost. Little Fellas. The, li the Little Fellas, guys? <laughs> little Fellas series. Little the, 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 little the Little Misters series feels like it's made by someone else. Little, and little actually, mis Misters? I, I ran, yeah, I ran with that. We could take a whole, like stream just looking at the little misters really but they are they are sentient beings that are wacky like in in theory they are wacky and whimsical but they all are sentient and are very aware of the sort of life that they lead they're toys uh, no they're full humans but imagine a wacky slave like that's basically what it is what like they're people who are sentient but they have weird, wacky things about them. Uh, and typically, living as one of them I'm not absolutely doing that. sucks. I'm not doing that. You see that that arm? I have no idea why that's doing that. I'm not doing that. <laughs> it's because there's a ghost behind you, Mike. Fred, that's horrifying. Please don't say that. <sighs> it is that time of year. There's nothing back there, right? Then the veil between our world and the one next door is thinnest. Okay, Jay Chan, stop now. All right, now. Th oh, they're trying to tickle you. That's so cute. They're so. The ghosts are trying to tickle you. The the, li the little misters are, what like miniature people? I, I'm, you're still not explaining. Well, you are saying they're sentient we, people, we but we're we're all fucking sentient people. What, what does that mean? Maybe, not, you, you didn't tell maybe, me anything. Maybe we should just look one up. Maybe. And then you'll understand after this. All right. Um, death by exsanguination occurs in 95% of subjects. Let's finish this one up and then let's, che let's check out one of the little misters uh, who have consumed four or more candies in one sitting. Exsanguination is compounded by foam collecting in the lungs of the consumer. Yummy. After, after standardized animal testing was conducted, it was found that SCP-1079's effect scales with the consumer's body mass. So when chat said it was the, the, the Tide Pods... The forbidden, forbidden candies. It's like that. Except consuming any amount of Tide Pod is just not advisable. This is... I would okay. try one of these. I would absolutely... I would go for it. Fuck it. Since its initial discovery in 1990, redacted deliveries have been made to various supermarkets globally. Attempt to trace these deliveries back to a distribution center or supplier have been unsuccessful as of 2005. Yeah, I I love this one. 
Why? Why does it exist? What's it for? I thought you would like it. I want one. I want one of the forbidden treats. The Let secret snacks. see. Hold on. You want me to do a mukbang chat? Dr. Wondertainment mukbang? So I got, like, the... The little misters... You know what? Hold on. Let me let me find it. Uh, groups of interest. This is just uh, lush. Uh, yeah. Just... <laughs> so I, I actually was sort of inspired by the fact that they're so different. And I um I theorized that there was an original Doctor Wondertainment who was fun. He was a reality bender who's fun and whimsical, and then he had a daughter who couldn't quite live up to her father's lineage. She tried to um, make things that were fun and whimsical, but just ended up creating horrors. And this is canon, or this is like your thing? This is my thing that I created. Um, okay. Unless I pulled that directly. But yeah, that's the idea. It's that that is how I sort of reconciled that weird part of the canon. Why some of these are so fun and very clearly, um, you know, safe if you use them right. And then it's two oh, different so people. the daughter's existence is canon. Oh, like, it that is. is canon. Okay. But I sort of built off of it. Okay. Like what? Like where are the fucked up ones coming from? Well, it's from a daughter that just couldn't quite live up to her father's have, legacy. Have these people ever been confronted by, by like you know the, the SCP themselves? Like, have they ever been, like, spoken to or interviewed or, or, or captured or anything? Or they're just well, out there at large? Well, the, a lot of them are in uh, custody of the Foundation. They are. They, like, they Let's... got Wondertainment? Like, he's behind bars? They got him? Oh, no, not Dr. Wondertainment. They don't. They have no idea where he is. Oh, you're talking about the Little Misters? The little misters, yeah. It's hard for me to keep up with you sometimes. I'm yeah, so they, they have the little misters. Yeah. Uh, let's see, Mr. Stripes, Mr. Redacted, Mr. Moon, Mr. Clumsy. There's one called uh, Mr. Redacted. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Headless. How about... Let's yeah. see. Hold on. I'm, I'm looking for the actual SCP. Chad is spamming the word fish, dude. People are saying Mr. Fish. Uh, I don't remember which one that is. Does someone have the number? People are spamming fish. Let me let me The little the little that. fellas. <laughs> the little fellas. Five two seven, somebody said. Five two seven? Okay. Yeah. Five two seven. There it is. Oh, look at him. I. <laughs> Here you go. This is this is good. Okay, so this is weird. It says DJ Cat Cactus. May I? I so there is some dialogue, and I would like you to read the SCP. Um, so I'll, I'll read the containment procedure and description, and I'll play Dr. Baker in the log. You want to... Yes, you would fit. Okay, hold, hold on. All right. Item number 527, level 1, arm restricted. Containment class Euclid, disruption class Flam. Risk class Notice. I, is uh, this new? All right, hold on. Uh, SCP-527 is to be contained within a standard human humanoid domicile at Site-19. No other containment procedures are necessary. SCP-527 is a male humanoid, uh, 1.67 meters in height, which is biologically non-anomalous with the exception of its head, which is that of a puntius Semi-fasciolatus or gold barb fish. That's just him, huh? That's, him. that's just that's him. That's just there. There's, there's the boy. The do, the top hat. The, no, <laughs> the top hat. Why why is he wearing that? Oh, 
Oh. Oh, he's great. What? <laughs> he. Chat just says, they're all saying he. <laughs> he. <laughs> Spinny fish. Okay. Uh, he displays no other anomalous qualities. The head functions the same as the head of any other non-anomalous human. He's capable of typical human speech. A tattoo reading Mr. Fish from Little Mr.'s trademarked by Dr. Wondertainment appears on the bottom of its left foot. He m fucking made people? Yes. That was what I was trying to explain to you. But they're, but they're his products. What the? Okay, yeah, I never would have understood this no matter how you tried to explain this to me. SCP-527 was discovered in Boston by Foundation agents in 2002 and was moved to Site-19 in 2004. Initial interview. Oh, there's an interview. Okay. Yeah, I'll play Dr. Baker and you can be SCP-527. Okay. Thank you for your cooperation thus far, SCP-527. We're just using this interview as a way to gauge any potential anomalous behavior we might not expect. Oh, I, I, I think it's funnier if he just has a normal voice. All right. To begin, are you capable of breathing underwater? No. Are you capable of communicating with other fish or with other sea-based life forms? No. I see. When did you first discover your condition? Were you by ch any chance attacked or bitten by a fish you did not recognize or experience an encounter with a sea-based deity of some kind? No! Uh, well, then you've been like this since birth? Yep. I... All right. Do you know of any other anomalous traits you might exhibit? Sure don't! Like I told the other guy, this is all it is. You're looking at it. Lie, stripes, hot, sweetie. They got all the good stuff. I'm just the guy with a fish head. So he's talking about the other little misters. Lie, stripes, hot, sweetie. I they got all I, the good stuff. I figured. I'm just the guy with the fish head. <laughs> Do you have any idea why your creator might have fashioned you in this way? Fuck if I know. And that's it. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's it. Huh? Yep. That's it. Wait, he's got a document though. Look. Yes. Uh, may may I read it? Uh huh. Wow! You've just found yourself your very own little Mister. A limited edition collection from Dr. Wondertainment. Find them all and become Mr. Collector. It's friend Fred. Yeah. Oh, uh, look, look at, look at these. One yeah, of them is just red them. redacted. This is why, like, we could spend a stream just looking at the little misters. But yeah, I, I get it now. I, I get, to get, I get it now. Mr. Yeah. Soap. Mr. Soap is actually maybe the saddest one. They're fucking Funko Pops, guys. Is he the sa- Oh, uh, is he? Mr. Soap is probably the saddest one. Mrs. S Sweetie. Mr. Stripes is just Mr. Mint, somebody said. <laughs> you want to hear something crazy? You see how J-Chan is like looking off to the, to the, on an angle again? I'm facing directly forward. I think she j somehow just drifts. Like, during the course of a stream, like, her fucking face will just drift and she just tilts. It's a metaphor. She's I don't, a drift in a sea of VTubers. I, I don't I don't know. I, I, None of which equal her. She is... Uh, yeah, I have J-Chan drift. She just <laughs> starts looking... She just starts looking in, a, in like, an off... To the side direction. Like, it's... The J. The J stands for Joy-Con. I can fix it by resetting the the the, the app on the the Wadayo app. Nope. Oh fuck. 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 <laughs> yeah, see? 
I reset the app. I closed it and opened it. And now she's she's fine. She just slowly drifted like over to the side like this. <laughs> okay, so what do you want to do here? You want to link me another one? Yes. Okay. Um. So we 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 have the little misters, but I figure we can get to the little misters another time. Sure. The we've been at this for about four and a half hours, and. There was one that I thought you would really be into. It wasn't the I had one circus with the in my back pocket. Like and all of these I thought you would really be into, obviously. But this was one it, it's it is long. Okay. And I wanted to save it for last. Okay, so you want to wrap you want to wrap up soon then? Uh no. <laughs> This isn't about wrapping up soon. This is a big one. That's okay. I understand. All right. Yeah. Um, we are going to do the flesh that hates. The flesh that hates. Yes. All right. This is this is a chonker. Okay. Hit me with it. SCP six one zero. Uh, okay, do you want to take it, or we could we could we could um, swap off intermittently if you want. We could. Um, that might be a good way to go about it because the field logs go back and forth, uh, or like okay. there are a bunch of field logs. There are five of them. So, if you would like, um, one of us could start, and then every log we trade. All right. Yeah. All right. Um, I will be right back. But uh, if you would like, you could get started for us. Um. Yeah. Here's what I'm going. I'm going to play an advertisement while we wait for you okay. to come back. Uh. So go ahead and do what you got to do. All right. Be back in a moment. Finally, he played an ad. I thought he would never do it. What took him so long? Gosh. What the hell took him so long? I've been waiting for this all night. Finally! I think you guys are great for uh, tolerating this, honestly. There is no Ed. Well, who the fuck knows? Thank you guys for tolerating the advertisements. I really do appreciate it. Uh, and also, if you're interested in... Uh, uh, helping me get more money. There's a little um, a poll that you could just click on one of these fucking things, and um, I'll get money if you click on those things. Um, so a lot of people are saying this is a classic SCP. Uh, Mass Immune calls it one of their top ten, top ten. Uh, and I, I'm I'm looking forward to it. It sounds sounds like it's going to be right up my alley hole. Hey, uh, Lady Lucifer. Uh, oh, right. We did. You, you and I. Yeah, we. Uh, right, right, right. We played Barrow Trauma that one time. You are the artist who draws things, right? That's what you do. You're a, a, draw, a drawer. Yeah. Barrow Trauma was fun. I got to get back into that. Um, hold on. Yes, I am. I do. Yes. Oh, you're also the winner of the comment of the night, the prestigious award. Very prestigious. Do you remember welding the door shut? Yeah, it wasn't intentional. They teased the new update for Borrow Trauma. It could be a good time to hop back in if there's a new update. Um. What? 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 What else did I just hear is getting an update? Uh, something else. Something else that was interesting. Uh, a lot of like older games are getting uh, are getting some love right now. Hello. Hi. Uh, Minecraft is actually getting an update. Like, unironically, um, Animal Crossing is getting an update. Uh, Terraria is getting an update. It's actually a crossover with Don't Starve. I think that was the one I was thinking of. 
Um, uh, I also saw the Haunted Chocolatier trailer. It just kind of looks like um, Stardew 2. Which uh, it, it does feel that way, doesn't it? Concerned Ape did not deconfirm that it's actually is a sequel to Stardew Valley. It might be like in the same universe and stuff. It uh, looks like uh, there are yeah. aspects of it that sort of lead me to believe it is in the same universe. Looks like it, right? Mm hmm. Uh, he uh, he did confirm that it's the same universe. Apparently, somebody said. Mm hmm. Uh, yeah, the Haunted Chocolatier. It looks cool. Um, it's going to be a while, though, he said. He's just kind of in the beginning phases of it. It's valid. Uh, all right. So, chat saw I an advert... Hmm? Oh, to be a ghost butler. Uh, chat saw an advertisement. They loved it. Uh, and now they're ready for a super creepy SCP. You want to hit him with it? I did, I waited for you, but I didn't... I didn't. Thank you. Oh, yeah, yeah, fucking Risk of Range 2 got a bunch of updates. I was going to see if Fred was yeah. interested, but you're not really... You're, like, over that game, right? If I was playing it with you, I'd enjoy it. Oh, gay! Yeah. All right. I would like to check it out at some point. So, I would like to check out, like, the new updates and stuff, so... Sweet. Oh. Gay! All right, sh shall we? Oh, there's also going to be a DLC for the game... Next year, maybe we'll wait for that big D big DLC to come out and get and and uh, hop back into it. Yeah, up to you. Oh. Lots of possibility. And right, I'm not going to interrupt you again. You can go ahead and and, and read this now. Okay. Without further ado. SCP six one zero, class Keter. Special containment uh -huh. procedures. Due to the vast area of infection, SCP six one zero covers containment is impossible. Isolation of the area has proven far more effective and permission has been granted by the Russian government uh -oh. to establish a perimeter to keep people out of these areas under the guise of military operations. Should any organism displaying traits consistent with SCP-610 be sighted near this perimeter, then the established protocol requires it be engaged at range with small arms until immobile, then dispatched using incendiary weapons and munitions from as great a distance as possible. Any living thing coming in physical contact with an organism infected with SCP-610 is considered expendable and is to be immediately terminated and incinerated. Any persons coming within 3 meters of 610 infected life are to immediately withdraw from the area, be isolated from the rest of their team, and subjected to medical examination using only remote techniques to determine if infection has occurred and appropriate steps taken based on that determination. Dead just like my ex-wife! <laughs> I feel bad about abandoning it. This is literally just the plot of Firewatch. Uh, really? I haven't played that game. Um, the... <laughs> some people, some people in chat... Spoilers. ...are gonna understand. Spoilerinos! It's not a... No, it's not... It's not a... It's not that well, now I know that there's a fucking flesh no. monster in, 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 in Firewatch now. No, not the flesh monster. You, the thing that you were saying, just like my ex-wife, um, the, it, the, oh. the main character... Like, this is... This is told to you immediately at the beginning, but um, wife you bed? play a character whose wife is suffering from early onset dementia. Wife bed. Oh. Mm -mm. No, wife good. Just wife dementia. Just like my ex-wife! Hey, Gabagool! Ah! I'm gonna let you read this now. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's, it's, it's very fun, man. You gotta try it, you know, one day. You gotta, you gotta try it. We go. Oh fuck! What Firewatch? No, this, this, this VTubing uh, thing. Figure it out. At present, the known infection vectors for six one zero spread seem to be focused on physical contact. Drone movements within. Yes, I love Firewatch. Uh, drone movements within heavily infected areas have returned air samples containing minute particulate which when exposed to organic compounds will result in the spread of 610. The results of these particular tests have revealed that most require several days to manifest, if at all, with the exception of direct contact with exposed lung and liver tissue. 
These particular tests show a rapid rate of growth which requires incineration of the testing environment no more than 24 hours after initial exposure, with even a two-hour mishap risking a, a compromised facility event. Given that this kind of rapid growth only occurs in organic material existing outside the human body, this form of infection is currently considered a minor concern. These peculiarities have given rise to a series of questions regarding the possible origin of the infection in conjunction with the failed data expunged. Containment protocol remains at a scorched earth policy at this time, and no concern for transmission via water or air at infection param parameters exists, barring situational changes in the field. Um, I... Alright, so... Can you do a short recap of, of what it is? Because I, um... Well, I, I mean, don't we don't know what it is yet. Because well, those are the containment procedures. Well... There's a there's a fucking disease related to this, right? It's saying that there is like there are infected areas and um, anyone coming into physical contact with any infected biological organism um, has to be incinerated and there is danger of contamination through particulates in the air. Okay. That's um, what it's saying. All right. May yeah, it's bit real ADHD hours right now. Sorry. It's okay. Um, that, that will shut down very quickly once we get to what this is. Okay. Description. Initial reports of 610. I, I, I just mean that, like, all of that is very hard to understand because you don't even know what it is. Uh, but it, it will become much more directed. Initial reports of SCP-610 came direct from the Russian government through undisclosable channels. These reports consisted primarily of disappearances of farmers in the region and were not considered until the local police, followed by the regional police, and finally a government dispatched agent all failed to report in within a 72-hour period. A small military contingent was dispatched to the area and quickly withdrew, at which point the Foundation was contacted to investigate. The area SCP-610 affects is close to Lake Baikal in southern Siberia. Areas of known infection are marked on a map provided to us here. If you, let's see, let me click through. Yeah, you can click through and you can just see a map of the area. Irotsk Oblast. Irkutsk. Irkutsk. All right. So what the fuck am I looking at? Where is the uh, actual place in question? This is near um, a town. So this is rural is my understanding. All right. So it's Russia. It, it, yeah. It, it's the deepest lake in the world. Um, there are is a lot of conspiracy theories um, about and th there are reports of UFOs coming in and out of the water. A lot of people don't know that about um, about UFOs, funny enough. Is Lake that Baikal? They don't just fly. Um, a lot of them go in and out of large bodies of water. But this is very, very deep. Uh, lake Baikal. It's the deepest lake in the, in the world, and people claim to see UFOs going in and out of it. I'm going to go into a lake deeper and faster than my mom can make the biggest sandwich in the world. Why? What's, what's that a reference to? What is that? That that's um, uh, Rap City Street Kids. Oh yeah, that little fucker. What was his name? Uh, Smithy. It came up in our Fucking, last stream. Yeah, remember? yeah, I do. Because yeah. because Smithy is but was Fuck a manufacturer. They're the people that manufactured the, <laughs> the World War Two evacuee costume. Fuck you, Smithy. Fuck you. Oh dear. Okay, containment param. Perimeters are marked in blue surrounding these infection areas, and as of present, no further locations have been identified. Incursions into the perimeter must be reported prior to conducting, confirmed during exploration, and debriefed on immediately following return. SCP-610 appears to be a contagious skin disease at first, with symptoms including rash, itching, and increased skin sensitivity. Within three hours, the disease will cause blemishes resembling heavy scar tissue to form in the chest and arm areas, spreading to the legs and back within an additional hour, consuming the victim completely within five hours. 
Exposure to high higher temperatures vastly decreases the time for the contagion to spread, and complete infections have been recorded occurring in as little as five minutes. Wow. After the completion of the infection occurs, the victim's life functions will cease for approximately three minutes, after which time they will restart at two to three times the activity rate of a normal human. Following this, the scar tissue on the victims will start to move of its own accord and grow at a rapid rate. Normal human features start to, dis start to disappear at this point under the infection, and the path of mutation appears to be largely random. Subjects observed in this stage of infection have been recorded as growing three or more limbs of a type such as arms or legs, the head may become misshapen and elongate or widen out, and parts of the subject may split open, from which additional branches of flesh will grow. The duration of this stage of infection is unknown, and not all subjects appear to progress to the later stages. Under un... Yes. Fred! I think it. I think there's a hole in this hazmat suit! There's Mike, a hole start, in it! Don't start trying to hump me like a dog. You joke, but you're basically a pug at this point. You like it? Oh, there's so much. What have I done? What have I... <laughs> I feel okay, I'm like good. the ability to layer these things was a gross mistake. Yeah, it shouldn't have, shouldn't have been allowed. A breach of protocol. All right, so I'm sorry. Uh, please continue. I, I was demonstrating what happens to somebody. Like, as you were reading those things, I was making changes and... and um... Good. Yeah. No, it's good. I saw. Okay. Oh, dear. Under unknown conditions, an infected individual will cease moving and place itself in a location it deems suitable where it roots itself. Roots. The fleshy growth on the victim will then begin to spread itself across all surrounding objects and consume them. Such objects do not spread the infection as living creatures do, however, and the effect of prolonged contact with these objects is recorded later in this document. It is assumed that this behavior is to create an area hospitable to continued growth of the other infected. Okay. Observation of life infected by SCP-610 by staff is impossible. Those infected with the disease immediately seek out aid as natural human impulse, resulting in unintended infections. Those infected past the scar tissue phase actively and aggressively attempt to infect anyone approaching them within an undefined area. It's kind of a zombie type thing? It's like... A zombie type thing, yes. Yeah. It has been established that should an infected be capable of sight and observe an uninfected, it will proceed toward them. If the infected has lost the ability of sight, a range of approximately 30 meters is considered safe. Observation of SCP-610 infected settlements has been established using artificial methods such as remote robots. The data returned from these observations, coupled with the openly aggressive nature of the infected to attempt to spread 610, has resulted in the Keter classification. However, so long as nothing is allowed to enter or leave the affected areas, it is considered a neutralized threat. Of concern are the, are the cavernous areas beneath the infected settlements that, w that were discovered during the exploration and attempts to get research personnel into these areas are underway. This is like Resident Evil shit, kind of? Like it's got like... A little um, bit. Yeah. Or, uh, definitely... yeah, Cordyceps from, from Last of Us, sure. Mm -hmm. It has some obvious inspiration. Misery porn? My favorite! So, shall, uh, would you mind reading uh, for us the uh, SCP-610-L1? This is going to have fuck it. This is going to have annihilation vibes, if anything is going to have annihilation vibes, right? It gets there. All right, you want me to take this first one? Yeah. And we'll, I figure we'll trade back and forth. After establishing the containment perimeter for SCP-610, the Russian government approved our requests to research and investigate the area. 
For the first such exploration, a small camera-mounted unit known as Herbie was dispatched at a safe distance and directed towards Site A. Number five alive. Herbie. Uh, the Number five, I need you to do something for me. Of course. Fuck I it. need you to go inside that flesh-infested area. Are you sure? Yes, we need the input. Input. More input. And then he just wanders over inside of it and gets mauled. <laughs> well, he's a robot, so... I mean, like, I feel like... He's Fred, not real. Fred mixed up, like, like three different movies just now. Right? Like... What is it? It's like John, Johnny Five is, is the robot. Yeah. That's right? cool. And then Herbie was like the... It was like the original Lightning McQueen. Kerchow. No, it's all short circuit. What? Yeah, I'm specifically referencing short circuit, though. And then Herbie is like the car who's alive. Oh, do you remember there was a movie called Monster Trucks that, like, had monsters in trucks? And no, it was stupid. that's incredibly dumb. I hate it. Tell I, that I think that it was featured on Fuck You, It's January. Somebody said Lindsay Lohan is in that movie? I feel like those are the kinds of movies where they're, like, they... They specifically look for women that are known by college-aged people to have boobies. And they put them in the movie. Like, they, they just grab them. It's like, alright, people know you have tits. You're in our movie now. <laughs> it is known you have tits. Get in this movie. Was it a Nickelodeon movie? I, well... Monster trucks. I, I I think, obviously this was a, this was a children's movie though, despite the, the, the breasticular marketing. <laughs> Lindsay Lohan was in the reboot sequel of 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 Herbie. All right, well we're pretty fucking far off uh, off the uh, the beaten path here, or the. Yeah, let, let's let's return to the flesh path. We're pretty fucking deep I, into the weeds here, man. You know. Mike, I. Would would you say would you call the path that we're on the way of all flesh? Uh, what, am, am I supposed to? Is that supposed to mean something to me? The way of all flesh is a term to refer to death. Never heard it before in my life. If so, if someone or something goes the way of all flesh, that means that it's dead. Okay, it makes also sense. A great, no. uh, also, a great Gojira album. Wait a minute! Are you telling me I'm gonna die? No, not you. You will live on forever as a monstrosity. Herbie has a battery life of 12 hours and a control range far wider than that required for this ditch patch. Uh, di this patch, okay. Um, you tried. Yeah, I tried. <laughs> I'm just being a bitch. He's like a little uh, Bodie McBoatface type of fucking thing. That's cute. Um, here, mm -hmm. Herbie is able to enter Site A without incident. The landscape around Site A shows early stages of assimilation by singular SCP-610 infected who have fallen at largely random intervals ar around what remains of the village. Many of the homes appear to have suffered fire damage long since put out. However, a fair amount remain intact. Aerial reconnaissance of Site A combined with thermal imaging has put it at an estimated population of 79 infected. If anything happens to Herbie, I'm going to fucking lose it. <laughs> Immobile infected are included in this number. Right, rooted people. However, it is difficult to ascertain an exact percentage of mobile versus immobile. Varying degrees of physical mutation due to SCP-610 are present in Site A. And it is assumed that all the inhabitants are in advanced stages of infection. Herbie observed the exterior of the village for two hours, during which time all infected behaved with what appeared to be a loose sense of social structure. Because Herbie remained stationary during this observation period, 
It is unknown precisely what each individual infected person was doing. However, the central plaza experienced occasional bursts of activity and downtime. Requiring more information, Herbie was directed to follow an infected as it entered a home. Are they like... Still trying to be people, men. No, this is just people after coming out of lockdown. <laughs> well, no, really, because these people are infected, right? right? He's not saying anything. I, I, y you'll see. There is, there is bumpy camera feed as Herbie scoots over the gravel behind the quickly shambling infected person. The, the interior of this home is the same as that attached to the primary file for SCP-610. The infected being tailed is the one sitting at the table. I don't remember seeing any pictures. After en I, think they, I think they might have had to remove it due to copyright issues. After entering the home, Herbie's... Uh, let, let, me, let me find it because I'm not seeing it either. Yeah, they removed them probably due to copyright. Hold on. Uh, here we go. This. <laughs> oh, yeah! Same. Arby's, we have the meats! Oh, what the fuck? This image had to be removed for copyright purposes. I believe so, yeah. Okay. Why? Like because uh, it's an art installation. The person who made who wrote this SCP did not make this image, basically. Is Correct. I mean that that's pretty common for SCPs. Uh I mean that's true of the statue, the original, 163. Um, the person made a lot of statues. They're a Japanese sculpture, um, sculpture artist but they weren't the author of the scp oh, were they no they were not that's kind of unfortunate because i i if it, it, it's possible that like the author was inspired by looking at this you know mm -hmm. so it's like it's kind of it's kind of shit that that had to happen it's kind of sad yeah but, but you know uh, artists are weird sometimes this is some fucking this is some good meat dude oh my god that is fucking yeah. outstanding like, I feel like I fucking missed so much by not seeing this. Fuck. All right. Um. Okay. The interior of the home is the same as the attached to the primary file. The infected being tailed is the one sitting at the table. So he's got like a fucking... He's got like a giant foreskin on his face. Like, he's got like a, like a meat sock on his face. He's making the most of it. He's got like a uh, elephant trunk, like a meat trunk, kind of, right? I mean, same though. I feel like uh, it's, it's, it's... imagine the possibilities, right? I'll let you fill in the black. What did he? What could he possibly mean by that? His face is on the plate. Mm hmm. Let me see. Let me, let me enhance here. Oh, like, this is all coiled up, and there's supposed to be a face in this. All right, this is probably making people fucking sick. I'm gonna... <laughs> all right, so after entering the home, Herbie's camera was raised slowly as to not draw attention. This action was either unnoticed or ignored. The infected person is watched from the doorway as it hobbles around the home and stops at each of the other visible infected organisms. However, it appears to ignore the one under the table, which, while not immobile, does not leave that area. What this creature was before infection is unclear. Pupper? Fuck. A doggo. Fuck, dude. Is your yo little doggo? Dude, that's the pupper. Oh my god. After lapping the table and repeating this procedure three times, the primary infected person known as Alpha, henceforth, stops at the bedridden infected known as Beta and proceeds to assault it with furious punches. Wow. 
rude. This is what humans do. Yeah, right? Like... <laughs> Oh, wow, that's... He vibe-checked him? Yeah, it's real alpha behavior. Uh, society, Spinus? Society? Uh, <laughs> Beta is unable to leave... This is... Yeah, th this is what speedrunners want for our future, and in a Petersonian sense, no. they are. <laughs> no. <laughs> what was it like? Sexual archetypes, fastest Mario. What? 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 <laughs> um. The beta is unable to leave the bed for unknown reasons. But it is not completely immobile as it flails its arms in response to the beatings delivered by Alpha. After several sustained minutes of this beating, a piercing sound explodes from the area around Beta, who then proceeds to project a cloud of unknown matter into the air from its chest cavity. The chussy? Alpha lingers in the cloud as it floats in the air around them slowly descending to the ground. They're soaking. Stop. The unknown life form on the table with side beta begins to twitch in an apparent seizure. And Alpha then laps the room twice more. Stopping that'll teach you that'll teach you not to have a toxic cloud ready for <laughs> me when I come home. Stopping again at each infected organism but still ignoring the one under the table, as well as Beta now. This is fucking... This one's really grabbing me, dude. Yeah, it's fascinating, isn't it? After these... This, this gets very Annihilation. After these two laps, Alpha seats itself at the table and reaches out to position the three plates atop it, as if setting a dinner set. Oh, it even brings in the plates. Like, the, I'm, I'm telling you, the person who wrote this fucking was inspired completely by that art installation and just fucking totally it's like hard to totally like let their imagination go crazy after looking at that right mm -hmm. um the three plate after the plates are positioned okay it seats itself at the table and reaches out to position the three plates atop it as if setting a dinner set after the plates are positioned, the facial tendrils extending from Alpha wiggle up and start to coil on one of the plates before tearing apart and separating. This is repeated at each plate. This the, says a lot about our society. The image attached to SCP-610's primary file is a still image of this occurrence. Fuck, dude. This is, no, you, you know Meat what this spaghetti. is? Meat spaghetti. You guys, you know what this is? This is just... Uh, th this is just millennial death of a salesman. I actually have never seen death of a salesman, no, so I can't appreciate this. Don't, don't worry about it. It's, it's play, right? Mom's meat spaghetti. Bob, I want meat spaghetti! We have meat spaghetti at home. Meat spaghetti at home. I, I like Crash, right? Um, the, <laughs> the, this is millennial death of a salesman in that it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> in that it sucks. Uh, all right, so I don't know anything. I, again, I, I'm remembering that. It's a play that I and I never seen. That's all I know. No, it, it it's a play about the futility. Like someone in chat summed it up well. It, it's a play about the futility of the American dream. Um, and the middle class sounds like it's, it's, a, lamp a, it's a lampooning of the middle class. Sounds like it says a lot about society. It does. After each plate is filled with uh, Alpha's flesh. It leaves the table and approaches Herbie, which is moved from Alpha's path. Alpha leaves the home, but Herbie's camera remains focused on the table. After several minutes, a group comprised of six to seven infected enter the room from outside, still ignoring Herbie. 
Each infected shambles as if movement is difficult, jerking in large steps or squirming in small ones. These infected all surround the table, and each takes turns grabbing handfuls of the flesh substance left behind by Alpha, pressing it into whatever orifices on themselves that they can. Some into mouths. As if it were bread. Some and into were toasters. Some into mouths. Some into the chest. Some behind their backs. Some under the arms. Assholes are mysteriously absent from this description. When all the plates are empty, this group leaves. Herbie remains here for several more minutes before retracting its camera and leaving. Immediately after leaving the home, Herbie collides with an object. Panning the camera around the obstruction appears to be Alpha, whose facial tendrils are intermingling with another infected, having similar mutations. The impact is ignored, and the two infected part ways after several minutes. Herbie. A long time on the mic scale. A long time on the mic scale. I don't even get... He's insulting me and it's totally going over my head. I'm saying that you do not last long in bed. Oh, it's a sex joke. Oh, it's a yeah. sex joke. Okay, yeah. It's funny because I'm saying you are bad at sex. <laughs> a common human male roast, if you will. Ah, uh, it up. Oh, uh, it's interesting to note, friend Frederick, that I do not remember your maternal figure complaining about the sex which I have provided to her with my penis. Ha 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 ha! Ha 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 ha! You child of a dog. I will return this insult twofold. Uh, it's like it's like aliens like trying to mimic, you know, like bro behavior, right? Right. Um. Okay, so these these two uh, mutants are ma like making out basically, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Herbie is then directed to explore more areas of the village. The remains of what appears to have been a store show signs of severe fire damage as well as activity inside the building, which Herbie moves to investigate. The door is slightly ajar, and with firm movements of Herbie, it is pushed open. No notice is taken of this action, nor is it ignored. Inside the store are several infected persons, most of whom are standing around. However, there is a skeleton behind the counter making jokes about eggs. Wait. I cannot believe that you didn't lose it at Egg's husband. T, did you, did you delete the sands under t- Oh. Uh, no, Egg's husband, you know what it was? Um, I was, I was very tired. That was like the end of that stream and it was like fucking 3 a.m. I think. Okay, that's fair. So, like, I didn't give Egg's husband, like, the proper, um, like, y you know, like, deference that it deserved, honestly. That's fair. Um, Egg's husband. Yeah, fucking. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I have... E in Deltarune, Asgore is a being of pure desperation and depression. He he just fucking smells like f despair, yeah, and like despair. sadness. That was the word I was and, looking for. And just sweat. Despair. He just he just reeks of of despair, you know. That's what, what really says a was, lot about our society. Was it you who said that Ascor is like the most def the most divorced person you've ever seen? I think that was me. Yes. Um, he's the most divorced. I, it might not have been me. I, I don't remember. 
Inside the store are several infected persons, most of whom are standing around. However, one is on the ground, rolling back and forth over the space of approximately three meters and is ignored by the others. Herbie rolls under the divider, separating the cashier area from the customer area, and pans around behind the counter. The upper half of a person is protruding from a cellar door behind the counter. This person does not appear to be suffering from advanced infection, and wears the garb of a Russian soldier. Herbie zooms the camera in to confirm identification, and it is noticed the eyes of this person are in constant movement, often focusing on Herbie. The rest of the soldier does not move. What? Herbie is directed to leave this area and proceeds to the back room. In this storage area, a large pile of bodies are stacked together. Some pieces of clothing are visible and appear to contain both military garb and everyday clothing. No facial features are discernible on any of the bodies due to the way they are stacked. Atop the bodies, an infected sits, appearing to have its lower parts fused to the pile, and with its upper half in a wild state of flailing and seizure. He was just really, was just really excited to see the haunted chocolatier. Concerned ape! Average Stardew Valley fan. I just think it's so cool to see him actually doing something else, because as far as I know, he hasn't ever done anything else, right, this guy? What? Like, as a person? Or... As a game as game a developer? Game de yeah, Star Stardew Valley was his breakout hit. Um... Approximately every 10 seconds, a burst of spores flies out the top of this infected, which linger in the penis. Herbie is directed to leave the building. After leaving this building, Herbie passes by the village well, surrounded, surrounding which are a series of immobile infected, all facing the well. The arms of each of these infected persons are stretched out, one in contact with the next, forming a perfect chain, save for one whose arms are down at its sides. Herbie passes by this last infected to approach what appears to have been a town hall or mayor's building when the infected becomes mobile and snatches the rover up. Nice, nice Herbie. I'll take it. <laughs> Video feed from Herbie focuses on the face of the infected, which is strangely in perfect shape given the condition of the rest of its body, which is horribly bloated. This infected was once a young girl from appearance, age estimated 10 to 12. Herbie is rolled side to side in its grip as its face stares motionless at the rover. The infected's face suddenly balloons in size and explodes outwards <laughs> in a, into a series of fleshy flaps that grip Herbie and draw it inside. <laughs> Herbie's Grab video feed terminates folds. there. Grab my foldy flaps. Yep, my Fuck, foldy. dude. Grab my folds, you piece of shit. Alright. Who fuck who fucked with Herbie? Who fucked with Herbie? Who was it? I told you I wasn't going to tolerate anybody fucking with Herbie. Oh my god, they fucked with Herbie, dude. Why do they all ignore Herbie except for this one? No. Dude, I miss Herbie. I just want him back. What, like, he Herbie. He was so in, in Herbie's short existence, he managed to watch a bunch of infected people eat and then fucking bump into one of them while it was fucking... <laughs> What do you just identify with it now? I don't know. I, I got an attack. I don't know. I think it was this. The name was cute. And like I was I was imagining like a cute little like Wally type thing. And now he's dead. Well, 
All right. Herbie was considered <laughs> lost at this point. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I'm just thinking, what do you identify it bumping into, like, another like another person while it's fucking because you remember bu bumping into your wife's boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. Don't let me disturb you. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, sir. Herbie was considered lost at this point. However, no one at control remembered to turn off the video feed, assuming it was cut. Five hours later, Herbie's video feed returned, resumed. Stationary and at a raised level, pointing at the upper rim of the village well. The video feed contains some blur due to what appears to be a slimy film which often oozes across the lens, but when not obscured provides perfect quality recording. Herbie does not respond to any remote commands, but its video jerks back and forth from target to target, zooming in and out of its own accord. Video feed is cut manually, and all connections to Herbie's unit are ordered erased. I'm sorry. Herbie became... Sentient? I don't think sentient. Herbie be became... Infected? Maybe? Herbie be became like, yeah, like a real boy or whatever? Dude, no. This I would rather Herbie, Herbie was killed. But he's a robot. How could he be fucking... What? I, it, it's not clear if he became infected. Well, there was a... It, it, I think it's just the... Yeah, the, the, the flesh is just grabbing onto him. It said something it earlier. Yeah. yeah, it did say something about objects becoming quote, a kind of infected. Not really infected. It's, it's just spreading out, grabbing onto things. It seems like like Herbie is aware, or or, or like they um, or like maybe some one of the one of the Zambos positioned Herbie there to show these people something. Right, but it doesn't really show anything. Not really. I wonder what it means. Okay, so here's um the next uh, log, right? You want to read it? Yeah, sure. During construction of the perimeter surrounding SCP-610's containment area, several Class D personnel were infected due to assaults from infected villagers or animals roaming the area, in addition to a number of infections as a result of escape attempts and careless behavior. Most of these infected personnel were immediately destroyed with flamethrowers. However, a small collection of infected were contained in cold storage units which, pro which prolonged the inevitable progression of SCP-610's mutative properties. The decision was made to, to utilize some of these infected personnel as video relays and dispatch them into nearby sites. So you're, you're a flesh cuck now. Yeah, flesh cuck. Due to the concern over loss of equipment, as evidenced in 610-L1, all three subjects that were used in this manner were sent in with a single video system to Site C. Additional equipment issued for this dispatch include a one-gallon container of gasoline, three emergency flares, three 9mm pistols with three magazines of ammunition each, and three single-serving food rations. Look, I'm gonna send you out there with a gun, some flares, some gasoline, and a cliff bar. <laughs> Wait, so if they- you don't get done- <laughs> They told them, like, okay, like, since, since you're infected and you're gonna fucking die, just, just go. Just go into the village, right? It's like, yeah, fuck it. And, the, and, the, and, they, and they were like, okay, yeah, okay. Right? Wow. This basically is what I equip you guys with at the beginning of a campaign in um, in Barrow Trauma. Yeah, make yourselves useful before you die, right? <laughs> but they're still, like, in control of themselves at this point. Like, they're not mindless zombies yet or whatever. Right. 
The infected personnel were instructed to observe and avoid interaction with the infected villagers as long as possible, but should a situation arise where they are met with aggression or feel they are losing themselves to 610's influence, they are free to kill as many infected villagers as they so choose and do as much damage to infected objects and property as possible while maintaining video feed. <laughs> Just go raise hell. <laughs> yeah, basically. The intent of this order was to provide data of 610 infected communities in a raid situation so a plan of eradication could be better established. At the time of this expedition, Site C was suspected to be a possible origin point for 610, having far fewer mobile infected than other sites as well as structures which appear to have been layered over several time, layered over several times with the terraforming effects of the immobile infected. Meatscape uh, Meet Sk yeah. Dis dispatched Class D personnel, known henceforth as DI-1, DI-2, and DI-3, were directed to pay particular attention to anything that could be considered an origin point for SCP-610. The trek from our perimeter camp to Site C was uneventful. There is no evidence of any native animal life in the area. As Site C is approached, there is noticeable rise in the temperature within the last 30 meters of the trip that necessitates removal of the heavy cold-based coverings that were provided. And then they found Empress Teresa. Oh no. The day <laughs> They found Herbie and he was covered in coke bottles. Was... The temperature rises again sharply at the entrance to Site C proper, which requires a further shedding of garments for fear of heat stroke. Site C is described as being heavily humid and around 32 degrees Celsius or 89 degrees Fahrenheit. One of the first immediately noticed traits about Site C is an array of immobile pylons which encircle what is believed to be the entirety of the site. Separated by an, by an apparent distance of 5 to 6 meters, each pylon appears to be 2 to 4 infected persons fused together in one spot. Hey baby. Hey, baby, what if, and, and, and I'm just throwing this out here, don't got it, you don't want to, but I'm, I'm, I'm just throwing this out there as a possibility. What if we fused into a meat pylon? Hey, hey. Meat. How could anybody say no to that? Yeah, baby, let me, you know, I'll, I'll go get some brewskis, I'll get the boys, and we'll, just, just, just make a meat pylon, you know? Well, consider my panties dropped. What if we made out as a, as a meat pylon? Ha ha. What, what if we fused as a meat pylon in Site C? Ha ha, just kidding. Unless... Unless. <laughs> Okay, on some of these pylons, feature su uh, pylons features such as faces or anuses are still visible in addition to several Fuck other holes. yeah! Like Eat asshole! Eat asshole! Sorry, go ahead. Uh, in addition to several other holes which do not naturally occur, all appearing to act as heat vents. Baby, I'm gonna fuck you in holes that you didn't even know existed. <laughs> that you don't have yet. <laughs> so, like, what, um... It, it's like a geothermal vent type thing? Like, they're... They're heat. Like, they're, they're dispensing heat. So, the implication, I think, is that this flesh is terraforming the area to make it more hospitable. For... Right. Okay. For itself. Where the heat is generated is unknown. Current belief is that this is an advanced stage of 610 terraforming its environment to facilitate spread of itself. Okay, well, that's the answer. Yeah. DI2, who was furthest along in progression of 610 of the three by a number of hours, begins to seize after only a few minutes in Sight C during examination of the pylons. The progression to the scar tissue phase of 610 infection is observed in full course as DI2 spasms on the ground, his entire body being overtaken by the sickly tan flesh almost entirely after 45 seconds. 
Then he springs up from the ground and exclaims, It's just a prank, bro, and then immediately expires. DI2 is terminated by a gunshot from DI1 and his equipment left where it is. The spread of, of 610 over DI2 continues even after death of the body until all movement ceases. As perimeter control is relaying new instructions to DI-1 and DI-3 regarding this situation, there is a shift in the ground covering in Site C where DI-2's body is located, and the writing here is kind of iffy. Video feed shows the flesh-like growth splitting open beneath his body and a series of ropey tendrils coming from within the gap to pull his corpse inside. Ooh. This opening closes up quickly. Total time elapsed, three seconds. Ooh, he got, he got schlorped. He That's got, another fetish. He got snatched. Oh my God. He got cockboard. <laughs> As DI1 what? and DI3 decide to act quickly, that is a thing. I know. That is also a thing. Of course it is. As DI-1 and DI-3 decide to act quickly in these hotter temperatures, fearing the same fate, they proceed to the village center and encounter another previously unknown phenomenon. In the precise center of town, rising above what was the community well, is a sphere suspended by angled supports comprised of 610 flesh. This ball is uh, one of my testicles and riddled with the features of humans in early stage of 610 infection, as well as a good number assumed to be in later stages. Wait a minute. A number I... of specimens of... Hmm? A number of specimens uh, of non-human life forms, such as deer and bears, are also visible what? within the moss. What? Yeah. Well, there you go. They there's, your, that... there's your annihilation. Mm-hmm. Oh my god. Oh, fuck. Uh, okay. The entire sphere of flesh pulses at roughly a five second interval, and with each pulse emits a ring of spore like material from its equator. This material floats to the ground and appears to be absorbed into the converted environment. Hey guys, I found a ball that makes cocaine! <laughs> this thing is D. I. fucked. Oh my god. DI3 th <laughs> begins to douse the sphere with the provided gasoline, and when questioned <laughs> of course. by DI1 explains this looks like as good a thing to burn as any. <laughs> I love him. Yeah. Wow. Like you can't argue with that. No, logic. that was a real. Yeah, yeah, I'm with him. I'm with him. Yeah, I'm with him. At this point, perimeter control has ceased giving commands due to the rapid deterioration of events. There is no reaction from anything within Site C to any of this activity until the precise moment at which a lit emergency flare is applied to the spherical mass, which immediately goes up in flames. <laughs> The remote feed plays back a noise from an unknown location that seems to come from an, a, a location far outside of Site C, but was reported as being heard even at perimeter control by both Sites C and A. This noise is described as both explosive, as if multiple high-yield charges were detonated on a mountainside, and alive, like a large, feral creature roaring. Within 15 seconds following this sound's dissipation, Site A reported that a series of explosions had occurred within the village. Five seconds after this report, the spherical mass in the middle of Site C explodes. DI-1 and DI-3 are thrown by the blast. DI-3 is confirmed deceased by DI-1 after regaining his footing, having suffered injury from stone shrapnel from the well. DI-1 is able to report he has bruises and ringing ears, but aside from the rapidly spreading 610 infection, he suffered no blast damage. During this recording of footage, DI-1 had his video equipment removed and was looking into it. Due to the angle of recording, uh, it is unknown precisely what occurred in Site C, but it was obvious he was trying to recreate some dumbass found footage film, and he is lesser for this attempt. <laughs> 
but something draws DI-1's attention back to the center of town where he stares for, sev for several moments, then is pulled in the opposite direction, the video equipment failing, falling to the ground and recording in a skyward direction. The last moments of footage from DI-1's video unit display a humanoid figure moving through the air, followed by the sound of an impact in the same direction. Within three seconds of the event, an unknown creature steps upon the recording video equipment and destroys it. What a dick. Perimeter control remained on high alert for a full 24 hours at all locations without any incident following this event. Fuck, that big ball of fuck, man. Yep. The destruction caused by the rapid collapse of the Site C exploration attempt during L2 resulted in a series of unexpected events in Site A. As the strange spherical formation in Site C was burned and destroyed, the 610 infected inhabiting Site A were recorded by aerial drones going into seizures and convulsions. The immobile 610 infected rapidly shriveled and died along with all of the flesh material spread across inanimate objects within the village. The mobile 610 infected who were able to regain their footing all proceeded to what appears to have been appears to have formerly been an upper class residence and entered the building. They entered the foyer. Or uh foyer? Me and Lime oh, yeah. arguing arguing about that kind of uh oh, yeah. As the infected entered this dwelling it Mr. suffered. Peterson. They Is have dead. destroyed the giant testicle that you installed to reinstate masculinity. <laughs> now we have no one to teach us how to live. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as the infected entered this dwelling, it suffered a foundational collapse, revealing the presence of a sinkhole beneath it. The size of the hole in relation to the structure above it posed an impossibility for an entire building to collapse, suggesting something within the hole applied force directly to the structure with the intent to pull it inside and expose the hole. I'm going to expose the hole. No, Jay Chan, you can't expose the hole. Why not? Because I said so. TOS. You know, I, I'm Spread realizing up. something. What? These streams... These streams feel like an escort quest. I have to, like, grab you and pull you back. <laughs> yeah, but sometimes sorry, I have to... Mean. Sometimes that I have mean. to... That was really mean. I have to escort you sometimes. It's true. I, I often get off track. I, I feel like actually most of the streams, I'm the one who has to be escorted. It's like we take turns escorting each other, basically. Like, Right. The, the, the worst streams are the ones where neither of us opts to try to retain control. <laughs> and we go completely off the rails. I'm just going to let him do whatever he wants. Go nuts. Go ahead. Uh, thank you, Miss Silly, for the sub. Again, at the end of the uh, stream, I'm going to call out every sub and all the bits and everything and thank all of you individually. Guys, thank you again. Um, the revealed hole is approximately large enough to accommodate three grown men standing shoulder to shoulder. Or one furry drawn in the porn style. Oh, What? Wait, why? What, because, because, like, because they're big. Macro is uh, such a thing. I was gonna call it a huge thing, but that felt redundant. Macro is a huge thing. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Nyuck, 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 nyuck. I know so much more than I want to. Uh, three grown after men that, after that furries video. Uh, standing shoulder to shoulder, light sources applied by remote drones fail to penetrate further than four meters depth into the hole. Objects dropped into the hole do not produce an impact sound, suggesting a bottom potentially more than a thousand meters down. Yeah, but who's there to drop things into it? Like, 
I mean... Actually, that's a good question. Yeah, what the fuck are they talking about? Like, how did, uh, how did they get that information? Maybe D-Class, maybe drones. Drones, Mike? The drones are dropping things? Okay. It's... Like, if you, like, if you had access to, a, like, a quadcopter drone... Yeah. You would exclusively drop shit onto people's heads. I, I don't want to hurt anybody. Maybe, like, soft things. No, Maybe. like, you, you would, like, dump a package of condoms onto someone. Like, you'd find funny things to dump onto people. Yeah, just, like, dumping some used condoms on people. Oh, wait, no, that'd be, that wouldn't be funny. That might not be great. No, it depends who it is, honestly. Depends who it is. He said condoms. I was like, wait, use, used condoms? What? Um, the revealed hole is large enough to... Yeah, okay. Uh, objects dropped into the hole. So it's just meat all the way down, huh? It. Yeah. I don't know where the meat's coming from, but... It's meat. Uh, um... It reminds me of a game that I played. I don't want to spoil it for anybody, though. Some of you know what I'm talking about. Carrion? No. Oh. But, no. Research at the exterior of the site A hole oh. was only able to be carried out for two hours' time. I know what you're talking about now. Samples of the atmosphere in Site A indicated a, a complete death of SCP-610-related materials. All infectio infectious life that did not evacuate into the hole died above ground and quickly became shriveled husks. So somehow that big ball of fuck was keeping all of them alive on the surface. Right? Basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, manned exploration of Site A was approved and commenced immediately. In the span of 30 minutes, a total of three research teams, consisting of two to three research staff and four to five armed escort each, were dispatched and setting up stations within the remains of the village. All right, we took it back. Nice. Samples of deceased uh, 610 infected and converted matter were sent back to Perimeter HQ for processing and transport. We blew off the MacGuffin. And, uh, barbecue. What, they're just gonna let all this good meat go to waste? Slather that shit in some fucking sweet baby rays. Original recipe. What are you doing? I I feel like a lot of a lot of off-the-shelf barbecue sauce is just whenever you put it on something, it becomes it, it isn't the thing with sauce on it. It becomes like it, it isn't something that you've added sauce to, it now becomes a thing. It becomes sweet baby rays that is on something. Like barbecue sauce that is on a thing. Like whatever you put it on just... dominates every flavor. Whatever you put it on, it just immediately becomes like a fucking meaningless vessel for the fucking barbecue sauce. Right, exactly. One that lingers because it's so sticky. But I'm saying like, dude, all this meat, man, like you just fucking slather that shit in some like... You know fucking St. Louis style, even like dry rub and then slow cook that shit. Right, like Guy Fieri is gonna come in yeah. and start, and like... Yeah, get Guy like, Fieri. There's, there's going <laughs> to be a, a fucking diner that sets up here and they're gonna be like, well, you know, we don't got much, but when we saw this meat hanging out here, well, we just had to take advantage of it. And this now time! We, we built ourselves up into, into an entire business. This Guy time, tri just like Triple D! <laughs> We're, uh, Triple D, we're going to Lake Baikal in southern Siberia, where they're <laughs> cooking up something real fucked up. I can't wait to try it, brother. Flavor Town, Siberia. <laughs> they're cooking up something real fucked. I know, this doesn't even sound like Guy Fieri, I know. I know. What does he sound like? I don't fucking know, I I know him exclusively from memes, and that he, like, does charity stuff. Can't wait to get some good old-fashioned Eldritch Eaton. 
Eldritch Eats with a side of coleslaw. That sounds like something that would be open for maybe half a year in Portland, Oregon. Does, uh, why? Why would it only be open half a year? Because it couldn't stay open because it's based entirely around a single gimmick that's fun for one outing. Portland, uh, I, I don't, I don't know. I, I'm not familiar with it. Um, but I know that they have that, that donut place. That's, that was a gimmick, but that apparently everybody loves. It's overrated voodoo. It's overrated. It's just donuts. They're, they're like, but what if we put Captain Crunch on a donut? Uh, spoiler alert. It tastes like Captain Crunch on, on a donut. On a donut. <laughs> J Chan drifted all the way back to the to the original. You saw it happen, right, guys? Like she's just now she's facing an angle again. You know what though, man? Like I feel like you're being a killjoy because why would Captain Crunch on a donut be bad? I it's just that it, for a donut to be good, there has to be a proportion of Fat to sugar. Okay. Voodoo's whole gimmick is adding stuff with sugar. To Although something so, they that also like... have some with bacon on them, and then it's like, oh, so the but the flavors do not mesh. Like, it's it's all right. You you guys ready for my hot take? Everything from Voodoo Donuts is like it comes out of the mouth of a five year old. <laughs> And they just decide that they're actually going to do it, whether or not it works. It's you telling me that bacon, that bake was it's like a bacon maple donut isn't like delicious. Like it's, I don't know. I, I think like the sweet and savory thing would would be like working for that really well. In, don't you? in theory, yeah. The chief problem is that the flavors don't really combine. Like you just. It, it doesn't taste, it doesn't create a new flavor. It just tastes like you're eating a donut. Oh, yeah, and also there's some bacon. And Captain Crunch to cut the roof of your mouth. Uh, right, exactly. That, like, and that's the chief problem. That's why... That, 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 that's why there's a problem with just shoving foods together. Um, they, like... Let me put it this way. Voodoo Donuts is painted entirely pink okay. because otherwise it would have no personality. Why do you fucking have it out for this place, dude? It's just, it's fine. It's just people suck its dick. It's people bullshit. Li people lick its hole. And it's bullshit. All the time. You think people it's lick its donut it's... hole all the time. You're sick of and it. It's like, bullshit. Look, look. It's. It's the kind of gentrified quirky fred is fred is so like out for blood today CSI. he's so out for blood today yeah it's like it's kind of cute okay it's like it, it's kind of cute it's, it's kind of quirky but it's the kind of quirky that oh it's the kind of quirky where when i walk into it and i see the people behind the counter i say oh you have to be this kind of quirky literally every day I got old like two days in, didn't? Like, I? there's like wacky hipsters working in there. Like, they can only hire like wacky, wacky hipsters. No, the the problem is even wacky hipsters are just people, and that kind of wacky is going to wear off very quickly. Voodoo Donuts insists upon itself. Would you Would you say that? Yeah, it does. <laughs> but I think that I think that it knows it insists upon of itself. Course, it just doesn't yeah. care. I want to go to this place. You don't. Uh, okay. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to get back to the SCP. That was another huge tangent. Uh, so you got... Uh, right, so they sent back the, the, the samples, and they fucking slow-cooked slow it. It was awesome. They smoked the meats. Uh, one okay, team okay. was... Okay, hold, hold, hold on. Someone said... Uh, so unknown, uh, unknown is saying, but the donut dicks. Yeah, you want to know how that experience goes? You buy the donut dick... And you're like, ha, 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 I'm eating a dick in the shape of a donut. And then you start eating it, and it's like, I just bought a donut in the shape of a dick, and I'm eating it. And then the reality just kind of sets in. It's like, I'm I'm eating a donut that's shaped like a dick. You know that's, what? 
That's my re That's the kind of person I've become. All right. Well, you 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 speak for yourself because I happen to know that the majority of people here, and probably myself, would thoroughly enjoy every bite of a dick shaped like a donut. <laughs> a dick in the shape of a donut. Because that's what you said. Because that's what you said. That's what you said. You didn't say a donut in the shape of a dick. So now I'm imagining this guy's perfectly fucking like round cock, but like. A wheel. His fucking cock is a, is is a wheel, basically, right? Mm -hmm. Like that fucking curves in on itself. Like it's a complete circle. He's got a circle penis. It insists upon itself. <laughs> All right. That's what they. That's one of the things that. That's one of their gimmicks. It's a. It's a donut shaped like a cock. Fred. I I, I guess so. I don't remember. Uh, within... We're doing... Mike, we're doing the thing. I know, and I'm trying... I tried to bring it back three know, times, but you, you, know, you, 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 keep, you right. keep bringing it You're back right. to donuts. Remember when I said that sometimes I'm the problem? This... I wasn't kidding. Uh, one team was able to recover a small sample of still-living 610 tissue substance from a building and pack it for research. Within the second hour of exploration of Site A, Series A... Series of echo reverberation units were set up surrounding the hole with the intent of getting an accurate mapping of the hole and possible branch tunnels. All right. About time I got my hole mapped. At least somebody's hole was getting mapped tonight. Fred! Hint, hint! Mm. Map my hole! At the end of the second hour... Mm. At the end of the second hour, before the echo units could be activated, seismic activity began to occur within Site A. Two teams of the original three remained on site, the third en route back to the Perimeter HQ with samples. The third team was instructed to proceed back to Perimeter HQ when seismic activity began, and was told that Site A should not be returned to for assistance. Seismic activity at Site A capped at a 2.3 Richter level before petering off. Immediately following the seismic event, a torrent of SCP-610 spores erupted from the hole and layered the area around it for a span of 50 meters. As all staff on site were in Level A hazardous materials suits, this spore burst was startling but did not lead to any infections. As the eruption was being reported, both teams at Site A came under attack from aerial life forms infected with SCP-610. These organisms were captured by the remote drone video equipment and showed extremely advanced stages of infection. It is, impossible to, bats. it is impossible to tell what they mutated from to this present state. Many of the avian creatures attacked by splitting their heads in half and clamping them against research members pulling them into the air and dropping them into the hole when possible. These avian infected proved vulnerable to small arms fire. In dispatching them, a total of two research staff were lost to the hole and one injured due to crossfire. The infected staff was put down immediately upon showing signs of infection due to his suit breach. Oh, sorry about shooting you, but we gotta shoot you again now because of it. Yeah, I just played the shoot. Ah, uh, the shoot sound effect. Yeah, disgusting meat birds. And then there was one guy who was enjoying his uh, his margaritas at Margaritaville. Or Cheeseburger in Paradise. And even though they were like swooping down trying to pick him up, he was like, I'm not leaving without my margaritas. P P Pina coladas? What the fuck? Was it in that scene from Jurassic Park? Jurassic World, sorry. Uh, before video and radio contact was lost with the remaining teams inside Site A, a, size, a second seismic event began to occur, starting out at in the 1 to 1.5 range in scale. Attention was directed at the hole to prepare for a second assault. A second spore burst erupted from the hole during the rising seismic activity. At the point where scales registered a 3 to 3.5 in force, a new, on-scene 610 entity began to emerge from the hole. 
the only footage captured of this creature, depicts an engorged human head, approximately 20 times larger than normal, pressing itself out of the hole with no discernible body. Video and radio contact were lost as seismic forces increased to seven on the scale for two seconds duration and then abruptly ceased. Further aerial surveillance of the site A-hole and area depict zero activity and no traces of the research teams or there ever having been of or there ever having been there. All personnel and equipment are considered lost. Wow. Hey Lois, look at me. I'm a giant bloated head. Who's got a giant head? Somebody in chat said Charlie Kirk. But it doesn't say anything about like it having a tiny face. It just says it has a giant head. So. No, see, now now I'm imagining, what was it? Um, Dennis Prager from the Amon animations. There's no god above me. There's no government over me. I am god. Yeah, amazing. Just pushing himself out of the hole. Fucking amazing that that guy said that unironically. I'm going to click this. And uh, you're going to read it. All right. SCP-610-L4. Events regarding the discovery, research, and handling of 610 rapidly degraded to a point where failsafe options were being considered. For over one hour, nothing further had happened at Site A following the loss of the research teams during the seismic events in L3 and subsequent contact with previously unseen 610 life forms. With the absence of activity at Site A, a remote drone dispatch was authorized in two parts. The first part would drop a remote relay device at the entrance to the Site A sinkhole, and the second part would dispatch a drone in into the hole directly to relay its data to the remote relay for transmission back to headquarters. Drones on site were powered by solar energy, with the battery maintaining a four-hour charge. Ooh, green drones. Cool. Oh, thank goodness. I, that's really what we need is green SCP containment. Attached is the video log recovered from the Site A sinkhole drone before its loss. Video feed activates. Researchers' face is seen looking into camera, applying a polishing cloth to lens. This is Explorative Drone RSCP610-1 coming online. Systems check out, video confirmed, feed is good to relay station, they're testing rotors now and deploying if successful. The sound of a helicopter blade starts up as video feed begins to lift in the air. Camera tilts left and right to test pan features, then direct itself towards the Site A sinkhole. Video feed is go, engines are go, links are green, alright, sending drone down now. Audio from the outside world fades away as camera angles itself down and peers into the darkness within the sinkhole. After approximately two minutes of descent, lights on the drone activate and illuminate a roughly dug shaft. Initially, it is unclear what could have created the hole, but at a glance it would appear the shaft was created by a single event rather than dug over time. At 15 meters descent, there are traces of 610 material attached to the dirt and stuck to rocks. The material is dormant but retains its, te its texture and appearance, unlike samples from above ground level which shrivel and die rapidly. This sounds like an infomercial. Unlike our competitors, our, like, our SCP-610 flesh re retains its texture and appearance even after five hours. <laughs> yeah. It's moisture down there, right? Right. I mean, they're going to find an entire fucking, like, underground cave network that's just filled with this shit. I mean, that's what's down there, obviously. Yeah. Mm, there is a possible connection with this material in the events last recorded during 610L3. Descent continues. At 100 meters in depth, branch tunnels become visible in the walls of the sinkhole. Panning of the camera reveals small tunnels branching out at approximately at apparently random intervals, but which are not restricted to any one size of the hole. These tunnels are considered too small for any useful exploration to, to occur. Descent continues. Increase in density of 610 materials on walls is noted as depth increases. At 250 meters, the bottom of the sinkhole becomes visible, and the tunnel slopes sharply, suggesting a natural formation, which was already suspected. 
Drone video shifts to, shifts to illuminate this tunnel, and drone proceeds forward through the area. 610 coats entirely coats entirety of the tunnel now, and care is taken to keep the drone from coming in contact with any surface. Movement is detected 5 meters ahead. Lights on the drone are dimmed, and weapons come online. The RSCP-610 drone is equipped with a 5.56 mm machine gun containing 50 rounds of ammo. This is meant to be used to deter wildlife away from the drone and defend against aggression when possible, rather than to dispatch a target, although it is fully capable, capable of hand, handling human aggressors in small groups. Camera focus turns to the moving mass of flesh ahead at 3 meters. After focus clears, the movement appears to be coming from what appears to be a deer, uninfected, wriggling in the grips of tendrils comprised of 610 material. The deer is being suspended above the ground with unclear intent. LOL, try to walk, LOL. What the, the fuck? drone is moved. Hmm? I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm just thinking out loud. Is, like, 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 what, what is it? Why is there a deer in, underground, you know? You know, just in case. Contingency deer. Contingency deer? The drone is moved past the trapped deer while holding it in view of the camera until safely away. Nothing occurs with the deer, and the drone proceeds past undisturbed. The previously fairly level ground of the tunnel displays large humps in apparently random placement. Five meters ahead of the drone, 30 meters past the encountered deer. And how is the deer not infected either? It, it probably is. It's probably just newly captured. All right. Upon approach, these lumps turn out to be similar to the infected villagers who escaped from Site A into the sinkhole. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> After the destruction of Site C, the sound of rushing water is now detected and the drone is pushed forward. 100 meters further into the tunnel, the sound of running water is now deafening. Drone lights reveal a running stream of water, potentially from one of the adjacent rivers in the area. A sample vial is placed in the water, allowed to collect, and then released with an active tracking beacon. This is where they get Grandavasa. Mm. This is the source. <laughs> it's the only thing that makes sense. They found it. Later recovery of this sample indicates no SCP-610 contamination of groundwater. The tunnel splits in two at this point. One tunnel leads around the river and then seems to slope downward, while the other is directly above a light source in the ceiling. This second one is selected to facilitate recovery of the drone. During adjustment of the drone's flight path, it comes in contact with a portion of the tunnel wall coated in 610, causing a deep gash from the propeller of the drone, which is already healing over when the camera focuses on the impact point. The drone proceeds upward. 300 meters of upward travel, taking approximately 45 minutes, results in the drone emerging, emerging into a windy section of mountain where it is directed to stay low. Oh, windy. It is windy. Camera panning of the area reveals what may have once been a village, long since abandoned. The precise location is unclear, but it is assumed to be in the vicinity of Site B, judging from estimates in travel by the drone. The buildings here are coated in deceased layers of 610, and unlike other buildings in Site A and Site C, which were coated in 610, these buildings appear to be constructed directly from the tissue substance. Ah? Uh? After a cursory scan of Site B, it is determined there is no life here either natural or 610 related, so the drone is directed back into the tunnel as, it, as the winds around the area make aerial recovery impossible. Upon descent into the tunnel, a deep roaring sound fills the audio and, audio and video feed becomes choppy as something blocks the signal. During the periods in which connection to the drone is clearest, its camera and weapon are angled downward, and propellers slow in speed to allow a faster drop. Video feed becomes entirely clear for the final two minutes before feed is lost. Rushing up toward the drone from the area below is what appears to be a large human face stretched to 20 times its proportions, with no it features, him. save for those created by the 610 material. He! <laughs> There are eye sockets, but no eyes, a mouth, but no teeth. The drone fires upon this rushing mass of 610, but the bullets do not deter it, impact points remaining visible for several seconds before closing over themselves. 
There is no room in the tunnel for the drone to take evasive action, and it is swallowed by the mass. <laughs> RSCP-610 is considered lost until three hours later, when feed inexplicably returns. Video feed from the drone appears to show a series of structures illuminated by one of the two lights on the drone. The camera pans around without instructions from the remote relays or HQ, capturing a vast number of shambling entities within the area. 610 material moves over the lens of the drone, and video feed is permanently severed. Manned exploration was approved. Results are in document L5. I want to know more about the meat houses. Right? Like, why are there houses? So this, this fucking thing is trying to replicate society. It seems like it, yeah. It, right. It's a laughable comparison, though. I don't know. I think it's pretty rad. Uh, approval from Central HQ was grafted, granted for a manned assault excursion into the tunnels beneath Site A to try to ascertain the extent of the 610 infection. The destruction of Site A and Site C have established 610 can be contained and destroyed, making the source of the infection top priority. The initial descent into the tunnels consists of five teams, two research and three assault, along with enough equipment to establish an underground base of operations. Descent into the tunnels was established using pulley systems and a lift to move equipment. Assault teams were the first to descend, armed with flame units to clean 610 out of the area. Right here on Triple D. But what if we were meat? All teams were able to descend without incident, and flame units took point, providing an undisturbed journey toward the water sauce. sauce. The water sauce, which is just water. The, the water source where the... Where the drone was lost. It's revitalized water. In reinvigorated. <laughs> and revitalized. Jay Chan's really making me angry. Like, again, she slowly drifted off to the side. Base camp for underground 610 operations resides at the bottom of a three-way junction. Four if the water flow is included. The first pathway is that which led from Site A to Cavern HQ. The second is the pathway to the ruined village, residing in the mountains above uh, where the drone was destroyed by a large unknown 610 entity. The third pathway heads west and seems to follow the flow of water for an unknown distance. The cavern area here is quite large and is supported by a number of rock formations that are coated with decayed 610 material. The state of this material suggests great age and appears to reinforce the structural supports. Whether or not this is intentional or coincidental is unknown. So this is the, this shit's been down there for a very long time, right? Right. So like this has been dormant. Yeah. 610 infection did not appear in the you know this has you know, that, that was what would happen with the thing, right? Mm -hmm. the uh, thing, I think you skipped a uh, paragraph, by the, the way. The thing was not, like, from space or anything. The thing was, like, in it was in, like, melting glaciers or something, right? Right, it's just been vibing for a while. Vibing. <laughs> Meat vibes. What that's, did I, that's, our, that's the stream. What did I skip, bud? Uh, just a paragraph. Uh, start. With, you didn't read the two research team split activities, right? No. Uh, they split yeah. activities between building Cavern HQ and collecting samples of 610 in various states. No contagious materials were detected within this area, and the creature recorded by unmanned drones did not appear at any point to the Cavern staff. Of the four research teams, three were ordered to proceed down the unexplored pathway while an aerial drone was prepped for a second recon of the vertical shaft. Don't make me get the meat face. Uh. 610 infection did not appear in the third pathway until approximately 3 kilometers. And serious infection did not appear until 16 kilometers in. Even after the lengths traveled by the assault teams, no 610 infectious, infectious life forms were encountered. And the fleshy material coating the cavern walls posed no threat to the team. 
The most significant reports at this time were the increasing thickness of material, suggesting a source, and the complete lack of 610 contamination in the water. As a test, the sample of 610 was cut away from the cavern wall and placed in the flow of water. It exhibited no unusual reactions, but was quickly swept away by the current. At 20 kilometers in, the leader of the assault teams requested a transport buggy be dispatched to them. One was available at the above-ground HQ. However, it would take time to move it to Cavern HQ and remote drive it to the teams. Rations provided to the assault teams were sufficient. So a camp was established while the buggy was moved and readied. Why need rations? Just, uh, snap into a Slim Jim off the cavern wall, no? Uh... During this time... I'd, I'd like to <laughs> imagine that, like, most of the team is, like, prepping everything, and then there's just, like, stupid Joe, who's, like, at the cavern wall, grabbing chunks of meat and stuffing it in his mouth, and he's like, Hey, guys, you really should try this. It's really good. Somehow he has an immunity. <laughs> no, he doesn't. He's just a moron. You just, and then he, okay, he died. Because this, this, this behavior, I, I, like, needs to be repeated, you know? Right, it's me. <laughs> like he's been around a while, and he just does dumb shit. And What's his name? First Joe. Episode. I, I, stupid Joe. I couldn't come up with anything funny. So it's he, like he Joe just became stupid Joe. What was it? Oily Jim. Oily, Oily Jim, and, Jim and stupid yeah. Joe are related. Right. Stupid Joe stupid was told Jim. multiple times that to, that not to eat the meat, but in the end, he could not resist. He could not resist the temptation. He could Wait, not you, resist you think, the meaty, meaty allure. I think that stupid Joe was the disappointing brother. Well, I mean, Oily Jim was extremely disappointing. The reason he... Oh, no, uh, stupid Joe. Stupid Joe. Did I say stupid Jim? No, Oily Jim is from the, uh, I think, Christmas Hellhouse stream. We it is. Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. Um, during this time, an aerial drone was sent to explore the vertical shaft. The results of this exploration were placed on hold with the arrival of the buggy at Cavern HQ and ultimately concluded in document. The buggy was navigated to the assault team encampment with no events en route. However, upon arrival and preparation to continue exploration, the assault teams came under attack by a large number of 610 infected life forms that emerged from the area ahead of them. Video recovered from the assault team cameras show them caught off guard as the 610 infected made no sound and were undetectable. On one film, for one to two seconds, it appears that some of the creatures are coming out of the 610 materials on the wall, not emerging from them so much as being created by the material and then breaking away to act independently. During this assault, in an attempt to protect the buggy, Members were lost to the water currents, and contact with them was lost. Contact was regained, however, and is recorded in uh, L6. The remainder of the assault team now consisted of three members, armed with a single flame unit. Use of this unit to repel the assault proved vital, as standard firearms did minimal damage to the infected creatures. Alright, this is going kind of like an XCOM mission right now. These infected creatures show minimal traits to associate them with any known form of life in the region, giving rise to the belief that they may have been spawned by the 610 infection itself as a form of defense. No further casualties were suffered during the raid, and the remaining members managed to eliminate all attacking infected, allowing them to continue with exploration, with added orders to attempt to locate the lost team members. A further 20 kilometers into the tunnel, the river separated from the tunnel pathway and the team was instructed to abandon the recovery order, given the inability to navigate the waters safely. A total time of <coughs> passed before the remaining assault team reached an end in the tunnel. At the perimeter of the area now known as Site B, the team came under assault again from a smaller number of 610 that were much larger in size. These infected appeared in the tunnel as if they were lying in wait for the approaching team. These creatures were dispatched using the flame unit. 
Although all fuel for the unit was expended in this act, the assault team was now limited to standard weapons and short-range personal flame units. A time lapse of five minutes is allowed to pass before the team proceeds further into Site B, cautious of further assaults by 610 infected. The tunnel widens out into what appears to have once been a village of indeterminate age underground. Yes. The construction of the buildings in this area are primitive compared to the settlements at Site A and C, and are of clearly human construction. Many buildings rest at angles or slants, suggesting they were disturbed by a cave-in. Of interest is a building that appears to be a church with a working clock tower. This building is atop the remains of two older buildings that have fallen completely and has a visibly stable foundation. Fred, this one's great, man. Yeah, I. Uh, this is why I wanted to end with this one. I think this, one, this, one's, you. this one's fucking great. Surrounding all structures in this area is a depression in the ground filled with a substance resembling a liquefied form of the 610 fleshy materials. The pool moves as if acted upon by minute and unseen forces rippling outward from invisible contact points and rolling in waves from unfelt winds. The team avoids this pool at all times and proceeds through the runes, slowly on stable foundations where possible, making the church their target area. They got one of their, their more poetic writers to write this. Yeah, the, the writing quality dips and, and, and dives, right? It's, it's kind of up and down. It's kind of all over the place, right? Yeah, this is especially true uh, with some of the older ones where they were still kind of establishing their voice. This Remember that this was like deep in the creepy pasta era yeah. of the internet. Within the church are pews. Oh, stinky pews. Yucky, stinky. Uh-oh. As w would be expected. However, there are only four. One of them shattered when the building could accommodate as many as 20. The three intact pews are arranged in a 1-2 formation facing a pulpit. There is no trace of dust on any surface, the entire area appearing to be immaculately clean, given the location and believed age. Behind the pulpit is a hole in the floor exposing an area of the 610 pool beneath the building. The church and ruins appear to be uninhabited. An exploration of the church proper is uneventful until the clock tower bell tolls. This tolling triggers a shudder in the building, followed by human screams from the ceiling. Lights shown upon the ceiling reveal a large mass of 610, from which descended a series of six wooden circles. Strapped to each circle is a living human, coated entirely in neck to toe in 610, but having an exposed head with peer, which appears uninfected. These human captives scream as the bell continues to toll and the circles move to the ground. The golden path. <laughs> the team... Uh, the golden path, Fred? Dune. I don't remember that bit. Dune. Oh, it's where... Uh, yeah, spoilers. Leto covers himself in... Um, in the little sand, the the little Sam Grub boys, it makes the the living glove. Yeah, I don't remember that. Okay, yeah, I don't, never I don't, mind. I don't. I don't it's don't. Ch Children of Dune. Don't remember that. Uh, don't remember that. Um, I like Dune. Dune, your mom. Got him. Got him. Okay. Doing your mom. Doing your I'm having a hard time, like, figuring out where I was. Uh, the circles move to the ground. The team begins to move toward one to investigate when an unknown creature cries from outside the building, prompting them to take cover in shadows near the pulpit. Light sources are extinguished, pitching the entire area into darkness. Night vision is left off to avoid revealing the team's location. Sounds continue to admit from the outside of the church, drawing closer but lower than the frantic screams of the captive humans. At least one noticed the team as the captive humans 
often call out to be saved. You liked it, Plorf? Hi, Plorf. Uh, I'm probably going to see it next week or, or, or something. Um, I want to kind of like, I want to let everybody else see it first. Like, let everybody go see it. And then like, you know, I'll go in on like a, you know, I'll go on like a weekday and then like I'll have like a mostly empty like movie theater to myself. You know what I mean? Uh, from the entrance to the church, a candle lights on the side of the doorway and then one on the other side. A figure is seen holding a small torch and moving back and forth between a series of candles to light the doorway. The flame is then applied to a rope coated in 610, which quickly ignites and spreads up to a peculiar chandelier system at the church entrance. The light from this system illuminates most of the crosses, but does not reach the team's hiding place. Those captives who appear in the light do not show standard signs of the beige-colored 610 infection, but instead are wrapped in a red variant of it, which shows signs of constant motion rippling across itself in waves. So, oh, what, massage flesh. What, whatever, <laughs> whatever this fucking shit is, it's it's like a kind of a, of a hive mind. Like it's sentient. It makes decisions. It's like we're gonna choose to infect this thing and not this thing, right? Mm. It makes choices. Joe's barbecue and flesh massage. From outside the church, a flood of, of 610 infected shamble quickly into the area, ignoring the man who lit the candles and stands in the middle of the room. They proceed to the captives on the wooden circles and begin to pull at the red 610 masses, resulting in further screams and cries. From what can be gathered from the returned video feed, the Red 610 seems to be connected to the captives and is using them as a source of sustenance that it then uses to grow and feed the normal 610 infected. Overly zealous infected tear at the red mass too hard, which results in pulling skin and tissue from the human captive beneath. This exposed area is quickly covered over by the red mass, which then grows in size. Feeding like this continues for approximately six minutes, at which time the candle-bearing figure sounds a gong, and all infected entities move to the pews. There are several more creatures than seats, but none move past the frontmost pews. The figure who sounded the gong does not move, spontaneously collapsing as if made from hollow clay. From the pulpit area, activity is noticed as a pillar of 610 flesh rises through the hole and extends, directing itself toward the gathered creatures. No sound is heard, and no motion is recorded once the pillar stops moving. This silent period persists for ten minutes, without even the human captives making a sound, having fallen silent at an unknown point. The pillar of 610 retracts back into the hole it emerged from without any warning, prompting the departure of the infected from the building. During the silence, they can hear quietly in the distance. I lost my spot. Um, the the candles remain lit, and the team emerges after all infected appear to leave the area. The descended captives remain at ground level as well, all sc screaming, seeming to have ceased, but still showing signs of life with heavy breathing and movement. Upon departure from the church camera, uh feeds from all three members become erratic camera one ceases transmitting completely camera two shoots straight up into the air for several meters and camera three captures the member with camera two being flung by a tendril that emerges out of the ground itself 
swinging them out of sight onto the other side of the ruins. Camera 1's feed is restored and displays Camera 3's owner running briefly in the direction of the lost team member, only to turn and run back as 610 infected pour from between buildings. Combat ensues between the two members and the onrushing infected using assault rifles and personal flame units, successfully driving back enough of the <clears throat> the horde to make an escape toward the buggy. Passing by a building, Camera One's owner is ambushed by a figure resembling the figure who is in the church lighting candles, wielding a large crop scythe. Camera Three's owner continues to pause toward, without pause, toward the buggy location. However, the buggy is found half absorbed by the 610 mass covering the floor. Oops. While turning to find another way of escape, Camera 3's owner turns to find the same figure with the scythe approaching, weapon raised. Maybe this is the origin of, like, the Cars universe? <laughs> Two and shots. Like the, the he, he shines a light onto the figure. Lightning and meets... Uh, it, then, then it sees pr two buck teeth protruding from its mouth. It says to him, Well, howdy there. I'm Mater. His name is Meter? Like Mater without the tu? No, it's it's Meter. Meter, like Meater? Like me -er. Like me Like, oh, I was thinking like Meatus. And, and Lightning Meat Queen? You know, because... Yeah. Because the meat made it to the to the car and in fact yes. the car yeah yes okay um jay chan why are you doing that what is, what is that i'm not doing that we're gonna Again, wait. there's a ghost that's trying to tickle you well look at the, the fingers too what the what the fuck is this thing my my arm is in my lap right now both, both of my hands are in my lap <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody here speak sign language? <laughs> it's saying, shut the stream down, you has been. Um, You have to have been something before you can be a has been, Fred. Self-own. Uh, two shots are fired and camera feed ends. Five hours later. While final decisions were underway to decide how to contain or eradicate the 610 threat. Time. Time delayed video feed from the lost team members who fell into the underground river currents was established and has been filed in L6. We don't get L6. That's it. Oh, it, it's done? That's it. Son of a bitch. Well... Well, where the fuck is L6? They just never wrote it. Nope. Man, I wanted answers. I, I th That's it? Really? Mm-hmm. Uh, no. No, there, there, no, no. Really? That's it? Yep, that's it. Fuck that, man. We, we, no, I want to know what was going on here. I got no answers for anything. No. What was all the... What were they doing? What was the church? What was all of this? It's old. Hi, Cheese. L6 was never intended to be fully expunged, and for years the authors wanted to go and make it. Then at some point they decided the absence of L6 was better than anything they could come up with. Well, right, I remember hearing about that. I mean, that. fuck that, because they said they have it, so, like, why can't I see it? What do you think was happening in this, in this, uh, in this story, Fred? Eh. Mike, this is the origin story for Zachers. You don't know what was happening? You, <laughs> just this, that's it? Nothing? You got Nothing? I got nothing. Why was there a church underground? Why was there meat buildings? What is any of this? 
Was it so that was was it some kind of mole people and then they became meat? I I'm yeah. I feel like I got edged. I've yeah. been I've been edged a, a little bit, and I am sorry that that is where we end. But that just means we're gonna have to do another stream. And we will do another stream of this because I had so much fun with this tonight, Fred. I'm so glad. Dude, thank you so much for coming on and doing this with me. This was a fucking great time. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm glad that I could help make this evening entertaining. Uh, what's up, SCP-096? There's sentient god trying to cultivate a society of lesser meat beings? Okay, I like that. I like that. See, I figured that this was like a Sarkic thing that What's got that? out of hand. What's the Sark? Um, What's Sark? Like, I was thinking that maybe it was a proto Sarkic thing. Um, Sar that is something that we should look into. Be basically, think meat cult. Um, there are two <laughs> kinds of Sarkicism. The the I uh, the core of it meat is cult. they can. <laughs> Uh, ascend to godhood by consuming uh, a god. Like they, it, it's proto sarcasm is very um, technophobic. Oh, uh, no, it's it's a Lovecraft thing, right? I don't think that it has anything to do with Lovecraft. Oh, there's a short story where like everybody they were they were eating like a dead god or something like that. I mean, it's not a new idea the idea of consuming the flesh of another being gives you the strength of that being is an ancient concept well what the fuck who, who who's sark who's sarkic no so sarkic is an adjective uh, sarcasm is the name for this sort of uh flesh cult but this is a whole other rabbit hole. Yeah, but why are they calling it that? Like, what's that? What does that name come from? Uh, Sark. Uh, let's see. Sark. Oh, uh, you know what? Hold on. Um, they have it. They have the name specifically. Um, I'm I'm looking for it real real quick. Well, uh, here we go. I think. Okay. Uh, practitioners of sarcasm do not actually refer to themselves as sarkic, the term a pejorative employed by the ancient Mechanites for their enemies. Um, doo -doo -doo. It's simply the idea that if you what eat something, you get its power? Well, that's an ancient idea. Sarcasm builds out of that. Um, sar uh, you know what? I'm just going to read a little bit of the page. Sarcasm, derived from the Greek, uh, Greek sar I, I don't know how you pronounce that. Uh, it's in Greek, uh, but it means flesh. Like, from the Greek word for flesh. Sarcasm is a religious phil slash philosophical system that encompasses a variety of traditions, beliefs, and spiritual practices largely based on teachings attributed to Grand Carcist Ion, its deified founder. Adherents practice ritual cannibalism, human sacrifice, corporeal augmentation, thaumaturgy, dimensional manipulation, and the formation of pacts with otherworldly entities. Organic manipulation has allowed certain Sarkites to achieve anomalous stage states of being, transcending the physical limitations of baseline humans. Cute! Yeah, we can Cute. explore that next time. That, I actually had this in my back pocket in case we didn't need... Um, or in case we needed a little bit more. But. In case... Uh, well, well, that wasn't a problem, but I think next time I want to see more of those little fellas... Yeah, no, we can we can have a stream where we just look at the little fellas. What are they called again? Uh, the little mysteries. All right. Well, I we are gonna end. So let me um, let me say thank you to everybody who came to watch, guys. I hope you uh, had fun. It was a spooky, uh, creepy time uh, tonight. I uh, really enjoyed all these stories, uh, all these SCPs. Fred, thank you, bud. Uh, I'm and, glad um, I, I could. Uh, so thank you guys for watching and listening, what have you. Uh, if anybody is, is new to the channel, you can find me on uh, Twitter and you can find me on YouTube. There's going to be links in the chat. I see him right there. Uh, also, uh, check out Fred on uh, YouTube and, and Twitch and all that. There's links to his shit 
in the uh, yeah. in the channel as well. Please uh, give it a give it a look see if you can. I'm also gonna yeah. look at art in a minute. So uh, if you you made art, you should put it on the buru uh, for sure. We're gonna look at that in just a minute. Uh, I also I'm gonna read out all the the subs afterwards and, and thank all you guys individually. Uh, I also want to do a very special thank you for Tita. Hi Tita, thank you for making me good. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. Okay, good night everybody. Fuck you. <laughs> Eat shit. Fuck. Bye. Okay, she's gone. Again, Tita, thanks for doing all the stuff with the uh, with the rig. It was a lot of fun to use this tonight. Fuck you, everybody. <laughs> Fuck you. Ah! 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 All right, she's she needs a Snickers. She's not herself when she's hungry. Okay, I'm going to close this program. Um, we're gonna look at our, uh, you guys want to see an advertisement real quick? I think you do. I know you do. Check it out. Uh, okay. So I'm taking a cursory look at the Buru. A lot of good stuff here tonight. Um, I'm gonna wait till the advertisement is, is over, though. Okay. Uh, it's because, you know, I don't want... Yeah, because it's, it's 10 seconds left. So, Look how much this chat loves advertising. It's Mintelect. You're not even seeing the ads because you're subbed. Man. I got him. Uh, it's another one of those, like, oh, you can, uh, you can click on that to make Mike get money. Which, uh, you know, why not? Why not? All right. Um, I'm going to start with this piece from... Oh, my God. Uh, all right. So, did we, 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 we seen this, right, chat? From, from wa Wallet? Somebody named Wallet? Um... We look. We looked at this, right? This this swole mask boy. <laughs> mask boy. Christ, that is so cursed. Oh, uh, that's fucking awesome, though. Thank you. Oh, uh, thank you so much, Wild. This is what I look like in real life. It's a jabroni titan. Yeah, it is. It's very muscly and sinewy. Uh, we've also got. Oh, so Fred, you. <laughs> I think I think uh, that's supposed to be me. Killy uh, uploaded this art. This is art from. Uh, remember when you showed us that clip from that movie? Yes, yes, I do. What was it? The, the movie Horror? Yeah. I want to fuck you up the ass. You wait, can wait, stick wait, it hold up. on, hold on. That's hold on. That's me. Can I? Don't I get to voice it? Sure, go ahead. I want to fuck you up the ass. You could stick it up your own. Asshole! <laughs> I would if I could. Bitch. It's a, apparently supposed to be Cash Pope it's from Cash uh, Pope. Okay. Uh, Tom Tomodachi, which I'm gonna get back to next week. Yeah, it's fair, tagged the, Cash uh, Pope. The, the hair and the eyebrows. Yeah, those had the two together made me think. The swoop, it, right? The swoop. Yeah, it's the swoop and and the big ol' eyebrows. I, I'm so glad we got to look oh at this God. art while you were here. Thank you so much, Killy. Um, there's I more? Cash uh, oh, dear fucking lord. All right, so Cybernetic Cuttlefish took a crack at one of those, uh, 
uh, Yoshi NFTs. And as you could imagine, it's uh, unbelievably, indescribably cursed. I, I mean, it's like a xenomorph, but it's moisty. And I, I love the touch of, like, the tongue being a hand holding a little gun. <laughs> <It's so laughs> that's great. I think that's my favorite bit. Uh, Cybernetic, you really outdid yourself this one, Cybernetic. Thank you. Thank you so much. This is fucking awesome. That's fucking great. And it still has the Yoshi tumor nose, too. Got to get it in there somehow. Uh, we've also got from uh, Spoobs Ghostly. Uh, uh, this this NFT only costs 99 Ethereum. I mean, Cromer. Crotherium. 99 Crotherium. I love how his Yoshi egg is a peepus. <laughs> really nice touch, Spoobs. Thank you. Uh, we've also got another uh, Yoshi from uh, Brobold. Really cute. He's lamenting over the, uh, you know, just the girth of his nose. Really cool, man. Does he know you can use arrow keys? I, um, I do this in case, like, somebody put a fucking fat horse cock on the Buru so I don't violate Twitch TOS. It's um, a little important. Bro, Bobold, I, uh, I love the art. Thank you, bud. Yeah, this is to prevent, like, TOS violations, yeah. Uh, oh my, this is another Yoshi NFT. This time from GamerWizard69. Uh, it looks like uh, Limes' uh, avatar, Limu, uh, VTube avatar, Limu, uh, but she's been merged with a Yoshi. Uh, another uh, laboratory experiment gone awry. Uh, uh, has Lime seen this, guys? Or, or what's going on here? Oh my god, she's wonderful, Gamer Wizard. I cannot wait for Limes to see it. She looks so sick of this shit. She is just fantasy. <laughs> How could she not be? Yeah. No, she, no, she's so done. Like, I, I say, please help. Like, Mike won't stop farting in his suit. And she just messages me, eat asshole. <laughs> She's done. She oh, has checked the done. fuck out, uh, Gamer Wizard. Thank you so much. It's excellent, dude. <laughs> uh, here's some SCP art. Right. Which which one is, is this, Fred? Uh, this is from Spade Arts. I've seen this before. Do you know which SCP this is? Uh, this is the original. This is 163. This is the statue. If you stop looking at it, then it moves really fast and breakneck. Uh, I don't think I ever read this one, actually. I don't think I ever read this one. This, this is the first SCP, dude? Yes. The one, the original one posted to 4chan. Wouldn't it be 001, Fred? Well, so the idea was, hey, what if I give this a number? And what if that number is, like, in the hundreds Mm. That means that there are more like it. Makes sense. Makes so that, sense. That's that. Yeah, that's part of what drew people in. It's like what? So this is one seventy three. Where are the others, and what are the others? And that right, was it, it, it. Was part of their world building. And, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Then lots of people started writing stuff on 4chan in a similar style, and then it all got aggregated onto one website. God, do not also, let Mike find also, SCP 001 Also, all of you saying Doctor Who ripoff. No, you want to know why? Because the statue was posted to 4chan two months before that episode came out. Confirmed? Confirmed, yes. So no, not a Doctor Who ripoff. It's the How episode you rip we... off your balls. It's the episode with the angel statues, right? Right. That episode yeah. came two months. That episode aired two months after this uh, SCP was posted. Who was that? That was uh, David Tennant, right? That one? Yeah. That was the Tennant the, episode. The, the Weeping Angels, it was called. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is the same shit. Why is it meaty looking and what's up with its face? I, I think it's um, been run through a, a filter. 
All right, so she's given the peace sign. She's running over. Uh, she's Winding got a up. do not resuscitate shirt on. She's going to kick it. <laughs> oh, she's fucking slapping its ass. Buenos dias, man, dude. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. She would totally do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mintelect uh likes it too. The art again, this is I see I thought Mentalette was the artist because I saw their name there really big. But again, it's not, it's spade arts. And uh yeah, spade arts, this is fucking incredible. Thank you so much for this. Um and what do we got? We got our own little SCP. It says SCP-001. Uh and it's Mike Wad? The art is from Ika Pika A3. It says, it says, click the magic link, Fred. Click the magic link, Fred. Uh, okay. It, uh, uh, it says, one of the 001 proposal, a Sarkic linked anomaly named the Child of Balsack. I don't know, Fred. You gonna click the link or what? I love uh, the. I, Sorry, I think I'm good. I love the runes around my quad too. Right. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe his his origin is, is something like this. You know, like maybe he's he has Sarkic origins, right? Mm -hmm. And maybe they he tried wasn't to put him together. Like maybe he wasn't made in a laboratory with science. Like maybe he was made. At one of these fucking rituals through like eldritch magic, right? Summoned. Just but su wrong. <laughs> or right. Many would say right. But I mean, he's such a fun character. There's so much you can you can do with him. Uh oh, this is because yesterday you clicked on an ad on ironically uh, because you thought it was part of an article? Yeah, okay. So I was I was doing my own stream um the magic link not the magic link um i i get it the so during my stream i i had everything zoomed in to 150 uh so people could read the articles easier uh, on my stream mm -hmm. um so they could read along and there like i was reading about sarcasm and I, I was doing it in firefox so i didn't get like auto suggested shit uh coming in i was using a browser that i don't use normally and at the bottom were some uh, buttons that were like, oh, like magic rituals. And I'm like, oh, sweet. They added stuff to the sarcasm page. You clicked it wasn't an ad. <laughs> Get it fucked. Was, it was, but it was zoomed in. So I was like, oh, this is like the size for a thing that they must have added. It's like, no, it was an ad. I got, I got Oops. japed because I had things zoomed in and it looked it, like it made it look legit because ads are always tiny. But this was 50% bigger, so um, I, I ran SpyBot while stream was going. Uh, we got art from Plasma Walrus here. Um, I think I'm just gonna let it ride. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say anything. I'm not gonna describe it. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna let that be what it is. Okay. It says a lot about society, right? Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Plasma Walrus. Really cool. Um, bottom text. We got something from Waddle. And it's really cool. It's J-Chan experiencing dorselessness in the hazmat suit. This is awesome. Waddle, thank you. Really cool. Uh, what else? Oh, it's uh, from Leo Zito Ito. Little, um, little J Chan SCP dick butt. <laughs> fish butt. You recognize that with, fish yeah. coming out of her butt? Yeah. yeah, with Mr. Fish. Mr. Fish. I love how, like, they all got the cool powers. I'm just a guy with a fish for a head. I'm just a guy with a fish coming out of his ass. Secure, come, and better. And better. Uh, Leah Zito, fucking awesome. Thank you again so much. Uh, this one is from also Leah Zito. 
Uh, and it's uh, me and you. And we're, uh, you we're, know, we're minions. We're, we're minions. <laughs> <laughs> or um, maybe we're uh, D-class fellas. No, we're, we're definitely working on site. Uh, you got bunny ears, and I got the the mask things. Really cool, Leo Zito. Yeah, Thank you. Uh, Very the, the the icon underneath each of our faces is different. <laughs> I didn't notice. <laughs> Thank you, Leo Zito. Very cute. Very cute. Yeah, there's a. Uh, I have an icon of a a uh, Metroid missile on on my shirt mm -hmm. for some reason. Really weird. Mm -hmm. And uh, what's this from Mintelect? It says, uh, oh, they wanted to draw, it says they wanted to draw J-Chan's themed after pride flags. And I think that's um, pansexual? Pan? I Pans don't think so. I think that's, I think that's lesbian. Am I crazy? I don't know. No, it's pans, people are saying it's pansexual. You're, you're correct. Yeah, it's really really cute. Mental. Like the the colors yeah. are are uh, f actually amazing. Thank you so much. And look at her bag. It's made with real Fred skin. That's authentic mm. authentic Fred skin. Uh, mm. uh, really nice, Mental. Like thank you. And I want to see. No, I'm, I'm just staring at I'm staring at J Chan's thighs, being like, "Are you going to be okay with that squeeze?" Oh, yeah, that looks a little, um, uh, little you tight. Be right? She's fine. Uh, we got also something from Juvenile Senior. An oxymoronic name. Um, but what do I know? I'm just an oxymoron. But fucking how awesome does that look? It has... You know what it has? Um, oh... You remember? Oh dear! It just—it has Jack Black energy. It's definitely chaotic. Like ja Jack Black. It's, if this feels like an extra character from Brutal Legend, or like Kung Fu Panda, with that with that expression. Uh, somebody in chat came here after awesome. seeing a YouTube video where I joked about making the the, the Yoshi drawings into NFTs. <laughs> Please don't do that. I'll I'll cry. I'll do anything. No, I I was never doing that. That was a meme from the beginning. I was, that's not a thing. That's don't worry. Jeez. Um, it's okay. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do that. Um. <laughs> anyway, uh, juvenile. This art's fucking incredible. Thank you so much. Uh, for this really cool art. No, it's sick. And uh, is that it for the art? That's it. Yeah, that's going to do it. So, uh, Fred, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually read out the names of everybody who subbed tonight or gifted subs or resubbed or uh, donated bits. And um, you don't have to hang for that. That's totally your call. Up to you. Oh, I'm here. All right. So let's get going with that right after an advertisement. No, I'll do the advertisement after. Uh, I just the, it's because I opened the the window has the the button for the ad break in it. Uh, let's take a look here. Uh, exploding cats. Thank you. Uh, oh, that says two days ago. I'm fucking this up. All right, Mass Immune. <laughs> Mass Immune J uh, JMC. Thank you for eight months of support. Uh, Papa Riker. Thank you for the gift sub. Skelakorgi with 51 months. Wow. Uh, Alizarin Red. Thank you uh, for that gift sub to Jeff Bezos's left nut. Anasi. Thank you for a full year of support, but appreciate that. Moxie. Thank you for 18 months. Sinzeli. Uh, fresh freak, guys. Please freak them out. Freak them up. Thank you for that sub. And Zito with 40 months. Thank you so much, buddy. I'm sorry I missed this. I hope you're still here. You're ugly. You are disgusting. I'm going to kill you. Give me $200. Uh, he, he was owed a Dr. Phil. I did not see it. Zito, thank you, buddy. Uh, some Galician guy. Thank you for five months. 
Muchas gracias. Leo Zito Ito, uh, welcome to your new home, Freak. That's another fresh Freak, so keep those butts coming. Hover Squid with the bits. Thank you. Also, Efren. Thank you for the bits. Uh, Peachy Froggy. Uh, thank you for the gift sub. Cracko Kane. Welcome to your new home. You fucking freak. Another fresh freak. Please show him Yoda's asshole. Spread it. Spread them cheeks. Uh, Link, 1129. Thank you for six months of support. Prometheus Dark with 10 months. Thank you. Uh, oh, Miss Silly. Nope, sorry. Oh, Miss Lily. Another fresh freak, if you can fucking believe that. We got another one, boys and girls. We got another fresh fucking freak. Show him the Yoda crack, please. Unknown, thank you for the gift sub, too. Cheesy Draws, welcome uh, to the, the family, Cheesy Draws. And uh, also, ADD Kid, uh, with four months of support. Thank you so much, ADD Kid. Uh, for the four months and um, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna wrap it there Fred thank you again for hanging out you're beautiful no oh, so are you my boy um this was a really good time I'm glad we got to do it I do want to do it again at uh, at some point so uh, keep other ones that you like in my you want you want to do it before uh you know like halloween's over like we'll get it in before the month's over that way we keep it nice and spooky and all that yeah let's try to do that all right cool guys i'm gonna play another advertisement have a great night lots of love <clears throat> all right so there's another advertisement playing nihilist gangster wants to know when is interface part two um Oh, Hachinya, thank you so much for the gift sub. Um, we decided that we weren't going to do that because mm -hmm. um, pretty much like when it came time to upload that VOD to YouTube, we figured that uh, it was like bad form because that person is, you know, making these YouTube videos and making these animations. And I mean, we knew that it was transformative. Basically, we felt like it wasn't the right thing to do. So I don't know. I don't think we're going to do that again. Just because... And it's not like we're watching something that was made a long time ago. I don't know. We, we, we should have like at least asked the, the person first. It, it, was, it was weird, you know? Mm -hmm. It was a little weird. Um, there's lots of other stuff for us to do, so... Um, it's one of those things where like there's such a there's such a variety of things of things that we can do that it's like this one there are enough little weird things with it where it's like eh, not we, worth it it's easy to stay out of a gray area you know like that when there's other mm -hmm. things that we know we know we could do like what we did tonight for example yeah um people are asking if i'm gonna stream tomorrow i actually think um i'm gonna i'm gonna the next two days i'm, I'm gonna be uh not streaming um, I think right. I need a, I think I need a little break. Um, my my throat actually feels like really raw right now too. So yeah, I go think go go. I went a little hard th th this week, so uh, I'm gonna um, yeah, I'm gonna take it. E I'm gonna take it easy this weekend, okay? Mm -hmm. And I'll see you guys probably like Monday on Rev's channel. It's the I know it's the first time in a while I haven't streamed on a weekend, but I think I uh, I think I, I think I need this. I think yeah, I think I need this. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take it. Take care of yourself. Um, but uh, in the meantime, guys, have a great weekend. Love you all. Thank you again for all the support. And you I all will... take care of yourselves, too. I'll see you guys soon. Uh. Mm.